friends, what have you learned? Teams, as you said, Aurora, Bad News, Crank Group. We've also got In God's Reign, of course, the Indian qualified team and the Gorada Winsu Voyage squad. One of five frags required to close this one down. And getting that bomb down, rotation's coming through from mid, it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Seven lines up two, gets one of them. Kennedy's there for the closer, and that is series done and dusted for Aurora. It's time to get into our second match. Got their AKs out, back sight, spray, very awkward on the AK. Cure to the back sight, slow creep in for one good shot. 13 to 1, God's Reign. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is day two, and the action is just about to begin. Relatively protected, one on three now for Addict. One on one, AHP for the last individual. This is God's Reign take on Aurora. Catches those two fantastic headshots. Four versus two situation. Kenzie is caught for one. Barbie is left alone. And there it is, the 13-0. Perfect second map for Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, aap sabhi ka swagat hai Kai Sports Grand Slam 2024 in Akhirin mein. Passive crossfire is held. Play for contact. Kill found onto one transfer in the second. Now joins 16 seconds to the clock. Smokes in the way. Spray back on the first. The touch was right there. And God's rain make it happen for 13 to nine. What we've been waiting for, the Davids versus the Goliath. Either from short, one man goes down. from the rotate, check the back line, though, was dark. He's not ready for the man. Smokes down, Ken sees the eagle, gets Rev and fired up, and it's all left to R2B2. The Sky Esports Grand Slam, that honor goes to Aurora. Number Bangalore! So I think the main uh, idea behind the Sky Esports Masters wasn't to create a big event per se, but it was to create a sustainable ecosystem for esports organizations of India. I've seen the esports scene in India evolve. Uh, the first gig that I did was 10 years back probably, and that was very small. So this um, is a testament to the fact that esports is growing and especially for the Counter-Strike to come back uh, and how. It was beautiful to be a part of the whole scene and the stage was a beauty to say the least.
Jeez. Two crore, huh? Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's probably the biggest prize pool for Indian Counter-Strike ever. It, biggest in South Asia as well. I think this land it being so big, it being the biggest in Indian history is it's going to be really, really important for the growth of the scene because, you know, you come here as a young kid, maybe you come here as a PUBG Mobile fan or you come here as a fan of a creator and you see a huge stage with your fellow countrymen up there and they're performing in front of these people and they're competing for such a large prize pool. I think that can only inspire these young kids. I think if we are just making new fans with events like this and just inspiring the younger generation, I think it'll only do good for Indian Counter-Strike and you'll see these young kids come up and aim for glory. Everybody in Sky Esports is brothers to each other. We say Shiva bro, Vijay bro, Nyana bro, everybody is being called like this and I think that's like a family we've built. So it started with Shiva bro ideating it, then he bought in Muthu bro, Nyana bro, Vijay bro. All these people started making, uh, joining hands together and built Sky Esports to where we are here. Uh, you have to give props to Shiva for uh, getting such a fabulous team together. Uh, Vijay on the back end was phenomenal. Hari was fantastic. Everybody knows uh, Lucifer. So it really shows the kind of work culture there is in Sky Sports. They bring their boys up and they give them the pedestal uh, to perform. I don't play so many LAN games compared to CSGO. This LAN is my first and big event LAN. I hope this is my starting career. I have given everything to this team. I stick to it. We made a team. Uh, we dominated three years out of like 10 events. We used to win nine events. So that's how my journey has been till now. But when the league announced uh, Sky Sports, uh, a major, I think an upset happened with me. 2021, I got a proper team in which we pros. Like we made a team at that time, मैं डिफॉल्टर जो मैं अभी मार्कोस में खेल रहा है मैं गिल्स मार्कोस किल्सविच जो अभी मेरे टीम में खेल रहा है और फायरडब जो अभी रेवेनेंट में खेल रहा है और ये टीम ने दो साल तक इंडिया में फुल डोमिनेट किया बट टीम में प्लेयर्स के कुछ तो इशू हुए आउटसाइड द गेम इशू के वजह से हम लोगों को टीम तोड़नी पड़ी और फायरडब ने वो टीम छोड़ दिया हम लोग चार लोगों ने स्टिक किया और हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया क्योंकि रेवेन का स्किल फायरडब के लेवल का ही है तो हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया और रेवेन को लेके भी हम लोग दो तीन टूर्नामेंट्स खेल रहे थे वो भी हम लोग जीते उसके बाद था आईएसएफ का क्वालीफायर वो जो हम लोग इंटरनेशनल गए थे तो ये साल था वो रोमानिया में तो हम लोग वो वो क्वालीफायर का फाइनल हार गए और कौन सी टीम से आ रहे फायर की टीम से जो हमारी टीम छोड़ के गया था तो फिर फाइनल आ रहे तो फिर हम लोग बहुत सैड थे कि यार मतलब प्लेयर्स परफॉर्म नहीं कर पा रहे और मतलब वो रेज में हमने वो टीम तोड़ दी तो वो टीम का कोर मैं किल्सविच और रेवेन हम लोग ने स्टिक किया और डिफॉल्ट और मेगल्स को हम लोग ने टीम से मतलब हम लोग ने बोला कि तुम लोग के साथ खेलना नहीं है आई एम द आई जी एल फॉर द टीम आई फॉर्म द टीम आई मेड देम हु दे आर और देन आफ्टर गेटिंग केक विदाउट इवन लेटिंग मी नो देन आई टूक अ ब्रेक ऑफ टेन डेज देन आई थॉट शुड आई परस्यू इट एज अ कैरियर और नॉट बिकॉज आउट ऑफ नो वेयर हाउ कैन आई फॉर्म अ टीम बिकॉज आई बिन प्लेइंग विद दिस गाइज फॉर लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स देर वॉज अ केमिस्ट्री देर वॉज अ बॉन्डिंग फ्रेंडशिप एवरीथिंग जस्ट शेटर्ड अवे There was McGill's. He's a big bro to me. We have been playing constantly for last 15 years. So I told McGill's we'll make a team and we'll definitely do something. Then I contacted Org, started texting them. Uh, are you interested in Sky Sports? Are you making a team? Finally, I got a team, Marcos Gaming. Uh, they told me that you and McGill's come in, you make a team. Then we started scouting players, but it was very difficult. To be honest, uh, they are not really good teams. Uh, or players right now, to be honest, because the three teams that are strong were Seven Seas, Godrin, and Revenant. Their roster was already formed. We picked Rider, Zero Cool, and Ghost. We have never played against them. We have never played with him. Then we have a gamble. We have a team formed. We have started playing. Then, as a tag came, we came to Bombay. We came to tag. We played Seven Seas without practice. And we won the event. So, there was confidence that we could take this team and do something. When you're playing any any sport for that matter, not just Counter Strike, you can't give too much respect to your, to your opponent. You can respect the fact that they are a good team. You can respect the fact that maybe they have a couple of really good players and all of that. But you can't walk into a game. You can't enter the server thinking you're going to give them that respect. You're going to play safe. You need to just kind of take the bull by the horns, so to speak, and just take the fight to them. And that's exactly what Crazy Gamer and uh, God's Reign did yesterday. मेरा ना हमेशा से एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू रहा है कि मैं ना कोई भी ओपोनेंट के सामने खेलूँ मतलब मैं अगर सीरियस गो के बेस्ट टीम के सामने भी खेल लूँ ना तो मैं उनको त्रैश समझ के खेलूंगा 
मेरा एक मानना है कि जब तुमको लगता है ना कि ओपोनेंट अच्छा है और जब तुम रिस्पेक्ट देखे खेलते हो तो तुम तुम्हारा नेचुरल गेम खेल ही नहीं सकते जब तुम डर के खेलते हो ना तो तुम खेल ही नहीं सकते गेम तो मेरे को लेजिट फर्क नहीं पड़ता तो मेरे को लगता है कि बाकी टीम्स को तुम लोग से डरना ही चाहिए क्योंकि हम लोग के पास कुछ खोने के लिए है ही नहीं हम लोग वैसा गेम खेलते you know sounding a little cocky some people might say but i love it though those are fighting words honestly i want to see more from him today i want him to walk into the grand final to just be like yeah it's going to be an easy 2-0 again bangalore are you ready an indoor stadium in bangalore packed after pandemic and the worldwide audience looking at the action happening here sabse best thing kya hai ki inhone land finals bangalore mein rakha hai aur bangalore hum log ka home ground hai kyunki gods and bangalore ki team hai namba bangalore it doesn't matter i like to shut the crowd ruk ja bhai ruk ja It started in internet cafes across the country in India, and obviously transferring into the online tournament, being played in a league format. You've got to play round robin. It's a very, very grueling task to have to play that many games, secure enough points to get here, and now it's all coming down to one best of three. Wow! SK Wow at part of a dub, four kills. What a start! It is Velociraptor in his hands. And he needs to rattle the kills quickly. Here's the first run out of ammo. Defuse is coming through the knife pole. He's got it. He got him off the defuse, and there's no time. There's no time for this. The knife has done it. Surely at this point, oh, just about, just about the last tick on the defuse, and Revan secures it. He would need another one here from behind the cage. It won't be the position of choice. A crazy game. A right for the fire. Right for the flames. And God's rain, just like that, flipping back in their favor. Bomb getting planted as well, and this is everything for Revenant Esports. 3v4, the retake is off. And it's looking good for Gump. Nice shot, but he's alone. He's alone in this world. And he is the only remaining player. And it will be God's rain taking the first map of the grand final. They are one away from calling themselves champions. Here comes this mid fight, a couple of bits, which is... Being the point for Revenant, and it's Gump that comes out on the double, but the kills are coming back. It's an absolute massacre inside of A main, and the bomb has actually made it out alive. It's going to get that cool red room timing perfect for Finn. Well done. Playing with a food right now, and enable to do nothing about this. Time is ticking on, and so are his chances of winning this round. He gives a slither of a chance right at the end, but not anymore. Finn closes it, and God Train will win the pistol on the second map of the grand final. somewhat of a conversation around who is the better opper who is that player in India that everybody should be getting behind and getting excited about is it fired up on his AWP or is it Revan and I think throughout today it has been Revan that has yep. come out on top of that and the shot to Revan the hero for them steps up the hometown hero delivering it's tournament points for God's ring They have to make something magical work with Kill Switch. He's gonna find the first crazy with the second of 4v3. Oh, crazy start, but it's all coming to a close. Months of Counter-Strike. Starting with the WAN Cafes. Into the online stage. God train a team that no one predicted to win this competition. But the local heroes in Bangalore are just moments away from lifting the biggest trophy in Indian Counter-Strike history. And for Revan, he will confirm his status as one of India's best. God's win have done it! Presenting to you officially your champions of Sky Sports Masters 2023. Give it up for God's win! चलो गाइस 
ये वो ट्रॉफी है जो हमने सबसे इजीली कमाई है इसके लिए कुछ मेहनत नहीं करना पड़ा तो बोला था मारेंगे कुत्ता बना के मार दिया Welcome to Sky Esports, a leading gaming and esports organization known worldwide for a top-notch tournament IPs and engaging gaming content. With over 100 tournaments and 10 successful esports IPs under our belt, Sky Esports has amassed over 700 million views and 3 billion impressions. But we are more than just numbers. Sky Esports is proud to foster the largest community and content distribution network. boasting over 2 million community members and a portfolio of 200 plus gaming creators but that's not all Sky Esports is dedicated to bringing the best gaming experiences to audiences worldwide. We ventured into reintroducing Counter-Strike to the Indian esports scene and have successfully hosted global teams. Our flagship tournaments including Sky Esports Grand Slam, Sky Esports Championship and Sky Esports Masters have become synonymous with excellence in Counter-Strike. In 2023, Sky Esports made history by hosting India's largest CS LAN event, Sky Esports Masters. And now, in 2024, we have taken it global with closed EU qualifiers. Sky Esports is more than just a name. It's a commitment to elevate the gaming and esports industry to new heights. In the wake of Sky Esports Masters Ignition last year, the tournament has gone global in 2024. It all commenced with the intense EU closed qualifiers where 12 teams poured their souls into securing a spot in the main event through a grueling single elimination bracket. Fnatic, Forze, Betpoom and VP Prodigy made it to the top 4. In the finals, it was Forze versus Betpoom where Forze emerged victorious with an insane comeback match with a score of 3-2. Triumphing over Betpoom to clinch both teams' qualification. Following suit were the Indian Open and closed qualifiers, where amidst fierce competition, God's Rain, True Reapers, Grey Fox, and Marcos Gaming stood out as the top four contenders. In a riveting final showdown, God's Rain orchestrated a stunning comeback, sweeping True Reapers with a mesmerizing scoreline of 3-2 to secure their berth in the main event. In the main event, five invited teams. Ents, Aurora, OG, Big, and Ninjas in pajamas were slated to compete. Joining this prestigious lineup are the victors of the EU closed qualifiers, Forze and Betpoom, and the triumphant squad from the Indian qualifiers, God's Rain. This diverse array of talent promises an exhilarating competition as they strive for supremacy on the gaming stage. The Sky Esports Masters 2024 is set to unfold from April 8 to April 14th with a staggering prize pool of 350,000 US dollars up for grabs and the winner gets a direct invite to Sky Esports Championship 2024. Who will emerge as the ultimate champion? Tune into Sky Esports on YouTube and Twitch to find out. Respect from one expect 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 respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect
I would love to play against Indian guys, Nib and Big. Yeah, that that's the three teams I would like to play against. It would be fun to play against them. Who are screaming? Because uh, when you win a BO5 with three insane comebacks, it feels uh, it feels like some magic. It feels like not uh, reality. So yeah. I think the biggest opponent is ourselves, and uh, if we play our game good, we're gonna win this tournament. work hard, we give our best and um, we will succeed with it, I'm pretty sure. And just for everyone who's supporting us, our fan club, um, you're the best guys and yeah, go big. I think what's uh, like, what is good for us is that uh, we have a new lineup, a lot uh, more like new energy, everyone is hyped, everyone really wants to play, wants to win. And uh, I mean, there is no, you can't anti disrupt us, right? From uh, the other team's perspective, so they don't know what they're gonna face, they don't know how we're gonna play, and uh, I mean, that's, uh, that could be good for us. I'm usually not thinking about that at all, because like, uh, it not don't really matter how you played in the past. It's really matter how you you will play in the future. Yeah, like things are looking great, and it's just a matter of time before we get into the groove and start winning things. So yeah. Like this tournament matters a lot. Even if we get, get to play like four to six maps, it will be very helpful for us because we are we are playing against a tier one team, and that's never happened in India before. So, yeah, it's crucial for us to gain that experience, and so we can you know use that in the next two to three years and uh, become like them. Hey there, welcome to Day 2, Sky Sports Masters 2024, uh, powered by AMD. My name is Blair, joining me, uh, as, as we did yesterday, is going to be Lucifer. I mean, uh, I just want to just jump in straight into this one, mm -hmm. right? Like, Day 1, just some crazy counter we saw, you know, some unexpected results in Day 1, some expected results on, on the second map as well. And today, of course, we have uh, the four, new te four teams we haven't seen playing yet. How are you feeling? I'm excited for this day because uh, I think a lot of people in the home ground that we saw last year in 2023 looked forward to God's Rain lifting the trophy and they did. And today we're going to be having them playing in our second series. And I think that's going to be more exciting for me and especially the storyline that we were building with Ninjas in Pyjamas. Uh, we'll come to that later down the line but I think the first series also we, are, we have on our hand. 
Bet Boom as well as Big. They have a little rivalry going on between them itself. Uh, the early all RMR, the performances as IGLs that they want to prove. What do you have to say about that? Well, I, I have to say that you seem a little biased with the God Rain uh, <laughs> matchup taking place later on. But yeah, I do agree with you. We do, you know, we can probably just touch upon uh, yesterday's results as well. Take a look at the brackets, hopefully, uh, very quickly. And just, just to kind of paint a picture as to what we have in store for you guys over the course of this week. And obviously today is day two. We started off yesterday. Eight teams basically battling yes. it out for uh, $350,000, which is... Uh, it's a quite a bit of money. Yeah, last time we ended up seeing two growers with the prize pool. We had partner teams playing in the Masters 23. This time, as you mentioned, it's up the ante over there. And eight teams, especially with invited teams coming into the play, along with the EU closed qualifiers that we had. An interesting set of formats that we ended up seeing with our eight teams right as now. And at the end of day one and day two as well, we are going to be having all our eight teams playing. That's the interesting fact that none of them have been eliminated because of the double elimination bracket. So True. therefore, the safety net's still there. Yeah, d double elimination. That's the format we're going to be having for this entire tournament. Yesterday we had two games take place. Uh, you know, obviously where uh, it was it was Forza coming out on top, taking down uh, Ents early in the day, and then later on, of course, uh, we had the we had the kind of more expected result in the form of Aurora, looking very very uh, good indeed. And of course, today we're going to be having four more teams uh, duking it out. Double Elim, best of threes throughout. Two best of threes a day, apart from the final couple of days. We're going to obviously have you know the consolidation finals and a lower bracket finals. But uh, um, yeah, I'm excited about the the entire tournament of course i'm also very excited about the the games that we have lined up here today uh the first game we touched upon obviously bet boom versus big two teams who uh, seem a little lost right now right you know we, we had nafani's bed boom coming in uh, from the start of cs2 he mm -hmm. seemed to have a point to prove you know trying to show that he wasn't a problem in that gambit cloud nine roster uh you know he picked up chiron siren they were looking pretty interesting pretty pretty solid initially but kind of kind of fell off a little bit yeah i think um bed boom have been trying to bring about something great and also even in our eu, EU close qualifiers right uh, bringing that into light is they were the ones highly likely to just become the champions they had it completely under control and it seemed like forze were not even there in that game yeah and they gave them an unbelievable chance to make a comeback. And it was not just on the first map play. It was all the way coming in from the first map as well. And it was insane comebacks that we ended up seeing from Forze, which Bet Boom shouldn't have allowed for. And I think that's where we also ended up seeing them having chinks in their armor. And it feels right now, as you said, questionable of what Bet Boom can do different today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, they, they've already had a little bit of a small change as well. Dan is getting taken off from the roster, a new one being added pretty uh, recently. Have been on a bit of a grind as well in the uh, online scene, just trying to kind of find their find the right footing. You look at some of the names of the players there, you know, they, like you have players like Zorte, who was in Forza a while, while mm -hmm. ago. You have players like Chiron, who, you know, infamously was playing on Virtus Pro alongside Jame. And, of course, the aforementioned Nafni as well. Uh, on, other, on the other side of Big, you know, it's it's been... Um, Kind of, kind of slim when it comes to the the games they played recently. I think uh, they just had a recent online game. Uh, apart from that, I think the last time they played in any noteworthy event would would, would have been uh, would have been when they played in uh, in the Blast Showdown, sure. where they lost the Spirit. It was a pretty solid showing overall, but that was over a month ago. They barely had any exactly. games a lot uh, to speak of. And for me, this entire thing about the the return of Sirson into into uh, this team I, I think that's a whole story of its own as we take a look at the brackets right here uh big bed boom nip god's rain that's going to be the story of the games we're going to be having here today we'll touch a little bit upon uh, a nip and god's rain as well i think that's a pretty interesting history uh lesson and some story uh, there in itself top of the bracket so we have fours and aurora gaming coming out on top that matchup is going to be taking place later on uh tomorrow and that's an interesting matchup right you're talking about you know, a couple of ex players you know exactly. swapping teams forza a dead team walking still coming out on top against ants yesterday yeah i think that was the main talking point yesterday and a big upset for all the viewers uh, a lot of the fans as well for ants yep. uh, they thought it should be all in their favor we saw the odds as well it looked comfortable in their hands but no Forza just were better. Even after the play on Anubis, we ended up thinking, okay, now Ents have 
woken up it should be them moving ahead and maybe closing it off in the best of three series but no Forze push it to overtime and make it happen Aurora as we mentioned comfortably in the first two matches itself closed it all but now coming into our schedule we spoke about this big and bet boom we talked a lot about bet boom as a bet boom coming through but I want to talk a little about big uh, as you said they have had very slim games coming through but mm-hmm. Taps in seven years in the team he's still trying to do a lot along with Sirson as you said do you think this is going to bring back uh, the early little success that Sirson had and as you said he was notorious to be the MVPs and the top fragger as well yeah I mean you, you love to see it right Sirson's a bit of a, of a love and hate affair uh, you, know, you know where you know he can be really good but then tends to disappear when he's really needing to step up the most the JDC edition though uh, it, it is kind of curious obviously he's going for this entire German uh, lineup you know German organ all of that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of very tenured very very uh, historic names involved in this organization as well right so you know th- if I look at big I- I'm looking at not just taps and everyone here I'm looking at people like Gopi in that team I'm taking like you know people like Roman R uh, the legends of the German counter-strike scene who's been around for a while uh, but for me the play to watch out for obviously has to be Krimbo uh, I think Krimbo's the easily the best player right now for the team and if memory serves me right he did uh, recently resign again for big, not resign, but resign yeah. uh, for big uh, for at least a year or two. So uh, they really, he's putting a lot of faith in the org as well, and the org obviously holding on to him. I think he's he is a fantastic talent overall. Process, he's been doing his job overall. For Tapson, though, you know, th- there was a time where we wanted him to, you know, maybe move on from Big, go to greener pastures because of how good he was individually speaking. But he has decided that, you know, Big is going to be his home. You know, his home is, you know, of course, in in, uh, in Deutschland, if I pronounce that right. So uh, he's made his home here and, and he's trying to find that success, which has eluded Big. Something which, you know, they w- maybe a, a team like Eternal Fire's recent success is what they've been looking to emulate as well. And hopefully this lineup does kind of click for them uh, but that being said yeah I really haven't seen much so far recently and hopefully you know they've been kind of boot camping and kind of figuring it out but bedroom though they've been on the grind of uh, replacing uh, replacing the fifth for Magnuses who I won't lie I haven't seen too much of him so far but hopefully it's gonna help them out I just one thing kind of I feel from Magnus is uh, he's out from the Spirit Academy now playing for Bet Boom. Yeah. Uh, we just see the Donk show coming through recently uh, in our early uh, start for CS2, the big land coming through in Katowice. So I think from there, there might be a lot of expectations for Magnus as well. And also the entire lineup of Bet Boom is a, a little in terms of uh, young guns coming through. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting of how they play out. You mentioned about Zorte already, Siren as well. But as we were talking about Tab, Again, it's going to be Nafni here on Betboom's end. So it can be the question of what can Nafni bring about this time. Yeah, I, I think the uh, the pressure is definitely on for Nafni, right? I, I remember in in Sydney when he it looked like you know Betboom they were finding a little bit of success. I believe they almost made it to the playoffs, but kind of fell short right there. But ever since then, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a disappointing. Uh, run so far, which is why they replaced Danis, uh, you know, with the with the failure for the at the major and whatnot. And, and for the side of uh, big, obviously Tapson is big. Big is Tapson, and uh, look, big doing good. It's just I, I feel it's just cool for Counter Strike as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. We, we were looking at some of these really cool storylines, uh, which transpired at the major, and I'm looking at a team like uh, Eternal Fire, for example. Just looking at the way Eternal Fire were able to kind of you know, channel this nationalistic fervor when it comes to the Turkish uh, region and the Turkish Counter Strike fan base, I think it was a really cool storyline, right? You're looking at someone like, uh, you know, with with, with Maja, you had Zantaris, Voxic, and all these guys, and the success they they found making their playoffs of a major. I think that was pretty cool, and it's not just, and, and it wasn't just a flash in the pan. They have been looking very good for the past few months, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's what we've been waiting for from big for years at this point right now, right? So I feel this year is going to be pretty telling as to what the trajectory is going to be for this particular team. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to jump into the videos here. No surprises in front of the band for Bed Boom. Uh, big with the Mirage band, two maps, they they, they, they perma ban. Uh, Bed Boom overpass pick, usually go for it. Uh, are from uh, It's usually Mirage and overpass. Anubis a pick from band, of course, and Ancient a decider, which is kind of uh, you know 50-50 for both the two teams. So pretty standard. Picks and bans coming in from both the teams. Uh, big starting on the CT side here on overpass. And of course, for the side of Bed Boom, uh, no, no surprises going for the T start here on Anubis. Pretty bog standard map picks and bans coming in from both the teams. Yeah, good decision for Mirage to kind of push it out. Uh, 
Petroom clearly have better success over there, so they which, which, which kind of hurts, uh, which yeah. kind of hurts for Petroom because it is the perma ban for for Big, right? And now with it starting off an overpass, and as well as you mentioned, right, the, all the map seems to be very good for all of them. It should be closely contested. It doesn't seem to be favoring one of the teams, and I think it's going to be interesting as how we see this. But yesterday, irrespective of where the percentages told us, the stats told us who who would look better on a map, maybe they did look better on the map that map. But the series completely was not in their favor. Uh, just like we kind of saw the second game, OG, uh, the first series itself ends a complete surprise over there. So. expectations here as you mentioned yes big is something that everybody is looking forward to that roster the german roster who goes through completely this time might be the start of their games have not been great or they've not had a lot of games that we could go through with to discuss about whereas betpo they've had successes they've been playing in recent tournaments which we can still find and it's kind of right now they're on a streak of four games that they won in, in another tournament which i can't it's somewhere in europe that we are seeing that tournament happening uh, so I think from there Betboom might be running the high of victory but yes I'm still worried of that loss that they had here in the EU close qualifiers finals. Yeah I mean that that uh, yeah true that's also there but at, at the same time you know considering how much they've been grinding it out uh you would have to kind of kind of edge the way of that boom over here right for for the side of big hopefully they've been ki- they've been kind of cooking you know mm-hmm. they've been um kind of afk from a lot of uh, online events obviously missing a major uh, that's going to be uh it's going to be rough for them not many events happening at the time but hopefully they've been kind of cooking in the kitchen and have some cool stuff coming out for us here uh today obviously excited to see uh, and that's the thing with big right I- i'm looking at someone like sirson especially if it's online as well I'm not calling him an onliner but you know if sirson pops off if crimbo just continues to play at the level he does and process and tap and they do, they do their job suddenly uh, this big team could low key be uh, a bit of a dark horse honestly yeah. for for the entire event and even though we have aurora but then you look at someone like ens who look a little shaky right now big for me if i had to pick a team to be the dark horse for the sky esports masters 2024 it would be the germans I agree now the players seem to be ready it's going to be our first special round and the map as well as we earlier saw it is none other than overpass looks like the squad is all at the boot camp except for the couple of players from big everybody else let's see how this goes through betpoom versus uh, big the first map the special round under way and as you said are they going to be the dark horses are they going to completely wipe out betpoom right from the start at this pistol betpoom there's no time all five players grouped up here Just one set of utility on the hands of Nafni. Just the smoke and a flashbang. And for the side of Big, pretty aggressive hold towards the uh, towards the toilets here. Three players together. It is going to be JDC, Tapsy, and Sirson. And JDC with a nice opening. And that's a lot of information being gained by JDC here. I'm not too sure if Bedroom are going to be expecting two more CTs. They find Tapsy, and now they know where Sirson is as well. As they pump the brakes here, slow things down a bit. Rotation already in place. Crimbo now trying to bolster this A bomb site and leaving just the one defender towards that B bomb site. But process a well-timed smoke here. Duelist as well. If they push on through, this could be a bit of a problem. But they have so much time to work with. They could just go for the double pump here. One flashbang remaining though, and it's going to be the flash for monster and the push. coming in through short as well process has so much work to do so though able to help him out find one process with the duel is gets just the one leaving it down to a 2v2 30 seconds on the clock bomb yet to be planted here and kyron trying to get the skill on the player in the water and is going to be serious and finding a second of the round looking for the final nafni versus serious 1v1 seven bullets here for Daphne is going to come up with the clutch that came down to the wire came down to the 1v1 but bet boom will win a pretty back and forth round yeah i think uh, first jdc kind of finding the first of the bathroom i expected there might be a little more over there because they were almost lining up one after another those stabs from the usb could have found a lot more but quick were bet boom to react to it find him down and especially the find on tapson uh, the push from long that might have gave, given them a chance to work with and now with betpoom finding their first yeah it swinged either way the odds didn't look like uh, it was either bigs or betpooms so the start looked like big could have made it happen you can also check your odds at one expert app but right as now it's going to be a quick pause uh, might be a small tech issue that one of the players are facing but it should be fairly a buy run coming in for betpoom uh, they won it as well it should be a complete save for big without any worries but again uh, oh wait okay 
they decide let's try for the force. Also, for those of you uh, just tuning in, uh, Sky Sports Masters powered by AMD. And of course, you can know the One X bet, no One X bet app. You can use a promo code One X Sky Esports to get you 130% bonus. That's a that's a lot of bonus. All right, on the first deposit. But here we go. As big, looking to make this force work. A couple of uh, MP9s for Crosses and JDC. Crimbo with the 5.7 uh, and Cirrus with the Scout. One of the uh, the specialists with the scope rifles. There used to be a time where he used to only wield the Scout or the AWP, and he's being hunted down here. Good pathing coming in from Naphne. And Naphne, he ended the previous round with a kill on Cirrus, and then he's going to start a second round with a kill on the same guy as well. Perhaps I'm quick to recover, but the jump peaks. That gives them the idea that the scoped weapon is still in someone's hand. And from there, because of the control at shot that they have, seems like they would want to rotate out. They also have a player towards Monster. There can be a play made there. But it seems like they're all grouping out towards shot. They're setting it up. They did exchange util, so they're going to be lining them up. And then maybe a quick run at A side. There are two players right now. It's going to be JDC as well as Tapsin to hold this line down. Trying to get closer, Tapsin. Tags here from Tapson with a scout, they could do so much damage. JDC with MP9 could pop the remaining players up. 30 seconds here. They're so gonna commit. Tapson finds second kill. Going aggressive with the P250. Could have played it one a little bit more safer with the scout instead. He will be taken down to now a 3v2. Player advantage here for the side. Off bed boom. Bomb getting planted and smoke getting deployed towards uh bin. Oh, that's such a good nade! But not enough to get the kill. Well, kids can play either, so if they want to go for this, they need to make it quick. But a second smoke getting deployed might force Big to just let go of this one. And yeah, that should be a round number two here for Bedroom. I, I guess Tapson was just paranoid about the players pushing in from long and just trying to take the fight to a short. But fortunately, the gamble doesn't quite pay out. And uh, yeah, uh, that looked a little, a little spicy, a little scary there for for bed boom but they're gonna hold on to their uh, to the rifles and it's gonna be round number two for them for big the other three players they go for the full eco but at least you still have this 5-7 and mp9 and the hands of crimbo and process they could still be pretty deadly did do the damage the scores didn't go their way but as you said yeah they could have been something more to be found uh with jdc pushing up a little too close to shot and tabson I think he also swung out because JDC might have given him the call that I've done the damage. Maybe you'll find one on the pistol and it didn't work out their way. If they found that, however, I think Big might have had their foot in that round. But right as now, as you said, it is going to be a full eco coming through. A couple of utils, yes, being invested. I mean, again, they do have an MP9 and a 5.7 so they can make something work along with the Deagle also being invested here. JDC. Sponsored a player. Short pipe, it's gonna be siren, but uh, yeah, bedroom, they're not really being too aggressive here. Just classic anti eco, looking for any stacks, looking for any early aggression from the CT. I've just gone for this, uh, for this heavy lean towards B. Sirson's the only one towards A, just the USB is just, just gonna try and jump spot, try and gather inf any information as to whether it might be an A hit. Just use up the one smoke they had. Or monster. So for the CTs, they have a couple of smokes remaining in the hands of Crimble and Process, but that's all the way towards the B bomb site. Rotation is starting to take place, though. Bed Boom are looking to make their intentions kind of clear that this A bomb site is the object of their affections. And they're making no secret of this. And that's going to allow Vic to rotate four players now, maybe even the fifth, back towards A. Softens out over there, but not much to be worried about. Oh, nice find from JDC. And now there are a lot more forces here. It's going to be tough for them to execute. They do have a try on connector, but they're still trying to run through JDC. Along with Process, do find a Magna Jazz. He puts two of them down. Nathne too close. He finds a player off guard with Util, but oh. doesn't win the duel. And now it's all down to Magna Jazz in a 1v2 situation. Fails, and that's going to be big. Getting the first in a round where they're...
Yeah, it was a complete save coming in from them, just for a couple of upgraded pistols and the second round investment that they carried over. Yeah, that that's that's not pretty from uh, from Bed Boom. Uh, whew, that should have been just an, an easy bonus round, but they didn't really go for any exec either, and they were basically just telegraphing it. It was gonna be an A hit, right? They they didn't really pressure B. No presence being shown there uh, later in the round, and so for Big, they're like, you don't really have much, they don't have much to lose here. They haven't saved MP9 as they pointed out. They have, a, they have a deagle at the 5 7, and they're like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. We're just gonna gamble towards A. And Bed Boom, uh, utility usage was completely lacking. Not able to flush out the CTs, especially from the truck position, and just like that, big steal around away here on Bed Boom's map pick. That's gonna allow them to get a pretty comfortable buy. You can see Crimbo sitting pretty on $4,000 in process on 35. 3,800, beg your pardon. Searson, the zoom banger comes out to play early on. Obviously, he's going to be playing towards A here. While for the CTs, again, uh, really looking for these early heavy B leans. And that means Searson's going to be facing pressure real quickly. There's no one nearby. He needs to stand and deliver. Find the first. Spots a second. Ah, oh, but a jiggle comes out, and it's a great work from Manages and Siren to get a killer to Searson. Still a 4v4. Smokes will be deployed. And for Big, they're clambering, ca clambering together to go for this retake. Do have two kits, but Util's just two flashes. Oh, in. it's gonna go for the save. No. I think that's the right call as well. Just, like, no presence towards short, nowhere towards connector. It, it was gonna be a very, uh, nigh impossible retake if they really went for it, right? And especially for Bed Booms, it's very comfortable positions, post plan positions to to pl to play from, uh, I think that was a pretty good good call from Bedroom having a good read that you know it was going to be a pretty heavy lean coming in from Big towards the B bomb side, and it was going to be mostly just a one player, and they didn't waste too much time you know, clearing uh, towards bathrooms. They didn't face any pressure towards mid and towards fountain, so they're like you know what we've just been giving a lot of free real estate. They sped up towards bathrooms, and before Tapson was able to rotate back towards uh, towards the uh, A bomb side, Searson, he was good for one, but the moment he got traded out, that was it. And even the position he's playing from, I'm not a big fan of it because it requires him to uh, you know, get a multi kill or at least stay alive for as long as possible. But he just gets the first kill, uh, wasn't able to deploy smoke, which I believe he had one to try and stay alive. But good work from Bedroom there. Takes on Searson very quickly. Doesn't all picked up as well for Mr. Sorte. Uh, but for big, because they were able to win that number, uh, the round number three, which is basically a full ego, they will still be able to eke out a full-fledged buy. And once again, Searson alone. This time towards long, though. Mm -hmm. now, there's a flash setup, but he still finds it through. Another hit. Have like Nafani to make early contact towards long. Tags up Searson a little bit. Half HP, good read. It's kind of funny how Nafani and Searson have been on this 1v1 duels for the entire map here. As, Sir, as uh, Siren opens it up, finds Crimbo. Still another player, another defender. On the bomb site. And he's gonna try and buy time, but no, Siren's gonna find process as well. And suddenly from a what is seemingly an impossible situation, a 2v5, bomb planted. 2v3, Magnus and Siren, they can potentially turn this one around. Magnus S, Nate in hand as well. Flash not really gonna find Siren. He finds the first kill as well. And Magnus is just going massive. Whoa. That is huge from Siren and Magnus S from a 2v5. Down to a 2v1 and for taps and time's running away. His position is known as well. He knows where the final player is as well, but he won't get the kill. Siren will clutch out the 1v1 and Bedboom. 
they get away with daylight robbery that should never have been around for big to throw away a 5v2 that should have been in the bag especially after all the work siren did getting the first kill towards long duking it out here in short finding nafani but then just brilliant stuff coming in from siren and magnuses working in tandem together and yeah that that's just around you can't afford to lose and with that bed boo massive lead already early in this half and for big it's just down to pistols once again and especially after susan having such a good opening and also a couple of frags later down the line and can they steal another cheeky one like they did in the third one they do have the upgraded pistols this time not an mp9 previously it was jdc to find an insane deek shot this time it is three players getting closer to the stack at a one already pushing out that's going to be susan at long if the timing's good enough he might be able to catch one he has a backup as well that's going to be tapson peak wait he's going to check the clear close there's the op right behind it but jdc again the they, first they don't know the second player though they have no idea susan's here he gets his kill oh oh Oh, oh, that's ugly. Oh, that's ugly. But JDC, in the meantime, will find Daphne. The Siren finally answering back. They don't want to get eco again here. Back. He doesn't check. He doesn't check. He doesn't check. And Crimbo. Oh, he finds two. And all of a sudden, a round again. I don't know. I bet we're losing his rounds. It's on Azorti now. 1v2. He's got the bomb. So that's one thing going his way. Up in hand as well. Crimbo retrieved AK-47. Is going to slow it down. Waiting for the peak to come in. But Crimbo just swings out wide. Zordi misses the shot. And another round. That big have no business <laughs> winning. Going their way at Bed Boom. They need to uh, tighten up some of these rounds. I mean, I mean, they're winning the harder rounds. The 2v5s. But then, again, just the pistols. Despite a complete whiff coming in from Searson. Uh, but they'll take that. Yeah, if you're big, you're still gonna take that, but yikes! Uh, that's, uh, that's painful for Bed Boom. Just the one AK remains because of that round, and, uh, a few pistols, but they've won worse rounds. They won, they won with worse by, so... Uh, it does look like it's gonna be a, a bit of a faster B lean coming in here from now. There's some aggression at Waters, which will be immediately clear. There's still one that connected through the smoke. Ah, uh, that was a big gamble that they played out, thinking that the smoke would be clear, and... Just get put down and that's going to be free weapon upgrades coming through. And as you said, this might just be around like how Big pulled it out. Petpoom might be just doing it. That's Krimbo down. Down to the last two players, Sisson as well as JDC. JDC will oh. try his best position known. And that's going to be an easy clear. They're all surrounding him. Wins one way. There's a lot. No. Kyron puts him down and that's going to be Sisson who should call it a day and uh, just move back with this big green barrel. And that should be fifth for Petpoom. Yeah, there's no way Sirson's going to be going for this, especially with the with that gun in his hands. It's been a it's been a, a curious series of ins of of rounds, I might say, from uh, from both these two teams. Bed boom, winning a two v five, followed by big winning with just the pistols, and then after that, bed boom with just one AK, mind you, just the one AK, in which I I believe the AK just got one kill. If I'm not mistaken, it was primarily the uh, the Tech Nines just mm -hmm. running a muck on that B bomb site, and Bed Boom, they're they're back in business again. The round was five for them, five to two, and for Bed uh, and for Big, well, they have this op to work around, but for the rest of the players, it's it's gonna be a rough buy if they go for this. Now, Crimbo could drop a few pistols, perhaps, maybe, uh, could upgrade to a, a rifle, yeah, just to try and. Try and work around the AWP, you know, the, the A1 and the AWP. Maybe try and go for a little bit more of aggressive play. There's a cheeky stack somewhere and try and uh, give Bed Boom a taste of their own medicine, perhaps. But apart from that, it has to be pretty much a full eco for the majority of the players here on the side of Big. It, yeah, okay. Um, it, it's a bit of a wild start. I won't lie to the day. Some pretty interesting rounds being lost and being won by both the teams. Citizen, can he find another this time? This time? Siren, he tries to explore sewers, doesn't find much. There's no aggression on that end. There are, yes, three players on B side, but none of them get spotted from Siren. Therefore, he just backs off. He's rechecking monster. In the meantime, a slow move up. Oh, the op. 
from Sayasun at finds. That's going to be Siren down. The man who wanted to give away a signal for his teammates of any presence on B just loses himself. And now they are all moving up at A. And a quick run up. But Zote again gets stabs in. But quick on the trigger and the trade. Krimbo gets it back. And long control is going to be there. The possibility of a retake might be on the card. But they have to be quick. They do not have a kit. Krimbo being alive though. That could be... Uh the difference maker here, JDC. How does he get that kill? Catching Pyron off guard. Maybe not expecting him to walk on out. Good spacing, good trade from Process. And it's all on Nafne. Nafne should be aware. Nafne should know that Krimbo was towards long, but I guess some of in the fog of war he lost track, and that's gonna be um <laughs> the round one by big with, with just the, the saved up AWP, the A1 purchase, and to be honest, it was Majority of the kills are coming in from the pistols again. The P50 yeah. kill from JDC walking out from the bank smoke, and I, I don't know what I'm watching here. These are some very very sloppy rounds coming in from Bed Boom on their anti ecos, just getting out dueled, caught off guard, being very sloppy in some of the angle clearings, and all three rounds big of one have been off these half buys, pistol buys, and whatnot. So. It is it kind of it's kind of crazy that Bed Boom still have a pretty substantial lead, but with that uh, they're back to pistols again. And you know what happens when they have pistols? <laughs> they they seem to win. Yeah, Nafni uh, doesn't seem happy. I wouldn't either. It's been the case for, on either end. Whenever they've been on those weaker buys or upgraded pistols, they've been winning it, whether it be Big or Bed Boom. And it's been swinging from the very third round, and there seems to be no breaks being punched in to slow this down. And it has been those very weird plays coming through. Tabson was usually playing towards Bath, uh, outside at long, alone. And this time they had another layer over there as Krimbo and that works out this time. Previously it was JDC uh, right towards shot. It's going to be a quick play out at B while taking Sewer's control. But as you can see, I, I think Big have understood that as long as they're the ones forcing a battle very early, it's them losing the weapons. And again, a quick check ends up being a double down. Kyron just clears them off. But well, that's going to be a good value, even though there was a nade dropped and figured him out and found him. It's still good enough so far for Bed Boom. Yeah, uh, the rifle can be retrieved. A fast boost coming in from Nafani. JDC is not aware of this. It could get caught off guard. Slow things down. Yeah, the gun's not been retrieved yet. It's Nafani. Boost. Spotted. They see each other, but Krimbo decapitates him. Even Stevens now. As JDC catches Magnus S, so danger seems to have been averted, but while this is happening, Siren snuck on into its monster flash. No reaction behind it, however. Zorty. Galil. All alone here, this one should be done. Good work from JDC and Krimbo to, to just stabilize things, as I was looking really, really iffy there for uh, for Big, especially after the opening two kills from, from Chiron. And, uh, yeah, all right, they stave off a, a force buy. <laughs> so that, that's some normalcy being restored in the in the server for the time being as Big try to crawl it back and try and make it, at least give themselves a little bit of breathing space come around, uh, come the second half of the game. Because for bedroom farmers on the T side, they should be pretty feeling pretty comfortable again. Playing default this time, but still the spam. Through the boost at B, does find some damage. Magnus just is super low. Right behind that, there was a nade thrown, but does creep, keep a distance between himself, making sure that it doesn't get taken away or a free kill is being granted. In the meantime, Siren, as usual, moving around B, looking forward to an opportunity. Big this time, taking a later approach towards Sewers. The barrel is moving ahead. Siren, if he holds his position, might be able to find one, but the cheeky edge missed his opportunity. Sisson has to back away, they smoke it off, and they're gonna let it through. And now Siren has recalled his teammates. They might be all planning in for an execute. There's a setup here, they're re-clearing sewers, making sure they have control, and maybe go for a crunch from there. Still very brave. Spots the knees out, a missed shot, needs to be careful, and he is aware. Oh, he's playing a very, very dangerous game, and the timing here is great. Nafni has caught such a good timing. Can find the player that is Searson. Process though, blind is able to open the things up, and Searson found himself in a very comfortable position here. And with JDC and Process around him, they just 
getting absolutely slaughtered. Simon, top of the smoke, top of the sandbag, looking to find something, and he will indeed find process. Simultaneously, Nafni getting to ADC. The danger is quickly being averted. Okay, Siren. Looks like looks like it was on Crimbo there. But he will finish off the job. This big will tie things up. Things up. It was labored. It was painful. But they get it done for bedroom. This should be the call for just a full eco here. Maybe you know, a couple of PD50s, a Tech 9s, a little bit of utility, a faster play coming in. Uh, and maybe try to get the bomb down. I think that'd be a big win. But for big, this is a golden opportunity to ensure that at least get to six rounds. Quick utils as usual. Trying to slow them down. Can be some connection to its connector. Again, the fight magnitudes as usual. This time doesn't get softened up. Oh, he does actually. Down to 31. Tapson still wants to explore. It's quite a spread coming in here from Pet Boom. In an eco round coming through while they've already lost Nash. Another chance here. This time Magnum just doesn't survive. A slow clear, but it's granted a success. The good sign is for uh, for big. It's like you know JDC Crimbo. They're looking pretty pretty sharp off the gate here, despite you know it being a little bit of a back and forth affair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's just overall a good sign. Come map number two, which you know it's going to be Big's pick. Anubis for those of you just tuning in. Oof, all right, Chiron is uh, he's cracking some heads here, but one v five. Anything that. Great, I say, as uh, okay. All right, it's making him a bleed a bit. Now it's not really going to affect the the money of big because they do have enough uh, funds in a coffer to purchase a pretty comfortable buy come the final round of this uh, first half. But yeah, a little bit of damage being dealt out by by Chiron and these nice fresh haircuts. But if big can get to seven, I think they're going to be very happy with it because it mm -hmm. looked like. Bad Boomer just kind of running away with it. Yeah, I think uh, early rounds it looked like just big trying to take control of things, uh, positioning, waiting for uh, Bad Boom to walk right into their crosses, which was not the case. But after that, big they've restabilized themselves, got on the rounds. But look at this, Tabson going aggressive. Start on this first half has not been great. He's just a three, but makes it a four now. This is the first time like they've, they've pushed it this deep, this fast into its playground. Uh, what a time to do so as well. The final round, round number 12 of this first half, and taps and he's, he's looking. Need to be careful. He's got to win out the duel. There's a good trade, but not before it gets taken down at 20 points of health. Just a sliver of an advantage here for big. This process and Magnus is... It's about how patient Magnus can be. The process, good repositioning, finds a kill. 4v3 now. Chiron already down to 20 uh, in that initial fight with Tabson, so he has to either play as the first pick or an informant. They do have utils to execute and they're all grouping up at B. It is Chiron that they've sent as that unhooked player where he can do anything that he wants, surviving at 20. A quick flash again out monster. Let's go. It's quite a couple. Does the damage. Oh, Tyron, he finds process. Maybe another, yes, a nice find. Now this might just give them a chance into the round. It's dead it right, but he couldn't find value. But now the op from Sisson. The Molotov won't really burn the smoke. It's left 17 seconds. They have time to work with here. But look at how low the players are. Sisson being so aggressive. Find Siren. And now all on Zorte. This is winnable. He finds Sirson. Now five seconds. He needs to stick it. Instead, it's just going to fake the planet. JDC nerves of steel. He's not going to bite. He's not going to fall for it. And with that, it is going to be round number seven for big, for big. I can't believe they pulled this one off. And for Bed Boom, they're going to be so annoyed with how some of these rounds have played out. It looked like they really had a such a good opportunity to, you know, have the lead going to the second half here. But for big. It was a little scrappy at times. It was a few mistakes being made by Bed Boom, but you'll take that. Now heading into the uh, in the second half, you know, you win the pistol, you're, you're able to convert the the following anti eco round. Suddenly you're looking good. Suddenly you're like nine and five. So real chance here for Big to try and 
steal Bed Boom's map away from them. But it is easier said than done. A bit of a technical issue in the meantime. And uh, yeah, for those who are just tuning in, you can all obviously uh, check out the, the sponsor of the uh, event, One Expect. You can go get the app and uh, use the use the coupon code, which should be showing up very soon on your screens. I forgot what it was. I think it was like One X One X Sky Esports. There yeah. we go. That's the one. Uh, but yeah, Bed Boom, just to five rounds. And considering what a good start they had, they, yeah, I don't think they're going to be supremely happy about this. And if it again ends up playing out as we saw in the first half, swinging back and forth, Big will be looking forward to that they keep the lead. But it looks like all smiles across Big's faces. Uh, they were happy in those rounds and for them to get seven on that CT half, it looks like they're ready for it. And JDC, we saw him finding those nutty shots over there. Uh, with the dig that he had, even in the P250, uh, because of which all those rounds that he found that uh, opening frags or that retake frags did go through the side of big. And they were the ones who were able to pump that brakes against Betpoom even on their eco round, telling them that it's enough. We've been swinging back and forth on those ecos and uh, snatching rounds away from each other. And now comes into play the crucial second half of whether it's going to be regulation or overtime. Yesterday, we did see one overtime play out play, and today, I'm not too sure, but yeah, as we spoke about the odds, both these teams look forward to taking down each other. Previously, it was uh, big taking down bet boom. So this time, how is it going to swing out? I'll tell you who's come swinging out so far. JDC and uh, and Searson and Krimbo, like the, the deadly trio of big. JDC, it's chilling at home. Shout out to JDC for uh, for, the, for the microphone he's got. He's not got the uh, the usual gamer headsets. A man of uh, man of taste. As bed boom, smoke a flash for Naphne. No kits in play here for the CTs. Uh, and then for the side of big, it is just going to be a similar case here. It's just a smoke and flash of taps and rest of them Glocks through and through. Iron is trying to spot anyone crossing on out. It is going to be process poking and prodding towards sewers while the main members of his team are just going to come barreling up towards Long. Now, is that going to draw the rotation from the CTs? Is the question because Iron hasn't seen anything yet, and the timing could not have been better from process. Yeah, and Kyron just walks away with false information, and that might give them a chance to rotate out. They're grouping out at shot a flash. Zote went for a quick check and he does spot the players, immediately runs back. And it's going to be the last util that the CTs lay down. However, on the other end, Big do have their flash and smoke ready. They take control of connector, moving ahead. Process taking control of Monster and slowly pushing ahead. It's only two players right now at side and if they overpower it right now, they should get the plant. But there's the third. He's made his way, waiting for the opportunity and the timing from Process. There are two players, makes the sound, gets the first, there's one on water and another moving in from CT. If they clear water, that should be their side and they do it. That's going to be the bomb coming down. It's going to be tough for CT now to retake, along with Kyron also falling down. It's all to Zote and Nafni, make it only Zote right now and he's also smoked off. Huge process there, leading the charge, getting those two kills, especially finding a second player inside of water with the duelies. That was, I believe, just pretty much the round guaranteed for big. Triple kill for the youngster. And yeah, this one's done. Zorti just looking for a few exits, and he will indeed find Krimbo, but uh, time's ticking. There's no kid in play. It's going to be round number eight for Big. The touch upon a fact, you, know, you win the pistol, uh, you, you survive the next round. Suddenly you're sitting on 9, 9 to 5, and the lead's starting to look pretty comfortable if you're Big. But those of you for those of you just tuning in, this is the map they're coming in for Bed Boom. You know, it's a map where they've had quite a few amount of reps, right? You'd, they usually go for the Mirage or an Overpass. Mirage being the Perma ban for Big, uh, forcing them to just go for the uh, Overpass Big. But uh, they had a lot of opportunities. If you were watching their first half, there were a lot of opportunities for them to have a pretty substantial lead on the T side. But you would still imagine five rounds should still be enough mm -hmm. for a team here. And they've gone for the full spy. All right. All right. 5-7. The mass for Zorti. It doesn't, if this doesn't pan out, it's pretty much round 10 guaranteed here for Big. Yeah. However, this time they stacked out at B. Spotted a player process at Toxic, but wasn't able to find the kill. Backs off. That's information being gained. 
might decide to move out, softening up the player at Toxic and now they're moving into sewers. And yeah, they're grouping out at Connector. Maybe there's a boost play over there. Process in the meantime exploring his options towards shot. Magma Jess waiting for a peek on that boost. As of now, nothing that big try to make that happen. They're just waiting out to see if Betboom move out or if there's a lot more footsteps out there. Let's see one. JDC finds another player. Big damage coming through. Napni down to 13. Crimbo in the meantime towards uh, Short is trying to occupy occupy the attention of Zorti and Chiron. And Zorti is a player with the FAMAS. He's the one with the rifle. The further away he is from the B-bomb site, the better it is going to be for Big. Another smoke getting deployed towards Monster. Now 30 seconds on the clock. Big have to make up their minds. And now they will. Oh, this could be disastrous for them. Look at the rotation coming in from Bedboom. They win fast. JDC still trying to act as if it's something at all. Oh, oh, the final smoke. The final smoke might actually draw the rotation here. And now it's going to be all on Zorti with the FAMAS. He needs to find at least two. Just able to get the one. But it's inside of Truck. The Deagle from Chiron. Good for one. Looking for the second kill. Will not find it. A 3v3 though. The retake attempt. Absolutely on. Resurson will shut it down. And it's down to the final man. Nafni's all the way behind. But with just the... 5-7 in hand, no kits in play. This one's not going to be easy. He's down 13 HP as well. Good for the kill. And he could just try and escape with the rifle. And I think that's that's the best he can get from this round. It has to be a full eco now for Bedboom. And hope that somehow miraculously Nafani, come the next round, will be able to make something work with his Galil. But with Big, this is round number 9. And as long as they don't mess it up, it's round number 10 guaranteed. And that's our ever close of closing this first map, which is their pick of overpass in their name and walk over to Anubis. And that's when we might end up seeing Betboom back in action. But for now, we did see in the first half a couple of rounds that Betboom and Big both were able to swing in in their favor with the Ecos that they had, the upgraded pistols that they played with. Let's hope Betboom actually finds something of value on the back of Nafni recovering a Galil for himself. Or maybe one of his teammates. Looks like Nafni, as you earlier said, he's still not happy because they're way further from either close to being on a fight here on overpass or even at the score. Therefore, double digits swinging above his head and his team's loss on the first map might not be the start of the series that he intended to, but would like to change if there's a chance. Utils that they were invested very early on have already been used in the form of smoke. Sesson! Again gets found out. The 5-7 finding value. Pressure towards B. Three CTs inside of water. The two USPs. Nafni giving his nade to his teammate. That Galil. That's the only rifle in play here. Well, down to JDC though with a wide swing. Fine. Just the one kill however. But never mind. Process and Crimbo. They strike in tandem. And Chiron left alone. At Mag 10, he was able to retrieve from Sirson. Could try and just go in for the hunt, you know, try and maybe make a little bit of cash. But this one is done. I like how they have such a good smoke there for heaven and completely whips the nade, but <laughs> it do be like that. Uh, yeah, Karn's just going to push on in, maybe try and get an exit, maybe get that $600 bo dollars bonus money. One player is low process, but it looks like process has already decided to move back. Yeah, the smoke, big lob in just to try and force big into thinking there might be a bit of a ninja defuse coming in, trying to get as many kills as he can. Process is, is far away than Timbuktu at this rate. He's going to stay alive. Yeah, 10 to 5. Big now. Touching distance. But now is going to be the first full-fledged buy coming in from Betboom. The first real test for Tapson. Nafni, on the other end, would also want to make sure that this spy works for their team and maybe put some life back into the fight. Zote with the op on his hand. That's going to be a crucial investment that they would want to find value on top of. And it's going to be positioned out at long. This time it's going to be a very quick one. They're not wasting any time. Running out towards Monster is what they intend to do, but the smoke is going to buy some time. Lock their intentions. And they also don't take Sivas control because they wonder there might be a push coming through. A nice 
nade. But through the smoke, Magna just finds uh, one for free. Make it a second. Okay. You'll, you'll take that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Two kills. No one's seen. And bed boom. Poised very comfortably, indeed, very early in their, uh, their first full-fledged buy round. And for big, just considering we're all clustered together, I thought if I, I envisioned they might have just been going for this B hit, but mm -hmm. they also realized, you know, they, they lost JDC and Sirison through the same spam, so Bed Boom would have an inkling that, yo, you know, th this could very well be a B hit coming in. So they slow it down, a bit of a delay, and now it's going to re aggress towards B. Two defenders, though. Never mind, play towards heaven as well. Perfectly timed Molotov. This should be doable here for Big. There's just so much utility remaining for Bedroom as well. I love how proactive they're being. Brilliant stuff from Nafani. Process last man le remaining. 1v5. Able to find just one, but yeah, this is a done so. There's just too many more forces. Even if he tries to push through, maybe a kill or two. But look at the AWP also ready. Two players at water, one towards CT. There's not much left in this, and a quick swing coming in from Siren. Gets that six for bed boom, and that full buy works out. That initial full stop or the break being pumped right at their initial or fast B execute was the win was the one which changed the complete momentum and bed boom get the six, especially finding that spam of two. Now for big. Still money in the coffer, so we'll have no trouble going for the buy. Seriously with the AWP. Get position out at long this time. Trying to quickly move up. However, a big net. Nice damage coming through. Soften the players already. Might ease the fight later down the line if it's a quick rush through. It's grouped up together. We have Crimbo holding for potential push towards long util. Ready to be deployed. No presence towards B, mind you. No sounds being made. It's going to be going for a much faster play here. The pop is good. That is so good. From Big, Process finds a blinded Chiron. They know where Zorty's plays. He's going to be towards the A-bomb that They don't see him anywhere around on the site. As the flames come in and the nade combo. That is perfectly timed from Bedroom. Bomb won't be planted. As JDC scrambling to collect it and punch in the numbers. Meantime, you got to remember, there is still a player towards long. There is still Zorty with the AWP. He's been found out now. As JDC, so low in health, still able to find one. Chess. Nafni, he goes downside in as well. Process doubling down, and now they know where the op is. Oh, he's days a number here. Surely. This is going to be tough for him to keep the op. There's already a push from Bathroom holding him down. Krimbo on the other end, and that's going to be a clean sweep coming through. There's nothing much left. That's going to be big on Levin. That is, uh, that just feels like such a good read from from Big uh, mm -hmm. as to the setups, right? Like they, they they just grabbed it towards towards fountains. They knew there was no one there. Uh, they didn't go in for tallest control. The flashback from Krimbo was perfect for Process to peek peek in. Finds Chiron, who was just completely blinded. Didn't waste any time. Struck onto the A bomb site. Once he realized that the ops not here, so the only possibility is the ops are either stationed towards B. It's pushed in behind bank or it's playing towards long. They don't really face long, right? They, they lob in the utility, get the bomb planted. Again, big work from JDC. Despite the bomb not being planted because of the Molotov and Nate combo from Bed Boom, he was able to scramble and pick it up, plant it in the smoke, gets a kill as well, while despite being very low on health. And just a player all the way back towards long, keeping Zorte pinned in as well. And again, process just really stepping up, by the way. We, we, we were touching on JDC, Crimbo, and Sirson uh, being the reason why the CT side, you know, big were able to construct such a solid CT side overall, but I think process has kind of come alive in the latter stages of this game. So 11 to 6 right now, and for Bed Boom, this buy could be everything. But they've invested everything in it. MP9, a multitude of A1s, kind of limited utility overall. And for Big, this could be the backbreaker. This could be the pile driver to end this game here. Split coming in from Big, making sure that they do not give away any early frags. Connector control from Krimbo, drops a Molotov. In the meantime, his teammate is moving up to Fountain to take control of shot. JDC keeping a check with the bomb on his back towards Monster. And this time, not making the mistake of lining up right in front of the Monster smoke and going down to a spam. With a lot of control off the map, 
with Short also being forced off because of Dabson's position at party. And now they're slowly all grouping up towards B. In the meantime, the other two players, they're holding off if there's any shenanigans of a push outside from Short or Long at A. And maybe a connector retreat after not seeing any info towards Short or Long. They're thinking for an A hit right now. All moving through connector. Did put a couple of utils into B. And that's going to keep the players at B for now. Yeah, they do have the early warning system in the form of Chiron, who's going to be playing right behind Divider. Second smoke as well from Zorte is going to buy a little bit more time. But time is something that Big don't have. Now, Tapson's going to be pushing on up pretty aggressively. Seriously, with the op as well. Flash is reigning in. Zorte forward positioning here. Timing. Everything. 20 seconds. Haven't shown anything yet. Poking. Prodigal information. Not even to get a single kill. Is tapped with a JVC strike. They are aware Chiron could be there. Dude, Crimbo. He's so aware. He's so ready to find Chiron. And my god, Big. Pulling off their best Virtus Pro impression. 20 seconds. Not a single footstep. You can see Bet Boom, the three players at A, they were feeling very nervous. They were feeling very uncomfortable looking for the info play, and they get immediately silenced. And now with Siren and Magna Jez, it's all about holding on to these two guns. And you can see Big already on the prowl, already looking to take these two rifles away because the money is going to be in the bin for Bet Boom on their map pick, facing six map points. That round was so well constructed coming in from Big, as you said, right down Nick to the wire. The and yeah. from there on, the way they played out, even at B, that's where they were making the noise. And that's the reason the players were kind of glued towards B, with a couple of flashes also, I think, that they were thrown. And in the meantime, their players were also given control of trying to slowly take control at A, get information. And that's where that value came through. Once they understood there might be a player, but they're hiding. They're playing very passive. And that's our opportunity to strike. They slowly move up. More players group up. And they wait for opportunity of a flash. And everybody swings simultaneously, finding frags, long, short, and even the player playing it right at the edge on the benches. This is going to be maybe the last and one and done round. There's going to be two SMGs, MP9, a Farmers in the mix. Couple of utils as well to play with. This is going to be very crucial here for Bet Boom. Nice nade. Previously, we saw it towards CT, this time towards Toxic. Softening the players, Magnages. It's going to be very crucial. Flash setup this time does not work. Tries to fight with JDC. Expected maybe a connector push. That did not work out. No, JDC has got one, but there's more forces coming through. They've pushed towards him, find the value, and Bet Boom know they have to keep firing against Big anytime, any position they have control that they need. Information gleaned by Big, however, that a uh, couple players are early to it short, but there's not much you can do with that info. Zorti lying awake just towards to its bathrooms. Yeah, player advantage here. This one 100% should be Bed Boom confirming around at the very least. I think it, it's just going to be a disaster. To do you can hear footsteps, and Zorti just gets absolutely. Deleted by Tapson. Barely got scratched there. Okay. 12 to 6. This zero margin for error for Bed Boom. A 3v3 here. As the rotation will take place. Slowly. Chiron and Siren have a lot of work to do. They have one smoke to deploy. One Molotov, beg your pardon, which will be used up. But that's just 7 seconds. 15 seconds on the clock now. Big need to make a move. Need to force their way on through. Taps it, leading the charge. Will be found by Siren. Now they know where both the CTs are. And Kyron is going to find Crimbo. There's no time remaining. Seriously, with the AWP. He needed his rifle to do the work, to do the heavy lifting. And unfortunately, that won't happen at Bed Boom. They will at least live to fight for yet another round. Seven for them and five more needed. I think this slight adaptation coming in from Bed Boom might give them a couple more rounds where they've been forcing fights, making sure if there is some control that Big is trying to take it away from them, they're forcing for an immediate trade over there, which they did towards Short. I think from there itself, they had a sense of control over the map with Suez being completely cleared off. Connector is somewhere they could have explored, and from them, one after another, they started breaking down. Truck control not being lost. Very well so far from Bet Boom being played. A similar approach that we did see on their T-half, but now 
they have a big scoreline that they have to jump for. That's going to be five rounds on a stretch. Not going to be easy. If they made it work on that, weird by a couple of SMGs, Farmers in the mix and then the M4s, maybe now with a proper buy that they have, another round in the mix that they can push for. But it's going to be a long run here, Blay. On the other end, Big are comfortable. They do have uh, a buffer that they have in terms of figuring out what can be the best strat. And we have seen the best strat in the mid that we saw, right? The short play coming through twice towards A. This time, let's see what play they make. Fast B, alright. Oh, this is quick. This is very quick. Process leads the charge once more. Exorte with a wild spray, able to find one. Magnus will be found out, however. Player advantage maintained. Sirsen's alone. He's is pretty far away here. Magnus yelling, screaming for help. As Sirsen finds him, it's good work from Crimbo and Antapson to just play distraction, throwing in a smoke, keeping the player occupied, waiting for Sirsen to peek in from connector and get the kill. And now, smoke for heaven, molly for water. Tapson is going to slowly creep up on. They're making a lot of noise here. Patient still a distance away, but Siren's going to strike. Crimbo now aware of where both the players are. He needs to isolate these kills. Finds the first. Oh, doesn't get a second kill. Now it's all to Sirison. 40 seconds. He's got time to work with. But the smoke with heaven is going to dissipate real quickly. And Sirison got a little napping there. Doesn't react in time. Great hole coming in from Siren. And Bed Boom able to kind of break the money for Big. Should be just the pistols coming out. And these faster rounds from Big, it, it, it seems to be the ones that's... Uh, Netting them the results right on the T side, as you pointed out, the faster A plays coming in, this uh, fast B pop as well. A uh, nice attempt at the end there to just slow things down, but good work from Siren to make sure disaster doesn't strike. And uh, yeah, it's going to be just a light investment. Galil, Kevlar from Crimbo. Hoping the, uh, the hero Galil might be able to net something. This process will be a bit of a bait here. Try to push out towards who is, see if they can find somebody lacking over there or napping. JD's in the meantime has been sharp. Tries to clear connector, doesn't find value over there. Krimbo gets forced off but Napni. Very nice position, spots the player. Now has to smoke, cannot go for a head-on duel, especially after finding that Kairon also has a AR to play with. That's going to be a Galil. That's going to be some information, maybe wrong or right, I'm not too sure. That big half kind of given them that there might be a couple of rifles in the mix and that might put Bet Boom a little bit in the worry. But if they're able to get this and the next round, th that should also give them a chance to get to 10. But it's not going to be easy. Sauté with the AWP. Make sure that the bathroom control is not lost. There's a lot more players moving in. Held a cheeky angle over there, but the incendiary forces the player off and now Zote can comfortably reposition and control bots for himself. Tabson in the meantime wanted to see if somebody's going to force long and try to retake control of that. That's not happened and therefore Big stuck in thought of what they want to do next. They don't have mutants. Again try to swing in raw and Zote is just picking up the dinner. One nice shot coming in from Crimpo. Make it a second. Is he bringing the back? No, he doesn't. That's going to be the last two kills that he could. And bet boom, get their ninth. Yeah, great work from Zorty there. The one flash they had from Tapson. Not quite blinding Zorty from the uh, from the position he was at. Bit of a timeout getting called as well. You can see Tapson talk to his team. We have uh, the process being pretty active as well in the chat right there. See yet another buy. No AWP for Mr. Sirson. It's just the AK-47s and the, the utility here. Just being constructed early on from, uh, from Bedlam. They haven't really gone for these boosts on the CT side so far. I think that they did once and they got a nade thrown to them and from then they've been just wary about not doing it again. Crimbo. Once again, just leading the path, leading the charge here. So it's going to be the A finish once more, that early-ish A finish. Chiron, this time, is very wary. He's playing all the way.
from the back of Dice and see the rotation taking place as well because the push has taken place towards Monster. Bedroom, they have the information. Nathany pushing out Monster, telling his teammates, guys, it's A. It has to be A. 50 seconds on the clock. They're still paranoid that the T's could make their way back towards B from Connector. But looking at how everyone's being set up, it is going to be the A hit coming in. Tyron, Siren, Sorte, they all lie in wait. That's going to be tough right now for them to execute, but they're still trying to make do of it. The first being thrown from JDC, but this TT position from Siren. Can he find more? He does. Gets to, but through the Whoa. smoke, Siren puts him down. Oh, the nade. The nade. Sorte. Oh, misses the timing on it. And Stearson and JDC, they stay alive on a measly combined HP of 11. Still very winnable, but the AWP, the worst gun to have in this particular retake, he spots the head. As Raphne finds JDC, finds Stearson as well. It's the last play remaining. Crimbo finds Zorti. Now it's a matter of time which is his friend against Nafni. Nafni, he's just gonna fake it, and it is gonna be the map going the way of Bedboom. Brilliantly played from Crimbo, and despite the fact that Bedboom had the perfect read that it was gonna be an A hit coming in. There were three defenders there. They had Nafni flanking too, but in the end, they weren't quite able to stop the, the onslaught, the Blitzkrieg coming in from Big, and uh, that's that Big. Uh, pulling off the win on Bedroom's map pick, and in all honesty, looking like a better team. Yeah, I think uh, first half looked 7-5, we thought it, it can work out either way, but I think from the pistol round itself, they, they seemed very dominant, and their plays itself, there were setups were so good. I think that last round could have gone their way, as you mentioned, there were more players, a lot of defenses on the ready, but the setup again coming through from big to execute at the same time, making sure that they're overpowered and also finding a yes. couple of flags through those smokes, right? JDC with the first and then Siren did find to bring it back with two himself, but then through the smoke, the other two players who were on site get cleared off and it comes down to only Nafni uh, as well as uh, one more from there and then eventually Nafni just tried to sell the fake with a 1v1 over there, was expecting that uh, push, but I think he was just ready for it and that duel did not work out in Nafni's favour and that's going to be big getting the first map. and. As Convincingly, yeah. oh, honest to God, like you know, we we saw Bedboom have a have a pretty good lead initially, where they were mm -hmm. like what five and two or something, and yeah. then just losing so many rounds to these you know half fives, and I think they lost three rounds to uh to you know big having a safe rifle, yes. maybe some pistols and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's not exactly a pretty looking map coming in from the side of Bedboom, and even for big initially the first half they were losing to somebody's faster. Uh, you know, forced by plays and half buys from a bed boom. But then the second half, it looked like the protocols from Big were just more get more cleaner. And mm -hmm. it's not like they were playing, uh, you know, very default heavy either. They're you know, going for just very, you know, faster A plays, just fast B pop. And then even the final round, you can see there, they were just telegraphing. We we're going to be hitting A. There was no one, you know, lurking the extremities of B. And I feel like bed boom took a little too long to realize that they were, they were very trepidant in trying to push for info uh, you know trying to you know push towards party for example push towards maybe towards sewers and you know get that information that hey you know it's probably going to be an alien so they're playing very default heavy from the side of of bed boom very safe on a cd mm -hmm. side which is not what you expect from a team who who picked overpass and i think that play from themselves caused the problem for them where they were unsure of information and uh, that gave big a lot of play to work with uh, they could get an idea of where the players were they could see where the utils were coming down or even the initial contact that they had whether it might be b or a and they knew where to execute from there on which helped them a lot especially that a shot round itself right once they saw there was a couple of utils coming through towards b they thought it could be three players or more here and they decide we'll throw a couple more and all stack up inside bots and then quickly swing out with the set of utils that they threw down i think that was perfectly played from there itself that gave us an idea that it's just mind games that big are playing right now on bet boom whereas uh, bet boom are trying yeah, to figure things out it's not working for them perfect uh so we're just going to be jumping to a very quick break and then uh, we're gonna you know break down this map in a little bit more detail and then of course try and uh you know just talk about what is going to be map number two that is a pick coming in from big this could mm -hmm. actually be a good 2 well so stay tuned
Ladies and gentlemen, today here at the Sky Talks, we have Rosie from Big with us. We'll be playing in the main event from April 8th. And let's get to know more about his predictions of the moment he's out. But before that, how are you doing, Rosas? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Um, nice to be here with you, doing the, the interview. Um, yeah. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here as well. But before we start things off, just a quick intro about you. Uh, who, you've, who you are, where you're from and what do you do? Yeah, I'm uh, Rosas. I'm from Germany. Playing Counter Strike for Big, living my dream. Yeah. From here, now that your team has an invite, right, for a 350,000 USD of Sky Esports Masters, when you got that invite, you and your teams, what did you feel? We felt definitely that it's like a really good tournament to play. And also, like, it was like a first plan to be in, uh, in India, right, in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. So we were all really excited um, to go there. Um, but yeah, we are really. Uh, Looking forward to play this tournament. It's a big tournament, good teams. So yeah. Now you High have level. you have seen the list of teams, right? Uh, invited, qualified with India also getting their qualified team. What do you think about this? Um, I think the teams are really good. Um, there will be a good competition, and I'm like really looking forward to play them. Also, it will be like one of our first big tournaments, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Really looking forward to it. Okay, now there's also been a change, right, from CS:GO to CS2. A lot of people didn't adapt to it, and now some teams have come to a stage where they're like feeling better of it. So, how was it for you when you saw that it's a new game coming through, and how was it? Was it easy for you, or how much time did it take? Um, I was really excited, to be honest. Like Counter Strike 2, it's like amazing. Of course, there's still some bugs and stuff going around that needs to be fixed. Blah blah. But I mean, like, in the end, to your question, it's a new game, so you you will need it to grind it as hard as you did grind CS:GO before, um, to also get the feeling and the touch of the game, um, and yeah. Okay. Now we got a gist about what's going to be happening, what you'll be doing, and about the tournament, right? But we want to know you as a player uh, because this is one of the first times that we're going to be seeing big teams coming to India. I mean, playing here, and I think as a player and as well as uh, a caster here would want to know a little more into it of what you guys do. So, starting things off, where did you start playing CS, or how did it began for you? Begin. Um, some friends were playing back in the days. So I was like really young, and there was told me like, okay, hey, did you hear about CS? It's a really good game. You should try it out. Um, yeah, and like when I was like 12, 12 years old, I started playing it a bit, and then it uh, evolved over the time. And like when I was like getting uh, at the age of 16, I um, I joined Big uh, in the academy team already. Mm -hmm. So like uh, Big has been my journey for the most of my professional career. And yeah, that's uh, that's how I started. So when you when did you decide? To become a pro esports athlete, uh, while you said right, you will be in your studies and you would play with your friends. But when did did that decision come? I'm no, I want to do esports. Um, for me, I like I'm honest with myself. Like I never planned to to play professionally. I always did it because of like the fun I had, like the the joy I had playing uh, playing this beautiful game. And yeah, when I started getting better and better, people were like recognizing my skill. 
and uh, me as a me as a player um and yeah and then big um came came to me and said like hey you want to play in our academy team and yeah that's that's how i got uh, into the professional scene i would i would say what is up ladies and gentlemen this is the lg ultra game presents guys for grand slam 2024 powered by amd here are four teams, as you said, Aurora, Bad News, Kangaroo, we've also got In God's Reign, of course, the Indian Qualified Team, and the Dorada Winsu Boy. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the LG Ultra Game Presents Sky Sports Grand Slam 2024, powered by AMD. Here are four teams, as you said, Aurora, Bad News, Kangaroo, we've also got In God's Reign, of course, the Indian Qualified Team, and the Dorada Winsu Boy Squad. One of five frags required to close this one down. And getting that bomb down, rotation's coming through from mid, it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Seven lines up two, gets one of them, Kenzie's there for the closer, and that is series done and dusted for Aurora. It's time to get into our second match. Got their AKs out, back sight spray, very awkward on the AK. Cure to the back sight, slow creep in for one good shot. 13 to one, God's reign. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is day two and the action is just about to begin. Relatively protected, it's the one on three now for Addict. One on one, AHP for the last individual. This is God's Reign take on Aurora, catches those two fantastic headshots. Four versus two situation, Kenzie is caught for one, Barbie is left alone. And there it is, the 13-0, perfect second map for Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, aap sabhi ka swagat hai, Kai Sports Grand Slam 2024 in Akhri Din Me. Passive crossfire is held, play for contact. Kill found onto one, transfer in the second. Now joins 16 seconds to the clock. Smokes in the way, spray back on the first, the judgment's right there! And God's Reign make it happen for 13 to 9! This is what we've been waiting for! The Davids versus the Goliath! I've got a short one man goes down from the rotate, got to check the back line though, it's dark, he's not ready for the man. Smokes down, Ken sees the eagle, gets rev and fired up and it's all left to R2B2. The Sky Esports Grand Slam, that honour goes to Aurora. Welcome to Sky Esports, a leading gaming and esports organization known worldwide for our top-notch tournament IPs and engaging gaming content. With over 100 tournaments and 10 successful esports IPs under our belt, Sky Esports has amassed over 700 million views and 3 billion impressions. But we are more than just numbers. Sky Esports is proud to foster the largest community and content distribution network boasting over 2 million community members and a portfolio of 200 plus gaming creators. But that's not all. Sky Esports is dedicated to bringing the best gaming experiences to audiences worldwide. We ventured into reintroducing Counter-Strike to the Indian Esports scene and have successfully hosted global teams. Our flagship tournaments including Sky Esports Grand Slam, Sky Esports Championship and Sky Esports Masters have become synonymous with excellence in Counter-Strike. 
in 2023, Sky Esports made history by hosting India's largest CS LAN event, Sky Esports Masters. And now, in 2024, we have taken it global with closed EU qualifiers. Sky Esports is more than just a name. It's a commitment to elevate the gaming and esports industry to new heights. So, you started playing and Big Academy approached you and was like, let's go. So, wonderful to hear that. Meaning, you didn't dwell directly into becoming an esports uh, athlete, but as somebody a team approached you decided let's take it on but from there on how so far has it been for you in the journey it's been like i'm 21 now so it's been quite some time but it is like i'm really um really um happy with it like it's it's a thing that i can do i can i can do the thing i i love like i have i have joy i have um, i have fun with and it's just been a pleasure to do what i do mm -hmm. um and also like i as a human evolved a lot around the time where i play professionally like since 16 right mm -hmm. um so yeah it's just it's just a gift which i'm really thankful for nice and as you said you've evolved right so i want to know uh, looking back to your 16 year old and now at 21 years how what changes do you see not just in game but also outside on yourself i think in general experience experience of course if you if you if you say like outside of the game or just in life because like in esports if you are like playing it professionally you usually get around quite a bit and you meet a lot of people and so it's like you you have a lot of experience and also of course like when i would say okay i look back at my my 16 year old version of myself and now it's a huge difference it just comes to experience right um in these years yeah would you tell anything to your 16-year-old self that you maybe now know when you're 21 or you would relive all of it again? I would do the same again. I would say just do what you do and uh, keep keep doing it with like, have, have fun by doing it. Awesome. So you do said, for the fun. I think gaming is all about fun, right? If you don't have fun, then it's not something that you should yeah. do. Wonderful. Now, uh, coming to Big Academy, spotting you and then telling you to come join our lineup, you would want to play for you. Which was this tournament that they saw you and like approached you? Uh, it was just back in, really back in the days where I was like 15 years old and stuff. There was like on Face It called like German Pro League where I played and there I became better and better and people were like recognizing me a bit and um, so does like the German scene. Um, and yeah, it was like just playing parks and because I was, I think, really good at it, people were like um, paying attention to me and yeah. So what was being your first earning when you started playing uh, and which was the tournament that you won? My my first earning yeah. from a tournament, oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure anymore. It must have been like maybe we had a tournament like in, in, in Swiss or um, the German League, 99 Damage, for example, but I'm... I can't really tell. Uh, I don't have it in my mind how, how much it was, um, to be honest. That's all right. And now, as you said, right, you won. How was that feeling of winning the first tournament when you were playing, whether it be with your friends or after uh, joining Academy lineups and other uh, TO, uh, organize, uh, teams? So how was that feeling when you won your first title? Really good. Like, I mean, my first big German title when it comes like to, we had like two divisions back then in Germany, like 99 damage and um, ESL Meisterschaft, like the national championship. Um, 99 damage was really, really good. Like, uh, I was very, very young. I also won it with um, Big Academy. It was great, like one of the bigger wins uh, in my early, early years. But, um, and also like not so long ago, like the German championship in Hannover, in front of um, our fan club um, and also the German fans that were there but was like a really nice um how, how, how can you say it like it was a really nice gift to be playing in front of these people and just giving them a win winning it as big academy and it was just just a joy to be honest so you play you win maybe an online tournament you become champions yeah. you get a prize but playing in front of an audience is a completely different yeah. feeling and winning in front of them how is that different i mean i never had like um the honor to play in front of like thousands of people because mm -hmm. this is my dream and I think this is what 
every player has. It mm -hmm. just is, makes every everything so much more worth it. Of course, if you win online and stuff, it's also nice and great. But if you play in front of people who cheer for you, it's like it's the best. Especially like when there's family around and you just you just do it for the people also. It's like mm -hmm. you play not only for yourself and for the team, but also for the people who support you. Well, there we are. Welcome back. Uh, sorry about the slight extended break, ladies and gentlemen, but welcome back to day two, map two of game number three for the Sky Esports Masters uh, 2024. My name is Blair again, and of course, I'm joined once more by Lucifer. Map one, uh, that was a bit of a surprising blowout, yeah. of, you know, so to speak, especially in the second half. Bed boom uh, on their map pick, a map where you know, they usually have looked way more comfortable on, a map they took down big on in the RMR close qualifiers uh, just a few months ago. Just looking very, very just tepid on the CT side and Big just running away with it. Yeah, I think it felt like they were either a tad bit slow or not ready for indulging in a very fast fight. Whenever they did do it, they found success and they couldn't replicate it multiple times. And right as now the standout player, Krimbo, I think he had some amazing blows that he was able to deliver. Even in situations where maybe his teammates fell down early, when we ended up seeing maybe, I think, uh, one that's going to be process, or I think uh, Sirson. Yeah, Sirson fell down. Krimbo was able to immediately swing in. I think that was the op situation, and they were able to f pick that initial frags. And uh, I think from the start till the end, along with Krimbo, it's been JDC, right? From yeah. all the way with those deke shots, P250s, yes. and all the way across. Yeah, I'm mean, just looking at kill spread right there. Just two kills separating uh, the the top fragger for big from the fourth fragger, which is process. Everyone having a lot of uh, big impact moments. We saw JDC as well with the deagles and his pistols. We saw Krimbo. Uh, processors and everyone really stepping up to the plate for the side of big and for the side of bed boom um siren was the seemingly the only shining light chiron had a few a uh, couple of opening kills here and there zorty was i won't lie looking kind of out of sorts he had that one anti-eco round with the awp but apart from that he wasn't really playing to what uh, we know he can really deliver magnus is the new addition to the team i say new and it's been a month or two now uh having you know a bit of a rough both time as well. Uh, I feel like the only round which looked very convincing me, convincing to me from Bed Boom was the the two v five that they you know converted. I think mm -hmm. Siren and, and managers were on the B bomb side, just just ripping the round away from Big. You know, like, all right, you know, they seem to be kind of stamping their authority on the German side. But after that, it, it just felt like uh, even the individuals were kind of falling a little flat. The the setups were very unimaginative and. Uh, just very tepid, just very warm overall from uh, from Bed Boom. So uh, kind of kind of a rough tale altogether. Now heading to Anubis. Now this is a map that Big have traditionally enjoyed playing a lot, right? It's a map that they're very comfortable on, and I do kind of start to worry a little bit for Bed Boom here because if you look at Big and you look at the individuals, when you have everyone stepping up mm -hmm. and also now heading into your map of choice, it, it does look like the the possibility of a map number three, which I believe is ancient. Yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty slim right now. Yeah, I, I, I also consider it to be bleak as of now. I don't think the chances of going to ancient are high at this point, especially after Bedroom's performance. And as you mentioned about the round, right, Magnus? I think that was the only round we saw him finding a lot of value. After that, fairly much action from him. And I think that's something that he needs to step back into. Uh, otherwise it was mostly Nafni again bringing charge back a couple of times that we saw him at B. He was the one through the smoke finding a couple of frags, bringing the round back to Bet Boom. If that doesn't happen here, especially that they're starting off in the T side where it should be comfortable that they should be able to grasp rounds. If they don't, it's going to be big running away. On a map where they didn't have good win percentage, they made it happen. That was the first overpass. And now on a map that they're comfortable on, they should be easily closing it out and that should put a big worry for bet boom no pun intended of course it's going to be a fast uh, b hit coming in from the side of bet boom process is alone oh this is the perfect counter Ooh, so he finds at least one it keeps control of the dark i wanted to say but chiron with the drive by and uh, this is going to be very very hard for the retake big the wrong read, the heaviest stack towards mid and A. 
And I think they've gone for the call. They're like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to hold on to our armor. Force white potentially in the cards. Have uh, Krimbo, Sirison, and JDC with Kevlar to work with. If they, don't, if they don't take any damage, then that's going to be just a $350 investment. And maybe you know, get for uh, the helmets and uh, perhaps some heavier pistols. Or they just go with the... Uh, the Kevlar and the SMGs as well. Time will tell. But yeah, easy round there for Bedroom. Just a one kill to drive by on towards uh, Process, and the round was pretty much sealed. Ake is going to come out. Nafni with the MAC 10. He's going to be the man on a, on a bit of a fact finding mission. He's going to try and poke and prod and find out as to where potential stack might be. A myriad of weapons being purchased by Big. Yeah, the Mass for Krimbo over there, MP9 for JDC. Of course, a few pistols for the rest of the players. He's a ton of utility as well. This time, again, a uh, bit of a default hold. No, not much of aggression coming out from the CTs. Uh, that being said, though, Searson is pretty aggressive towards A mains. Holding up close and personal. It's going to be a double play coming out at A main. And it seems to be that they're expecting it. Do they just raw swing him over there? Up close and ready. Searson, if you find some value, there's going to be an immediate swing out that did not happen. And the players are immediately forced back. But now they're setting him up. Multiple nades going his way, but he's already backed off with the help. Sirson is down to 15. There's no push down at mid, so they all have to do is just stop the aggression out at A main. But the flash working out big, along with both the players who are at A main falling down. Another one, the position already compromised, will eventually be cleaned off. That's going to be us. This is just easy pickings for them at this point. Fighting through those smokes or the bare edge of futiles or the position. Gives them all, and the force fight does not work at all. And JDC, he's to just keep this MP9, maybe find a couple of extra cash while taking them down on the exit frag, but otherwise, there's not nothing left here, player. Yeah, manager's on an ace, though. Gets a four kill. He would have liked the fifth kill, uh, but yeah, they're going to be saving all the way towards towards the beach and towards Temple. Is JDC still sticking around, maybe looking for some exits with that MP9, but as he finds none, Eventually, he will fade away. So, yeah, danger averted there for Bedboom. And without taking any casualties as well, considering it was the force by coming in, just brute forcing their way in. And again, good work for Magnus S, someone who was uh, a win. little bit quiet on, on overpass. Nice gun, sir, buddy. I think this is what we were expecting on overpass, right? It looked that they picked the map, they had the initial lead, but this is the similar situation that they happened. And uh, Betboom, they lost on our pass in even our grand finals of the European qu close qualifiers against Forza. So I think uh, they might have had a little bit of a horror show over there, and that's the reason they couldn't bring it back. However, here Betboom seems to be fresher on Anubis. They've got an initial two, denied the force, and now a full eco going through. Azuris from Krimbo trying to play cheeky as of now. It's going to be all the way at it. With those fight coming through, Nafni doesn't find value. A self flash, and still it's going to be JDC. And now they're all running out towards B. That's going to be a quick find off the side because there's no kind of retaliation coming through. They should quickly get the bomb plant done. That should also be the round, but through the smoke, a little damage right around the haze. So that should be the round done. If they fancy their chances, maybe try to go for a fight with the five players that they have, they might. But otherwise, I think it's done. It's going for the exits. You can see what is set up right there. Famas with the contact. Yeah, PDK, USP, not really ideal weaponry. This is actually good, seriously. Kill the bait the Zort, he actually clears it. So, yeah. They lose the they lose the FAMAS, but it was after all pretty much a safe round, safe investment. Triple trying to fade out towards that is JDC not quite able to get the kill. However, Siren will survive. Three and zero for Bedboom. Off to a pretty rollicking start, and for Big, the guns do come out to play. A ones abound, a lot of utility. Sirson with the AWP. A similar start for Betpoom that they did on our first map over pass, but right as you know, it is the T side as well. Anubis gives the T's an advantage and they're trying to take and push it further as much as possible. Three rounds have found. If they find this, they might even fancy their chances at a fifth if they break this by. 
Uh, it's going to be a slower round coming through. Utils a lot. Big use it to stop early pushes coming into the bedroom. Mid being contested. A boost to check if there's any player that they do not spot. However, they let one of their players creep through the smoke and move ahead. There might be some fight towards mid as they're all grouping up. And in the meantime, also trying to create a little bit of a ruckus, making sure that anybody who wants or is stuck at A, stay stuck at A. Yeah, the, event, the eventual pincer. Snafni. With the boost, trying to spot the player playing towards camera. Yeah, the eventual crunch is going to be coming in, and this could be perfect. Searson's evacuated the premises. He's wary of the potential of a push coming in from Temple in towards B. It's a bigger and a pretty uncomfortable position here. Searson going to be rotating back towards heaven now. Taps in the Careful. Zorte finds the peak. Crimble replies back though. It's all on Searson and he's in a very uncomfortable position here. Smalltalk comes in, misses the shot. That's around. As Bedroom slow, slowly but surely, just methodically clearing everything out. Pincering those A players and for big, yeah, that was just so claustrophobic and they needed kills there. Great opening find from Zorte as well with the AWP. Taps and getting taken down and just the one trade coming in from the side of uh, of Crimbo on from Pillow. But yeah, just well-constructed round for Bedboom. It, pretty telegraphed as well, but for big, you know, the, this is the problem playing on the CT side of Anubis. You, you played that passive, that reactive, that turtle up you, uh, with not much info. It's really, really hard. It's really, really hard to counter the, the utility being lobbed in your direction and... Especially the A bomb side when you have when you've lost both hit control and camera control, and players pushing in from uh, A mains as well, it, it's pretty much not impossible to hold on to it. So yeah, bed boom, getting the job done. But for big, see a bit of talk happening. Crimbo and Tapson as well speaking a bit. Now they have a couple of safe weapons as well, so maybe trying to construct something with this. But they need to try and be more aggressive here. They need to try and. Just kind of just take away real estate from bedroom. Try, try, try to make it to what the place is. Flash is not that great. Chiron finds JDC and that's both the safe rifles taken out of the equation. Zorti in the meantime finding the process as well. Very, very good shot for bedroom. I think there's not much left. There's a clear attack. It needs to be cleared. The fight for it. It's an ugly over there but finally gets cleared off. Player at Temple also at the same time gets cleared and it's all down to Krimbo, the only man who had an MP9 after dropping those rifles. Just going to hold it out. He knows he, there's nothing much left. Again, look forward to maybe those extra 600 creds that he's going to get. Uh, maybe walk away with that cash and hopefully look forward to the next round coming through. But Big so far not having a great start and bet boom. They're making sure that this T side on Anubis works in their favor in every round, one after another, that they're having right from the start and not giving a single chance. And as you rightly said, Big allowing them to get that real estate. And now, Big, even if they thought of trying to aggress, maybe pick off those initial frags, get map control, Util doesn't seem to be that good. They missed that opportunity of a flash and ended up self-flashing over there and it was Betboom taking advantage, clearing B main immediately and from there just running up into B where they had spotted more players, positions clearly known, and weapons weak. Easy for Betboom. Bit of a pause here. And again, you know, it, it is a very CD-sided map. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for big, if you get like three or four rounds for a lot of teams, that's, uh, that's mission accomplished. So hopefully, uh, for big, you know, they, they should still be feeling pretty positive about things. But for Betboom, though, everything's... Uh, Working out the way they wanted to, right? L losing their map pick there initially, that was a bit of pill to. That was, that was a bit of pill to swallow. But ever since then, so far here on map number two, it's been looking pretty good. Just you know, just four deaths and, or rather, four kills for big in in five rounds. That's how dominant it's been here for the side of. Uh, of Bed Boom. And also, yeah, you can download the uh, the one expert app. If this continues, it's going to be a troublesome play. Tapson 
even in overpass, the start was not that great, but there were some rounds where he did take up charge, uh, just like we did see from Nafni. Chiron with a smirk on the camera over there. Haven't seen Chiron smile in a while, so that's a yeah. good sign. All right, here we go. Here we go. Tags up. Second full fledged buy coming in from Big. Is it going to be a more clustered approach again, or is it going to be a little bit more proactive? We're going to find out, Sirison. We're going to be playing towards long. So we're going to break the smoke for the fight towards dark. But Process is going to come out on top this time. Magnus is not able to get the opening this time around. Now, with Sirison's playing by his lonesome, but then with two players towards mid. Backup is pretty close by. Nafani spots to player. Tickles just running on it. Ball the top is going to be ahead of it. So the trade's not quite possible. Smoke comes in from Chiron looking to get the trade, but that was a very, very dis disjointed. But at that point, he could have just maybe potentially just given it up and just grouped up and tried something else with his surviving teammates. So big. No answer yet from the side of Bedboom and Zorti is going to be the last one left alive. A 1v5, able to find Process, but his position now compromised. Bombard is back and 40 seconds on the clock. For Big, this hunt might not really be worth it. They knew where he was, they can go for it. Maybe can afford to lose one more player perhaps, but yeah, they want to keep as many players alive here as possible. See, JDC is really hungry. And with that kill, yeah, they're not going to go for the hunt. The, the, the money, not really in a good position here. But first round reward here for Big. Good work overall. A little disjointed hit coming in towards mid from uh, from Betboom. Nafni is running in there to Molotov, separating him and getting taken down. And um, I wasn't a big fan of the attempt at the very, very late trade from Chiron. But Big finally on the board in their second full buy round. I think even the start that they had, right? Uh, the fight into dark. Nice thought of breaking the smoke open, maybe giving a, a in different chance to find that dark player. But maybe a flash right behind it, maybe could have even better. Uh, we've seen certain times that play out, and I think that just gave process an advantage. He saw the smoke break over as well as spotted the player simultaneously and found that opening flag. And after that, as you spoke about the mid-disjointed play coming through. And after that, one player out at A. Sirson again starts things off. That's going to be one already down right at the beginning. And right to follow it up, a Molotov making sure that the player doesn't get a chance to push ahead. A couple of flashes, but still walks. Sirson ready, scoped in, moving up. Zote this time trying to do the same thing, but he's moving towards dark. Jiggling around. Petrosis reads it, this time playing further away from Dark. Gives them the space to stay in Dark, but not any vision. Oh, Chiron with the double, how did that even happen? JDC and Process caught napping, aware of Zorti's position towards Dark, and maybe just not aware. That should never have happened, and we've seen this a couple of times already from Chiron. We saw yeah. an overpass as well, just single-handedly cracking open bomb sites, but this could be disastrous striking for Big. What was looking like such a good round. Big gap in the smoke as well. Dorty has got his angle. Good flash though to put him in position. Spots the butt of taps and finds him. And a 3v5 down to a 3v2. Seriously, he's going to go for this. Cripple lots of left alive. He does find Nafani. The jig should surely be up. Smoke in place, but they can just push him through the smoke. There's no time remaining for him. Now that is going to be a round stolen away by Chiron. What a hero play from him. I mean, we were just talking about a different setup coming over towards Dark. This time giving them the space and just closing off the vision. But Chiron just immediately moving up without even giving them the slightest cue. Or even maybe a footstep over there. He just swings and spots both the players and, as you said, caught napping. That's going to be big for Bet Boom. They've been stringing rounds one after another and big, except for that one round where they were able to shut them down in their play, break them apart. It's just been a single one. But as you said, so far, T's on Anubis. They're the ones who will be keep, who will continuously function, find rounds, and CT's on the other end should find a way to figure out three or four rounds, and that should be good of a half. Yeah, but at the, at the moment right now, just like big uh, seems to be scrambling for answers, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the previous one, a few mistakes being made by Bed Boom, which were... Uh, capitalized upon by big but 
The previous one was a fumble, uh, just a big fumble from the, the B defenders and completely collapses. Yeah, I, I mean, this is looking like a completely different book of big playing out on Anubis compared to what we saw on Overpass. They were they were methodical, they were they were able to snatch uh, map control, they were able to command a lot of positions that they could play with, but here, uh, I think we've not even s properly seen a Sirsan round coming through with the top, except for that A-hold. Not a lot running around in between, maybe mid, or trying to reposition quickly after finding the first. He still has the AWP on hand. This time a quick smoke out at A-Main, making sure that maybe not an early aggression, but a nice nade from Grimbo towards the waters, finding the player, softening up. That's going to be Siren down to 53. Nice time at the peak there from uh, JDC and Searson. Very good bit of utility here from his, for the CTs to try and manufacture a favorable duel. It's happening once more. Creeping up towards mid. He is by his lonesome, however. See from bed boom to spread across, looking to make a play on what they do. Flashbang gonna force Anaphany to spend a full of his bullets, a few of his bullets, just gonna tell the tale to where he where he is. And Krimba fights a kill. All of a sudden, this could actually work out for big. And see the bomb peeling back towards the B side. Catches out a player in the open, that's Tapson, but Tapson comes out on top. And now should be the hit for its B side, but a good read from Big, deploying yet another smoke to its B main. And 30 seconds on the clock, Bed Boom, they need to make a decision and they need to make it fast now. They'll only leave one player to its outside. Are going to be dropping down water and going dark? That seems to be the only option they have here, but 15 seconds. Oh, I'm not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of this at all. Seriously. Finds one, but that's okay. Taps is going to push in from A main, and there's absolutely nothing Zoti can do with his AWP. Five seconds on the clock, he's going to try and hold on to this, and Big are going to steal the round away. Save the AWP, and an invested M4A1 is all they needed. And Zoti at least able to keep it alive, but Big, they strike back. I think this was a different touch that we saw from Big compared to their previous rounds on the CT half. Uh, having that early smoke towards A main, making sure nobody tries to immediately rush up or throw down any util. And a self util from their end, uh, taking the proactive approach, uh, dumping that towards Scrimbo, softening up. And from there, kind of sending the forces of Betpoom in another direction, gives chance for Sirson also to reposition. And because of that, that the op was able to make sure that the complete dark control or canard control is in the favour of Big. And I think that string them the round. But now Zote again, looking forward to his options, along with Kyren helping him out. They're expecting maybe a quick swing, but the edge, JDC, nice corner hold. Zote immediately does clear him out, but there are a lot more forces he has to worry about. A player immediately runs up towards Tempel, but Zote doesn't get the opportunity to enter because of the incendiary. Process hasn't really budged from Dark so far. It's Krimbo. Trying to bolster that A-bomb site, but it is going to be bed boom. Three-pronged attacked attack heading in towards mid. Where it's going to be Tapson, who has had a bit of a... bit of a trouble, a bit of a problem holding on this little jiggle. But he's got Searson holding the angle, and he doesn't fall for the bait. The bait which doesn't quite pan out, and Searson, he's coming alive now. Need to be aware that A-flank coming a little late as well. Flash is good, Searson! It's magnificent with the AWP, and it's all on Siren. 1v3, beautiful 4K coming out from Searson. And big, they find a third. I think this is the light switch that we needed, uh, finding those opening frags that they're finally doing. I think even though they're not going aggressive, as we said, uh, maybe trying to take away map control, but that one round kind of pushed a little bit of a fear that's instilled on Betpoom that they might try to do it somewhere. And because of that, a little bit of faulty plays being made from Betpoom. Uh, two players trying to swing out without even any util, expecting for Big themselves to swing out, uh, out towards B main. I think that's where the first issue happened. And after that, the mid play, the op was held really well. And now Tapson denying this mid aggression, however. Quick to trade it out is Kyron. And now that's going to be mid control. But Kyron doesn't have anybody else right behind him, so he has to just figure out what he needs to do at mid, depending on what his team wants to play out. But finally decides to just give that space away, meaning big, if they decide to re-explore, they will get mid-back control without to, without being, or without trying to fight for it. 
Yeah, I think Bedwin's going to be a little paranoid as well. They had a very similar lead, an overpass, and uh, we saw how that one slipped out of their hands. But Process, he needs to deliver. Got back in the form of Mr. JDC. Defenders. Chiron actually finds JDC. That's huge. Mama's going to flush out Process. Smoke, though. It blooms, but not before Siren spots out Process. I think he got stuck there for a second. And now. This is looking like a very unlikely retake for the CTs. You look at the money here. It's not great. It's not great at all. Crimbo, he's a bit flush at cash. So he could drop a couple of guns to his taps and then JDC. Uh, Process can buy for himself. And Sirson can just wield this AWP. So a save seems like the right call. And I think it's okay. You know, you still have three rounds on board to work with. Bedroom to get a seven. And for big, you have two more opportunities to get as many rounds as you can as on the CT side where... I think four would be would be ideal for for big, but if they get a five, you know, it's, it's great. But a uh, good work from bedroom there. Great spacing, great clustering together. It wasn't anything too convoluted. And once again, Chiron with his openings, man. Like he gets his initial duel onto his JDC, and then for process, he needed to get the hell out of dodge. But good Molotov to flush him out of his position. And yeah, once he, even though he deployed the smoke, he had to get out of that little. Glizzy spot, and getting spotted out and around down the toilet for big. Two more rounds remain though. Penultimate round here coming in for the map uh, for the uh, first half. Thank your pardon. And there we go. Buy is through. So this is an important round for big. Uh, if they lose weapons here. If they lose this round and lose a lot of weapons, they're gonna be kind of broke and taps in. He hears the fire singeing the toes of Nafany. Wide swing out, gets to kill, and Bad Boomer like, you know what, let's go B again. Tapson has been doing that down at mid. But this time does the B approach work. JDC spots the player, this time he's not at tempered. Incendiary not where he wanted. However, it does kind of corner them towards Pillar and both Process and JDC take control of it. Here as well as uh, Molotov being thrown down, big damage being done. Siren in the meantime, along with Zorte, the last two players trying to keep control of things. But both of them are separated and now Siren immediately running up. That should have given them the idea, but he's trying to kind of play around with the help of Zorte. That doesn't happen. Eventually gets isolated and that's going to be through the smoke. That's going to be four here for Big. And as you said, a crucial round. Maybe the bank could have been broken, but Big do not allow it. Especially the play coming in from JDC are quite different. But I think that uh, Incendiary kind of worked in his favour, even though it didn't fall right at the entrance. Yeah. It fell a little side, so they were all forced over the side of Pillar, and both of them were lining the players up. Yeah, and spe speaking of economy, uh, we did touch upon how it was dangerous for Big there, but mm -hmm. uh, now it's actually Bedroom who are in a bit of a grim situation. Pistols, MAC-10, Akin, Galil, once again, Afni. It's going to be dropping on fast. It's going to be the fast B pincer. And a jumping MAC-10. Always new since the JDC. Oh, this is Rafa's and Nafany. He just comes running and gunning. Crimbo. <laughs> oh, hey, all right. I'm done. <laughs> all right, Nafany. Oh, he's uh, he's pissed off. Yeah. Oh, that's... uh. Well, what do you say about that one? <laughs> that's just rubbing okay. salt on their wounds deep. <laughs> that is so... <laughs> That is so PM, I love it. Just in your face, run and gun. He didn't, he didn't stop holding, holding W at all. Yeah. He's still surviving. Maybe a fourth finally gets put down and that's going to be the last player to put down. That's going to be a good or maybe even a great half. Eight to four for Bedboom to close in. Afni said enough is enough. Uh, we've had a lot of success at B. We're going to make sure we close it again in the f same fashion. But yeah, that run... I mean, Process has not been always winning his duels towards Dark. I think that was an advantage for them to take. They immediately run up on him. But JDC was just another advantage. And from there on, finding another towards Temple was a bigger one. And that does give them a four-round leap to start off the second half. Four-round lead, but we all know how quickly they can dissipate here. Especially on uh, when you're, when you're going to be on a CT side of Anubis. So, for big, uh, pistol round win is imperative else but boom they can just get a double digits and from then on you know even though yeah it's pretty heavily t-sided and all of that they will have that psychological edge a 10-4 score line can be a bit daunting all right let's see what big's got here 
For Bedroom, we saw the uh, the fast B hit earlier on on their pistol round, where we saw Big just go for a heavier mid and A lean, just leaving one player to its dock. And for Bedboom, what are they going to offer? They're going to be going for a little bit of a safer approach because they have the uh, you know, they have a bit of a lead here, or they're just going to try and be aggressive. That's a question. Tapson waiting patiently for this push to come on out from the CTs, and that is indeed going to be. Oh. What? Oh! No. Yo, that's. That's bullshit. <laughs> Alright, taps it. Oh, it's gonna be so mad. But that's so much information being gleaned by Magnus S. And now the T's are rushing in towards the A bomb side. They're getting absolutely mauled alive. Crimbo and Process do manage to answer back, but it is still a 3v2 player advantage for the CT. So they have to pump the brakes here. They have some time to work with, however. Nafni. After finding those three, he was sitting at one until all of those rounds, and now he's not going to let them walk past. A nice thing that I did see, but that's not going to yield a kill. It's going to be still Nafni closing it out. Nice two frags to end the round, and that's going to be still Betboom firing. Finding the pistol as well again. And uh, you can see that's going to be Nafni finally smiling, happy, and this is seeming to be good comms coming in from Betboom after. Even overpass and also a little bit of a shaky, maybe Anubis start after a couple of rounds were going away to big and now Betpoom seem very confident. Yes, yeah, they should, right? Like the, the pistol round. Both pistols, especially in Anubis, that's uh, it's almost like a win condition for most teams. For big, not for the full eco, no bomb getting planted. Really not worth going for the risk here. Just the Glocks. We do have a, a Deeg for Mr. Crimbo, but that's about it. But yeah, for Bed Boom, winning the pistol round. Especially that kill by Magnages on <laughs> onto us. <laughs> Tapson, that was some BS, I'll tell you. It's big. No flashes, no utility, nothing. Just going to group on up, try and overrun the CT defenders. And that is going to be uh, Chiron and Magnages. Now, these are two A1, so there is a chance it could potentially get overrun, but this is such a solid crossfire as well, especially considering the fact that they're all going to be coming in from mains and... Chiron, he's out of bullets. No. Oh, but back has arrived. Zord is going to finish it off. And Crimbo with a deagle trying to snipe from the distance, finds just one. Uh, honestly, for big, you get a couple of kills just with the one deagle investment. You're going to be reasonably happy. And for the side of Bed Boom, though, now it's about trying to close this one out. Ten to four. Now, don't let the scoreline fool you. It can be... Getting this final two or three rounds is such can be such a nightmare, honestly, especially against a team who's, who knows how to approach the T-side. And from what we've seen from Big in the past on Anubis, they do indeed know what to do. AK is abound. Slightly limited utility, and oh, I like this from Bedford, though, to being aggressive. And it's going to be Na Nafni in charge. He's just dodging all bullets. Yeah. And he's just sticking around. The ball's on his man. <laughs> After finding a, a, a round like that with 3k, I think, as you said, he's confident. The smoke does disappear. He decides to back off. Another smoke being given to him. If he again is bold enough to go for a second try over there, the way he was able to dodge those bullets initially. Doesn't try the play again and immediately big. They stall. They slow things down. They're left wondering where have they taken map control away. It, but for now, it seems like the players from Bedpoom have just all regrouped back. Oh, there was a disconnection. That's why I was seeing Siren. We never saw him go down. Seems like a player disconnect. We should be getting back into the round very soon. That's going to be a quick reset coming through. A little bit of time for uh, both Big as well as Bedpoom to discuss. Especially for Big. Uh, as you said, yeah, 10-4 scoreline. We might end up seeing... Uh, Betpoom try to close it out, but you'll never know how close or how soon Big can immediately get to that scoreline of 10-10 themselves and maybe then overrun, especially after what we saw from their overpass on the T side. So there's still something that they're going to be trying to brew up. It's not going to be easy because Betpoom feel confident as individuals right as so now in the positions that they're playing, uh, in the fights that they're able to put down, in uh, the individual flags that they're finding. That's giving them confidence. And I think that's what Big have to break. Like, try to separate those players as much as possible. Kyren has just been running adrift on his own lonesome and finding a lot of value, which shouldn't be allowed, as you said. That's just BS. And I think 
it, it just feels out of natural. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, a little bit of a technical issue here, but hopefully so it should be sorted out real quickly. We do seemingly have everyone else in the in the server. Oh, there we go. The buys are coming in. 47s should be to play. I do like the uh, the Berlin International Gaming, uh, the little, you know, like the the gaming area they have where they get mm -hmm. the uh, where they play together. All the JDC is very very comfortable inside of his uh, inside his bedroom seemingly. All right, here we go. Game will resume. Been having a tiny bit of some technical issues, technical difficulties today, ladies and gentlemen. Do apologize for that, but uh, you know it's early days. It's gonna be a week long of a lot of comments, right? A lot of action to be played out over the course of this week. Here we go, JDC. Early Molly towards mains to prevent any push out from the CTs. And Napney's gonna be again, he's gonna be aggressive. Same position, it's like deja vu. No one's really spamming, no one's really breaking the smoke. Process. Oh, what a flick! What an insane flick by Proxus, but Zorte will hold the line, finds Tapson, and takes on a very, very low Proxus there. So man advantage. Snatched back by Zorti. He was looking real solid here in Anubis. It's 14 and 3 after what was a very, very quiet map from the man on overpass. And look at this from Netbook. This is this is wild. All four players grouped up towards mid. They've just given up A and B. So there is a window. There there is an avenue available for Big to enter whatever side they want, but there's no way they expect this. Bomb. Oh. Reply back. Azorti, not too sure what he was doing there, gets taken down. Bomb down. But I, I'm not a big fan of this from Bedroom, though. You sure you have the bomb, you see the bomb, but just like completely grouping up together, leaving so many avenues available for the T's to trickle in from other side. And also, by the way, there's so much time to work with for the T's as well. So this could be a blunder from Bedroom. Um, yeah, you know, player advantage, man advantage, bomb down, and they just fully gamble trying to go for this mid control, which. Yeah, that's that's really not it. That's really not it. 4v3 down to a 2v3. Still trying to keep control of double doors. A quick flash in a swing. But Siren's good for one. Make it a second for him. And now Krimbo. All the shenanigans that he tried to do out A doesn't work. And now his position's known. Siren might just try for a third over there. But he hears Krimbo running away. And there's not much time left on the clock. That's there's just going to be one AK. And he's going to be walking away. But it came close to losing that round from a situation of a 4v3. Three to coming it down, bringing it down to a 2v3. If that flash was perfect, I think Siren would have gone down. Maybe another player immediately being traded out down at mid and the bomb could have been recovered. They could have immediately decided to run B or A depending on how the position Krimbo was playing on. Very weird. Pet boom. <laughs> they have Levin right now. A quick timeout being called from Big. They do not have much to work with. The cash, even with the max loss bonus, they don't have a chance to go for a full buy. They have to right now incline towards playing on the last round, giving this 12 maybe away or maybe trying to pull something weird. Uh, maybe a half buy or upgrade of a pistol, going in for a quick tech 9 rush either to an A or B and maybe trying to find uh, a round, making sure that the 12 doesn't slip away to Pet Boom. And if it does... I think Big uh, should be saying okay to Anubis in trying to figure things on Ancient. And we initially were speaking about this, that I think Ancient is not on the cards. But it looks like Betpoom were prepared uh, against Big's pick and Big were just prepared against Betpoom's pick. And that's how the first map and now looking at the second map is flowing. Timeout's done. We're going to be resuming the round. Let's see what they can do. It seems like they actually buy up. There's going to be an AK. Yeah, you, you really can't afford Bedboom to get a 12 and then, you know, just try and battle out of it for, for overtime, especially considering the, uh, the gap in the, the scores is, is quite substantial right now, Crimbo. Perfectly played there. Uh, just peeking into Crimbo's crosshair, and now it's all on Siren, the anchor. The Siren is alone. Smoke to prevent any help, any assistance to arrive in from Temple. But Bigger uh, pulling the brakes, just pumping the brakes. They're not really committing to this. They're making uh, Bedroom feel uncomfortable. Waiting for them to go for a push, go for a poke or a prod, try to find some information. But Bedroom just pretty comfortable, just turtled up here. Going for a stack towards B, in fact. Yeah, this could actually... 
Nate to break the smoke. Beautiful find for Susan. But now they should know the jig is up. Sorte though, <laughs> just the one kill. And even though there were three CTs lying in wait, lying in wait there for big, brilliant stuff to just find everyone. And Siren, he's just been looking for something this entire round. But it is going to be big on the on the force buy. Finally, ending the streak from Bed Boom. They get five. But Lucifer, it's uh, still a long way to go, a tall mountain to climb. Yeah, it's going to be a big climb for them and it, the road is not going to be an easy paved asphalt. There's going to be a rocky road that they have to go through. But yeah, I think this force by seeming to convert the way Betpoom played off. It was a similar round where I think it was Nafni pushing down at mid, uh, finding, I guess, one frag. And from there on, just decided to peel off. And then the CT started exploring, trying to regain mid control, and that's when they immediately hit P. This time it was not the case. Bedboom did not decide to take mid control back. They were still letting big play out. It was well stacked at a B. However, it was a quick run up. Nice flashes coming across. Won all the duels that they needed. Cleared off the three players at B, and finding success. Big put five on board. But as you said, it's going to be a big stretch for them to even get to 11 11. But who knows, this is Anubis, maybe they string and strat so well that they're going to be able to string six rounds on a stretch without even giving Betboom the slightest chance to retaliate. That's going to be tough. Not a great buy here for Betboom to play. Yeah, they're just trying to... Yeah, I mean, when you get the luxury of 11-5 score on your CT side, you can obviously try and... Maybe... Test Lady Luck a little bit. You have the, uh, you know, just try and even if you make a couple of mistakes, a couple of stuff. Fine. So the fourth, boom. And big red slow here. Drawing up temple smoke. Player spotted out and heard. Still a minute on the clock. The force got quite a bit of utility here from the CTs, and now no smokes remain. No incendiaries. Just a couple of flashes and one nade. But the stack, three players here, long wait for the side of Bed Boom. Two rifles and a pistol. As taps in now with 40 seconds on the clock. Timing is everything, and Nafni comes out on top. Oh, gets another. That is huge from Nafni, and the trades are so fast, so furious. But it's all out of Searson now. 30 seconds on the clock. Needs to cross. Chiron, knowing his, showing his presence. Finding his time, and Searson, because he's pumped the brakes, we're going to slow down. It's going to allow Chiron enough time to rotate back towards heaven. And once he gets the bomb down, Chiron is just going to be breathing down its neck. The timing is going to work wonderfully here for Chiron, but he doesn't peek. He's paranoid. Thought Searson probably faked the plan. It's going to allow Searson back towards A mains, but Siren lies in the way. This duel is everything. Siren is making a lot of noise, but doesn't matter. Finds the kill. And bedroom, they find a 12th. You were just talking about them testing Lady Luck, and it seems like it's going to be favoring them here. A round which shouldn't have played in their hands. Big test kind of gave it away. Especially after that resmo coming out at B main, they decided to immediately put a stop to it and figure out a different approach. And when they started exploring mid, Nafni out there. Shouldn't have been given a chance to find the second. First was okay, immediate quick trade coming through. There was a flash as well to follow up, but there was still not a kill to follow up. And Nafni, before he falls down, gets two. And that's where everything just completely went wrong. It was just one last player surviving over there. Does get the plant, but not the round. It's going to be 12. Betpoom just need one more victory here, and they'll be pushing us to Ancient. The best of three. All three maps coming in in the first series today as well. Siren quick to take control at A. A lot of futile being dumped pre-fire as well, but doesn't find value. No player softened up for now. But that's them kind of giving them the warning that we have a good presence at A. And they immediately back off, not putting down any smoke, which has given an avenue for two players to slowly crawl up. Siren doesn't get the timing. Players have moved up. And that gives the opportunity for Krimbo. Is there another one? A player had just backed off towards Akon and Process finds him. That's going to be Nafni and maybe there's some life left for Big. Those two frags. Yeah. 
but boom, not really, uh, not really feeling like going for the going for this one, and uh, rightfully so. You know, you have about seven map points to work with. There's no need to get over eager. Just hold on to the guns. You we cut a uh, buy. Ugh, that's ugly from Crimbo. Managers and Chiron, the position's known. Sirson waiting patiently for Zote for show himself. Zote is sitting here and caught napping. Maybe sitting there a little bit too long. JDC will find him. If they save the three rifles, I think that boom would have been more comfortable with this force buy. But now with just the two rifles, they probably had to consider do they just go for it? But it is. Uh, just like first, we have the fourteen hundred dollars for Naphne. Uh, I think it was a very low money for most of them. So yeah, the force buy is going to be coming in anyway, and we've seen them pull it off in the past as well. So the two AKs, the FEMAS and MP9, and the five seven in play here for Bed Boom. And for Big, it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a rough it's a rough path ahead of them. It's a, it's a tall hill to climb with volcano. Oh. A volcano to climb with lava just pouring down. And Matthew is going to make things even more harder. But Pros is good pathing. Finds the first kill. Nafni with the AWP. Three targets in front of him. He doesn't find a single one standing in the flames. Oh no. Oh no. Everyone's dead. As this is pure, complete pandemonium. But his forced by from Bed Boom, I think, is going to come on through. Crimbo left alone. Wondering how it all went wrong, and with that, Bet Boom will seal the deal. 13 to 6 will be the score as Naphne and his men will take the second. We are bound for Ancient. That's how it is, Blay. I love the I love the way Naphne's playing as well. It's like knee right right up there between uh, his uh, his arms, just just an alpha position. <laughs> Uh, and Chiron's hair is turning more Super Saiyan by the minute as well. So yeah, congratulations to to Bedroom. Uh, uh, I won't lie, in the first half I felt like it was it was pretty you know 50-50. And for Big, you still win four rounds on, on on your CT side. You should be feeling pretty comfortable as well. And then and then heading into the second half, I think the pistol win coming in from Bedroom really um, you know just kind of established your economy, established your momentum as well. And I won't lie, like it, it felt like once it was ten to four. That's when it felt kind of inevitable, right? Like yeah. I loved how heads up they were with some of the plays. When you know on your CT side and you have so many, uh, so many options and so many you know options available for you to potentially try and close uh, things out, you can go for these risky plays, and that's exactly what Bedroom went for. But we're gonna go to a quick break. It's coming up after this. It's gonna be the decider, and it's gonna be an ancient. Everybody, welcome to Sky Talks. Today we have another big team with us here. That's going to be Bet Boom, and representing Bet Boom is going to be Nafni joining us, who will play in the main event of Sky Sports Masters 2024. Nafni, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, I mean, I'm pretty good right now. I'm right after practice with my team, so everything is all right. Coming out of a confident practice, I see. Uh, yeah. But before we start this interview, right, I, I want a quick intro out the formalities uh, of who you are, where you're from, what you've been doing. 
so I mean, my nickname is Nefni. My mm -hmm. name is uh, Vladislav. Uh, I'm playing for Bad Boom. I'm professional uh, CS2 player. And uh, originally I'm from Russia, but now, now I'm living in Serbia. Awesome. Now coming to this tournament, Sky Sports Masters, it's 350,000 US dollars and it's going to be a battle with European teams invited and qualified plus an Indian team. When you heard about this, what was your reaction as well as teams? Actually, uh, this tournament have a really good uh, prize pool, so mm -hmm. that's the main thing why we was looking at this tournament. The second thing is uh, that we actually wanted to visit uh, India because we never was in India uh, yet. But unfortunately, maybe next time, let's say. Yes. So that's why we was uh, trying to go through closed qualifier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the teams actually, I was uh, kind of surprised about like teams uh, who accepted invite mm -hmm. because in my opinion, it's not like really uh, uh, let's say we can beat anyone at this tournament. All what okay. we can, all that we need is just play our game, and uh, it will be not even like hard for us, in my opinion. I really like the confidence. Let's go with it. Uh, and you already answered my question. Uh, I was about to ask uh, the other teams how would you take them down. But what do you think about even an Indian team coming through? Because yes, European teams and the circuit with another North, North American teams is generally that what we see in Counter Strike, right? But there's going to be an Indian team. How do you feel about that as well? Actually, in my opinion, India it's a big region where a lot of people can compete on the highest level. But all what they need it's just maybe a bit more time to play versus some. European teams uh, because uh, even if you look like in the past uh, before uh, COVID times uh, Indian scene was like it was not like that let's say it was uh, pretty like a lot of Indian players was playing in CSGO in, as far as I remember and uh, the thing is uh, maybe if not COVID maybe in this case uh, even at the major few Indian teams uh, we, we could see a few Indian teams if not uh, COVID in my opinion but again uh, for now it's the, it depends on uh, how much people uh, want to play CS2 in India right now and the second thing is uh, if they will have like good bootcamp uh, in Europe because it's really important if you will even watch at uh, uh, for example uh, the Mongols mm -hmm. it's pretty good team in my opinion but right. seems like they like practicing a lot in Europe and that's why they like really good right now in my opinion. I'm happy to hear this from you Ed. Hopefully, we see a soon major coming in from Indian team as well. But there's been a big sh shift, right, uh, from CSGO now to CS2. So how has this affected the whole scene for you as well and maybe for the other teams? I mean, uh, on the first like maybe months when CS2 is out, it was kind of shaky because uh, uh, not every team from tier one uh, understood uh, how to play a new game but for now seems like uh, the teams uh, which was really good they still on uh, compete on the highest level and uh, actually nothing really changed uh, all what changed it's maybe like new like nicknames i mean it's only few guys okay so in general i guess uh, nothing changed so that's it it's just adaptation right yeah true true now coming to your journey, we've seen you, a lot of people here in India have been following you and I think this is something that they would want to know. Where did playing CS start for you? I mean, uh, I was a child and I have an uh, older brother and he was uh, like playing some games and uh, sometimes when he was not playing uh, computer, I could play computer instead of him and uh, uh, that's how I was like playing other games. But then uh, he let me play versus his uh, schoolmate and uh, I was uh, beating him pretty well. And then uh, his schoolmate said that it was not playing me, it was playing my brother. And it was like, I was like, whoa, I'm pretty good at this game. Actually, I was, I was not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it was like the first time when I was like, okay, maybe I really want to play this game. But I wasn't think. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything in my mind about like cyber sp sport, I mean, e-sport, or uh, maybe about like uh, making like some money from this game or whatever. I was just thinking about like, whoa, I really want to play this game. And that's it. Respect from one expect 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 respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect
Welcome back everyone to uh, map number 3 here, the first game, the opening game here we have between Big and Bet Boom. My, my name is once again Blair, of course joined once more by Lucifer and yeah, um, a bit of a, a flip of the script so to speak of the first two maps here. You know we had the overpass pick coming in from Nafani and his boys and it was Big winning it convincingly and it's switching over onto Anubis, the map pick coming in from Big. Uh, it was Bet Boom stealing their opponent's map pick so kind of a bit of a topsy-turvy world we're living in here today. Yeah, I think uh, even though Bet Boom didn't have this choice, right? It felt like Chiron's playground it was. He was running across yeah. rampant and just finding frags where he shouldn't. Outrageous. And even Magna just on that pistol round when he picked up on taps and that was just... <laughs> Uh, out of nowhere, that was just a jump he did and that frag was found. I think those kind of weird stints maybe caught Big off guard and they were completely unprepared for it, Blay. And I think on top of that, Nafni was sitting at one kill until that last round that we saw and that three kills brought him to four. So I think him not finding much also didn't kind of affect the team. Their teammates were doing the heavy lifting over there and Bet Boom looked very comfortable. This is what they spoke about. Kyron just running rampant across, finding free frags. Zote as well doing his job whenever needed. Uh, and it just felt like big individually were trying to do something. They were not proper setups or uh, layers upon their play and therefore eventually were just completely swept off this map. Yeah, 100% agree with you. Uh, I think Zote especially was a standout player for me considering he was... Uh, a bit missing uh, on the first map on their map pick there on mm -hmm. overpass and especially for me obviously the second pistol round comes into play we, as you pointed out we saw the magna just uh, peek outside of B you know getting the kill and then of course a uh, big walking into the stack and once you lose the pistol round and the following force by you kind of you kind of see the writing on the wall you're like all right there's not much of a, of a chance here for the uh for this for big to bring this one back so Zoti is not a player of that particular map. I think everyone chipped in, like you said, Chiron. A lot of impact kills coming in from him as well. Uh, and now we're going to be heading into Ancient, which is a map where success has been kind of 50-50 for both the two teams, yeah. right? It's not been exactly a map that's been uh, great for either of these two teams. And uh, honestly, having seen the, the, the opening two maps, I'm not too sure what we can expect from this, in all honesty. I don't know. Uh, for my... Uh, maybe call it a prediction or maybe uh, a force A. Our first two series ended on Ancient. And now this is the third series and it is also ending on Ancient. Do we have just Ancient across as deciders of all the series? I, I think it comes down to like what we were uh, touching upon yesterday where we mm -hmm. said, you know, when it, when it comes to Ancient, it seems to have replaced the, the Inferno of old, uh, a map where uh, a lot of people are feeling, are feeling way more comfortable about uh, you know, where, where, where people are feeling more comfortable about these uh, about ancient as a as a middle of the map, middle of the pack map pick. It's a map that they're more comfortable uh, leaving as a decider, so to speak. So it, it feels like it's kind of slotted into what Inferno was once upon a time, yeah. where every team used to kind of know how to play Inferno to a uh, to a certain level or the other. So yeah, taking a look at the scoreboard over here, uh, again just a good good kill kill spread coming in from all the the players. Chiron having again, as you pointed out, a lot of opening kills, a lot of impacts. Siren as well in the anchor position on his CT side. He had a big role to play for Bed Boom. And Zorty for me was easily the standout player here for Bed Boom. And for the side of big, yeah, I mean we had a few moments here and there from you know from from Searson, from uh, from Crimbo and Process, but overall kinda kinda deflating uh, overall from the uh, from the German side, right? Like no one really seemed to be clicking on their map of choice considering mm -hmm. on overpass they were looking super good. Everyone is looking uh, great, but yeah, uh, just a little flat in their map pick. Yeah, I think uh, of how we saw JDC in uh, those pistol rounds here, it just, as you said, fell flat. Uh, we expected a lot and it's just maybe the prep work coming through from Bet Boom because again, as we spoke about it, this is kind of a rivalry that they would want to take them down previously. Uh, it was big going down to Bet Boom this time. It might be big who want to take them down and they were completely prepared for overpass because the last time also when they fought in the RMR, it was overpass and it looked like big were like, it's coming up again. Let's make sure we win this time. And maybe they kind of didn't look through a lot on Anubis, thought they'd be super comfortable. And whereas uh, looking at maybe the victories, uh, Bet Boom just prepared better for against Big. And that's the reason they were able to close out. And also in a dominant fashion, I think they were very commanding on this map. Did not give them much to work with. But as we spoke about Ancient, it's been 50-50 with both of these teams. Uh, I'm not too sure who's going to come out strong here. We had a couple of downfalls when we started Overpass. We saw a downfall here for uh, Big. Uh, with JDC. Tapson still doing his justice. I think he had a lot of impact frags that we did see down at mid as well. So I think 
not no questions over there but as a whole i think that's where big had a little bit of a uh, opening which gave betpoom a chance to completely run away yeah i'm um, just looking at some of the some of the stats for uh, for ancient on these for these two teams right for uh, for the side of big you know they they played teams like game of legion like apex you know like ends am astralis on this map but it's a it's a while ago i think the mm -hmm. last uh, recorded map we have from them was against game of legion on in blast showdown yeah. which is over a month yeah, almost exactly a month ago, right? So it's been a while, and that's been the the problem I've had for Big is just this little bit of ring rust coming in. They don't, they haven't really probably warmed warmed up coming into this tournament. They've only had like one official before today, uh, but they didn't look good, good on map number one. So you know <laughs> they did surprise all of us here. So yeah, they've had better opposition on this map. But it was a while ago. Now look at the side of uh, Bedboom. They've been a little bit on the grind ever since they, you know, uh, they, they picked up the new player, uh, their new addition coming in. But then you look at the opposition they've had. You know, teams like Alliance, for example, Fnatic, not exactly uh, the best team, so to speak. So it is still again 50-50. It's literally 50-50 if you look at the the map with percentage as well. Yeah. Well, but I might I'm gonna have to just slightly edge the way of Big. I, I feel like. Uh, I've seen them play pretty solidly on this map here in the past, uh, despite it being a while ago. And not much has changed apart from, you know, like, you know, we have, of course have C Sirius and a JDC here as well. Uh, for Bedboom, though, yeah, uh, a, a good run on Anubis taking us to map number three. And they're going to be starting here on the CT side, looking at a setup coming in from the uh, Bedboom. Bit of a bit of a defaultish play here. Going to be a Siren, the anchor, being aggressive towards A main. Now, that's so much information being gathered by Siren. That's going to allow this B-Stack to remain in play, but a Molotov Glock combo will find the first. Magnus is with that duel. He's running in three kills as Jaguar is going to be a graveyard for the players of Big. And it's a 2v3. Sirison still on the hunt. Sirison did try and enter, and now he's separated from his teammates. That's gone. It's all down to Krimbo, and Krimbo didn't even get a chance to move in. And this was on back of just one flash that they had. And I think they've not even used it. Yeah, Magnus just still has that flash, as you can see. Maybe even picked up from the opponent's uh, bodies that were lying around. And now Krimbo just trying to take at least one. He does do it. But then Nafni eventually see, seals it. But Magnus just, the way he pulled off, as you said, a Jaguar complete mow down machine with those duallys. Uh, making use of the 30 bullets that he had, made sure that he had nothing to be worried about, just kept firing, pumping those bullets down. And uh, Big could do nothing about it. They did have a couple of futils, but they used it towards the entry at side, thinking that maybe they could just run across and into cave. Didn't happen. And right now, a full eco coming in. Comfortable bet poop will also have a better buy. Yeah, I also like, really like the uh, the heads of play from Siren uh, towards A as well, right? Mm -hmm. Just pushing up towards A main. Uh, giving the information to uh, to Bedboom that hey you know you guys can just stack B there's no one towards A main and they had a player towards mid as well so the stack solid and again Magna just just seemingly really good with the pistol should be, should be a pop up Crimbo Beagle just to one clean round money for days for Siren got to build up the bank and they do lose just the FAMAS no the FAMAS will be upgraded. And uh, there you have it. There's the one SMG lost. And Zorte will be gifted the AWP by Siren early on in the in the map. For big, the buy is going to be coming in. Zorte up. A couple of FAMASs. MP9 for Magnus. I wouldn't be surprised if Bedboom to try and be a little bit more proactive here. A little bit more aggressive. It's a bit of a bonus round coming in for the CTs. Look at the aggression here. Chiron, no molly from the CTs though, just the smoke. Aggressive posturing, smoke will be heard, process aware. It's definitely not right now, until these smokes clear because big no, this is going to be a crucial round for them. Now the last set of utils that they have has to be for an execution towards the side. If they don't, it's going to be around lost. But the CTs have a lot to work with. Their intentions are only clear. They just want to stop them because as of now, Big have not made their movement entry towards any of the positions. They've blocked them towards the T side. But because they're allocating so many resources towards uh, towards uh, lane, towards heaven, towards mid, they have given up the A bomb side. So that's going to force Zorte with an op to be perched towards CT. 
48 seconds now. Big Cap really need to take this fight, and this whole siren needed at least one there. I'm not sure how JDC is allowed to get away with two. On the measly three points of health, he will survive. And now all of a sudden, all that map control could be for naught. 30 seconds. Still a couple of smokes remaining. One will be deployed for Donut. Zorte going to be trying to play ahead off that smoke. He will find the first on towards JDC. 3v3 now, and Zorte, a no-scope through the smoke, finds Sirison as well. That is just ridiculous from Zorte. But a bomb will be planted. This round might have just turned its head once more by the heroics of Zorte. Double push coming in from the temple. Primbo, instant kill onto Magna. Just this trade is everything, but Naphne will fail, and it's all on Zorte to pull this one off. This is looking very unlikely, and he will indeed have to evacuate the premises. Nice attempt from Zorti with the AWP, but big, they will solve the the problem there, the, the, the puzzle, the conundrum as to what they were going to do, considering they had no control whatsoever to like 50 seconds on the clock. But a couple of good kills coming in from JDC, and that's all they needed. As Bull International Gaming, they will get there first. We were just looking for a play from JDC similar to that in Anubis. I think that's something that we did miss out and therefore this time when he functions as a whole team, they find the round. But yeah, Zote finding one, then a no-scope as well. Two impact frags completely down the drain because of that temple hold from Nafni. was just... Nafni, if he had a chance to maybe trade that out, could have been better. But for now, it's going to be the first for Big. And it was a crucial round for them as well. It was a buy round. They waited it out, let the clock dwindle. And now they have some control. But Krimbo, if he has the opportunity, if he pushes up elbow, he might be able to find easy two frags. But Magna Jess, oh. right there, just the smoke spots one, taps him out. Nice nade damage as well. Again, coming in, Magna Jess might fancy his chances. Yes, he does. Along with Siren helping out. And it's down to the last two players. Process has made his way towards the site. But he's all alone. Crimbo though. Oh, Chiron. Great presence to find Process. And now they know exactly what the final player is. Crimbo. What does he do? Bomb. Not on his back. Monster first. Nice find in managers with the... On a jiggle. Smoke going to be deployed. Now he has, he has quite a bit of time to work with here, does Crimbo. As they come pushing up, looking for the fight, they don't see him. This can actually work out in his favor. They might think he's going to be coming in from Cape, but for Crimbo, information is a problem, and they're just going to give up the bomb. They're just going to give up. Give it up, and... Okay. Uh... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not... I mean, sometimes when you think too many steps ahead, it might not work out. But because Krimbo is being very methodical here, there's no way he's going to be expecting two CTs to be coming in from CD. There's no way he expects this. So this could be a 5D play and should be a free kill from Chiron. And there we go. That was actually, <laughs> that's actually nuts from Bedboom. The 2v1 bomb drop to just reroute all the way back from A. And Krimbo is just going to be wondering, wait, what? Wh wh why? <laughs> why? 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 What? <laughs> oh, the, I actually love it. I, I almost hated it. I thought they were going to be gambling towards A, which honestly would have was just such an unnecessary play. Because if he gets the bomb down, and then they, then they have to go in for the retake, it, you know, when the bomb's planted, it, that is... Uh, an extra player, basically, for the T's, right? So, uh, I, like the f I like the rerouting, though. I, I like the fact that it just gambled towards A to, you know, flank all the way in from uh, CD spawn. Nice heads-up play there. And, yeah, Kim Krimbo's going to be a little bit puzzled as to how that one played out. Nonetheless, 3-1 to one for Bedfield. And still a buy for Big. And this is fast. Oh, this is real fast. JDC won't get anything done. Nafni and Magno Jez shutting it down. Siren has control at mid, and now for them to do something towards Jaguar is also going to be risky. Do have two weapons. Saving it should be the call as of now because their economy does not seem to be great, but it seems like they do want to fancy their chance for a fight. The last time they had dropped a bomb, it was at least to the double dose. This time, 
The fast run did not work, not even finding a single kill on site, and they've gifted the bomb for bed. Boom! Meaning the fourth is not just written, but it's sealed. And if Krimbo does something crazy right there, so now, might be the only way for him to find, and that's Nafni. But that's not going to be enough. There are still three more forces on site guarding the bomb like it's a wealth of their life. Yeah, bomb though in a very uncomfortable spot. Now, while they do have time to work with, there's no utility remaining to try and isolate these duels. And Chiron, yeah, the boost is a giveaway. Sirison, days are numbered. There is a flank as well. Should be 4 to 1 for Bed Boom. There's a very solid hole coming out here from the B defenders. And Bed Boom looking very comfortable. Full control here. Especially the new addition, Magma is looking quite, quite solid indeed. Especially in the B bomb side alongside his captain, Nafani. And uh, a bit of a very quiet start for uh, a couple of the players here for Big. You know, Process, taps and both yet to get off the mark. JDC just a couple of, just two kills, Sirson on three. Krimbo the only one to have gotten a few frags of his own, but honestly, I don't think it's enough. And now with just the pistols in play, Fifty. Five one lead for Bed Boom just uh, looking very likely. And I like how Bed Boom have been playing so far. They've give they've been giving up space, but also in the confidence that they have weapons to retake them. Like look at A. It's not a lot of players invested. We did even see a previous round where it was only a single op, all of players down at mid. And I think that's just the seamless communication that we are seeing from them. This time they've left B be a little bit passive. Where they've held off A. And Magnum just slightly takes a peek, spots Krimbo, and now the plan of big of walking in of how their teammate were is completely being broken down. Nafni finds two at long. Magnum just swings for a second of his own. And now it's all down to JDC. Snappy Deeks is what we saw in the first map, but that expectation has left us lost. And now he's just worried in all directions. And Magnum just with the third will get the five for Bet Boom. That's gonna be them keeping their lead. And the performance continuing from Anubis. A little bit of uh, some few eco frags being farmed there, but that's okay. Did I just see a, a little puppy in Nafni's camera? Get the puppy cam out. <laughs> I'd love to like. I remember Device famously had his, uh, his little dog during the uh, the COVID years. Oh, it's one of my favorite cameras to watch. Here we go. getting deployed. Not exactly work smoke, but just allowing them to push on up a little bit ahead. Get that is... Ugh! Ugh, brother. Ugh! That's just gross from Big. Freest killed of Chiron's life. Unless Krimbo is able to somehow get a timing here. This one should be done. He's been legged. And Nafni to finish him off. And yeah. Sirison and Tapson both down to 17 HP apiece. This round's done as well. This is just very, very tepid. Very uninspired from Big on a buy round. And Bet Bet I'm just going to be like, yeah, that's, guys, this is free. This is free as hell. It should be six already. The half, they get themselves the odds in their favor. From here, Bet Boom can just keep going ahead. Another spam coming in from Tapson, trying to find a second for himself, but this time not the case. Kyron was repositioned, ready for him, and gets another. That's going to be three for Kyron off this round. And now Sirson, all that he can do is make sure that the big green battle survives for the next 30 seconds if there's no hunt. Yeah. And for Bedroom, this is literally like not really worth the hunt either. If you look at the, uh, the money couple of the players, it's not exactly uh, that great. The, uh, you can see like tw 2100 on Magna Jazz. Nafni is going to be the sole player on a hunt, and if he times it right. Oh, Sirson. Spider Sense tingling. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Alright, so the AWP saved, uh, but still, that was, uh, that was just rough for, for the side of Big. At least it's max loss bonus, so they can go for a buy, but it's not going to be great, right? It's going to be like a couple of Galils, maybe three Galils in play here. Sirison has got nothing in his coffers, just the uh, 
the one smoke being dropped by his teammate. So yeah, they're just going to eco this. Fair enough. But it's still so uncomfortable, right? Like, if Sirson dies in this round, he's going to... His money's not going to be an ideal either come the next round. So even though they will have a full-fledged buy for everyone else, his won't be uh, great. But a bit of a tactical time on getting called. Should should at least be a few pistols being purchased here. They have enough money for that. In the T-half of overpass that uh, Susan was playing, uh, I think he did pick up the AWP, but uh, the AWP did not find some much value and therefore he was quickly switching back to the AK and then they were again able to string a lot of rounds but again Sirson getting this AWP back on the T side it seems like it's just slowing down the team from making a play that they want and before that setup even happens right it looks like Betpuma firing and look at Kyren finding a 2 in the previous round similar to also finding a couple of frags at ramp I think before the setup or something that big want to bloom Bet Boom are ready for it. Yeah, so Sirson needs to be a little bit more uh, ahead of the, the pack. He sees the knee. He sees the knee. He knows the boost was oncoming, but process was just a freer frag here. Good flash from his teammate. <laughs> Second one as well. <laughs> Sirson is so very blind. And Zortan might be expecting this position though. Ooh, that is risky. Sirison, somehow, that is bullshit from Sirison. I don't know how he gets that. Looking for more. But all alone, no one nearby. Getting over eager, not expecting someone to be close by. And Siren's gonna find him. That's the AWP taken out. But there has been a big timing being found here by Big. And that's gonna allow JDC to find Naphne, leaving just one defender towards A. Siren has to go big here. He does have backup to form his teammate towards Donut, but he's going to be smoked off. So Siren, for the time being, is going to be by his lonesome. He's aware of the possibility of a player coming in from main as well. Tapson's going to find Chiron, and all of a sudden, this is a spun around here. JDC taking Siren down, and Magnus is all alone. And this has been just a miracle of a round from... <laughs> from the side of... Bed, uh, from the side of Big Beg Your Pardon, because I'm still just stuck... Trying to figure out what went wrong there. Big, big, big hole towards red, towards mid. And big just threads the needle. Perfect timing. And harasses that A bomb site. Imagine as soon as they lost process, they didn't even waste a, a single second. Everybody just ran out of A. -A and immediately, a couple of them just slowly walked up. And that timing, as you mentioned, at red. Yeah, but you, got, you can't afford to like have such big gaps there. And yeah, that's just... Uh, a big boo boo from Bed Boom. That was a that was nearly a full investment as well, by the yes. way. It, it, it they, they they bought a Galil, they had a few pistols purchased off, but they had like fifteen hundred dollars left in the coffers because they knew it was gonna be a max loss bonus. They knew they'd have enough money remaining for the buy come round number nine here. But big are gonna be smiling up at the way that one played out. Big. Now this time out, maybe they call that I think we should just wait it out. Even if we lose a player, we might just be able to string another round similar to that. We might be able to find a loophole where we can just find that opening and just breach through it. And if they're able to do it big, they might get a third and maybe a fourth written down. And that's the reason they're trying to play it down slow. They'll still keep control of jungle, but Sirson, quick on his toes, spotted the edge on our, cam on our screens, yes. But before he could have found the kill, process clears that out. Yeah, much faster here from big. Running on up. Sirison. Ooh. That was close. Look at how low they are. Zordi finds Tapson in the meantime. The defenders spread very, very far apart from each other. Zordi finally falling. Sirison. Patience will pay off. But look at the positioning here. From Naphne. He's calling for backup. Manager's making a lot of noise. He's acting as bait. Sirison hears this. But there's a bomb site. It is empty right now. Sirs is not falling for it. He's just conveyed information. He's like, guys, there's a guy towards red. Maybe towards CT. Just be wary of that. And instead of being a hero, he's going to play this one smart. Talking into Donut. Taking care of at least one position where his teammates need to be worried about. With 35 seconds on the clock, the utility will be deployed and bomb will be planted. And honestly, for Bedroom. This just might be the call for the save. The money's just not there. He tries to break open the smoke. Fancying his chances. Plan does come through. 
does get through All right. one with the smoke down to a 2v2 situation, but they don't have a kit. It's going to take a lot of time. He's just picked up one from it. Man just has the kit. So there is a window, an opportunity here. And he hasn't really made any noise whatsoever. Siren timing is everything. Manu just finds a second as well. All in Crimbo now. And Crimbo has been spotted. A little bit of jiggle coming in. Time is his friend though. Nate sails in. He needs to find a kill here. Finds a first. Goes for a full spray. The tap comes in. And the Tech 9 will find Magnus. Says Crimbo with a crucial 1v2. Coming down to the wire. But they will clinch it. And I do believe the money now not looking that great for Nafani and Co. Good opportunity for Big to try and claw this one back. Again, reminding me of of the first map here. And we've gone for the full spy. All right. They, they know the money's not that great for Big. They know if they're able to force buy win their way, in this, uh, their way to a win on this particular round, then Big's going to be broke. Just going to have pistols. And that's going to be basically round number eight guaranteed. So a bit of a gamble coming in here from the CT's aggression as well. But JDC, there's no flash to blind him. Free kill for him on the Magnetes. So Chiron has to hold the line. The fail Molotov as well. Not going to really be very helpful here for the side of Big. Process has Jaguar control. But the thinking of doubling into Cave, they immediately turn their heads. And now that control has been given over to Zote. Hold it down. So soon in the meantime, making sure that no push from Ram comes across because at the door they do have the bomb. But Nafni fancy his chances. They're going into the push. Doesn't work. Chiron on back of it does double down. That two-man setup worked out and now they've dropped the bomb again. It's such a, such a brazen call coming out from the CTs. They didn't have any flashbacks. So they just had to go for the contact double push. They go for it again. Now Chiron's going to be the bait. Sarah's going to be lying in wait. Process gets a kill. Oh, that's a hell of a transfer from Process. Oh, how does he even find that? And now with Zordi's position known, two AKs lying in wait and Process with a pristine... 3k, that was filthy. He wasn't even looking at him, just aim lock straight into the second player. I, I actually like that from Bed Boom. I like the, the double push twice back to back, but Process just says no. That was beautiful. And he's been having a very, very quiet game. It was 1 and 9 until the previous round, but he has woken up. And with that, the money is absolutely obliterated for Bed Boom. It's going to be a full eco. A couple of deagles in the mix, the uh, the Zeus for uh, Magnus, and that's about it. It's a big, they've made cost right. They're going to be one round away from tying things up and heading into the second half. Say so soon. This gives them a chance to open up the A side, but Siren on Temple gets cleared. That's going to be a round for shot. Now it's all down to Nafni. He does have a dig and look at Sirson. He's not stopping. He wants a little more. And he does get the last frag as well. That is going to be the round. And as you said, one round away from getting an even score line to end the first half. So far, so good. Big have been performing really well. I think uh, uh, one round, especially that red, the gap that they found, that was huge. I think from there itself, Big decided this is our chance. We've found a gap. we found a hole which we can exploit a lot more. And from then on, they've been trying to separate these defenses in two different positions and also being quick on their hits, giving them a chance to convert these rounds. That boom probably... A little bit of PTSD from Overpass creeping in. Wondering how it kind of flipped over here in the uh, favor of Big. But still, they have a pretty solid buy here. 7.75 seven, is a whole lot different than a 6.6. Six, all things tied up. Chiron. Let's get Again, the flashes ineffective, but Chiron's only good for one though. Process with a nice quick trade. Siren. Oh, a lot of damage. Not quite able to get the kill here. Wallbang coming in from Magnuses. Barely tickling Susan. And the hit comes in. Spotted out is Zorti. And it's so uncomfortable. Molotov. Smoke. Nade. Raining in. Harassed on the A bomb site. Process. Getting the kill, and somehow Process has just been a hero the past few rounds. Wall plant is Nafani. 
pushing on up. Magna just able to find a kill. Nafni finds Truston and suddenly again down to Tapson, the captain of Big. Trying to isolate the kills, gets to first. Tap on the bomb. No, he's sticking it. Tapson. He thinks it's a fake. And manages nerves of steel. He's just gonna hold on to it. And it's gonna be the full diffuse coming in. Oh, that's gotta be gutting for big. And for the side of that boom, they finally at least managed to tie it up because it was looking like the pendulum was swinging heavily in the favor of Bed Boom. That was a big 10 second stick coming through. It's like just full on, just full yeah. stick. Oh, you love to see it, especially from the youngster coming in for the team. And taps and he's like, yeah, surely, surely he doesn't stick. He, he knows where I am. Like, well, why would he stick it? And especially also, he had a dink uh, that Nafni landed. So maybe he's like, he might fancy his chance for the fight over there. Did not happen. And now that's going to be Bet Boom starting things off on the second half with a lead at 7-5. All of them stacking up towards uh, A. And a similar play was done from Bet Boom with the duties. And now it's going to be Krimbo. Finds the first. Oh. There was Magna just this time it's Krimbo, but it's at A. He's found three. Does he fancy the fourth? Magna just finally puts him down. Make wow. it a second for Magna just to answer back. And now that might just have a chance for the round for Bet Boom. That was actually clean from Krimbo, but Magna says, says, I'm not quite done yet. He's been having a map and a half here. Mm -hmm. Gets a kill onto Krimbo that immediately pivots and finds JDC. Clock. P to 15 hands of Chiron. We know how lethal Chiron can be in these opening deals. He has been quite lethal indeed as the, the tip of the spear, so to speak, spots the elbow. This could actually be the bait. But aware, spots the second player as well. This is big from Chiron. Beautiful shot. Knows where the second player is too. Are they really going to turn this one around? Process unaware of the push coming in from B as Chiron trying to make everything, get everything done. He's running out of bullets here. Just one remaining. Needs a tap. Runs out of it. Will be finished off, but a bomb will be planted. Now Magnages in a one versus two. This is so winnable. He did get two. Now he has a chance to get two more and maybe four of the round. Finds the first. Brings it down to one. Oh. And gets the second is really immediately. That's going to be big four frags. And bet boom at eight. And picks up the duallys and says, I don't need a duallys. I'm still going to function I, well. I, I, I really can't believe that after a 3k from Krimbo, a 2 versus 5 converted. The, the second kill of special managers was just brilliant. And I think Chiron constructed this one so well. Good angle clearing, gathering information. And in the end, managers with a brilliant 4k. His 18 and 6 right now as we enter round number 14. And for big, yo, oh, that, that has to be... That has to suck, man. If you're Krimbo, you're like, guys, like, come on, man. Like, he just got three kills. Three kills. 2v5, help me out, guys. Managers. Oh, maybe getting a little too over eager. The Mac 10, he wants that money. He really wants that money, but down to 2 HP. But he's called it. He's called it. It's a full stack coming in towards the B side. Siren's gonna hold the line towards T spawn. And Managers is looking for a couple of freebies. You could fall back to safety. There's really no need to go in for this hunt considering how low he is. So yeah, he's going to be tucked in alongside his teammates for big. He's trying to go for exits, trying to push on in. Maybe get a couple of kills with door tape. He's going to be doing his, base, his best uh, blame of impression. Clean kills, yeah. 4k. Eagle frags, can't be too hyped about it. But 9 to 5. Bed boom, three away, four away, beg your pardon. Big made it seem like they're about to close it on an even half of a 6-6 six, six, and bed boom again bring out a brilliant round of uh, a 2v3, 2v4 situation and it just happens. One from Temple. And this is just going to cause trouble for them. They'll be thinking if we were able to close it as 6-6, six, six, maybe we fancied our chances. But so far, bed boom have been winning all these pistol rounds and it's been working for them really well. And now this is going to be a buy coming up. Big quickly take mid control for themselves. Clear out elbow as well. But there's still a late play. That they're making towards a slowly moving up. It's only right now Krimbo on site. Yeah, it's so rough. The mall's up there. Fuck. He's taking so much damage. And despite getting the dink onto Zorty, won't get the kill. 
Damn, this is looking grim. Four big. Bomb planted. Nate sailing in. The process. Position known. There's actually no need for mana just to really go for this duel. Take a headshot angle though. Galil, infinitely superior to the FAMAS. I don't give a I don't care who says otherwise. And for big you realize, yeah, this is not looking good. No kits in hand. No utility. A couple of FAMASs. Thami, I guess. I don't think that's what it's called, but like. What is the plural of fa fa FAMAS? I think the plural of FAMAS is FAMAS. <laughs> FAMASAS. I think FAMAS stands for. Uh, it's, I think it's an acronym, so like, I guess it would be just FAMAS. I'm gonna be that. In the meantime, Vet Boom, they get to 10. There's a simple contact play coming out, and Crimbo's position towards the, uh, the behind the A bombsite boxes, unfortunately. He needed to do more than just get the dink. Uh, he's through the flame, just, you know, hoping he gets at least a couple of kills before it bu gets burned to life. But unfortunately, doesn't quite pan out. It's been, a, it's been a wild game. A lot of 2v5s. A lot of eco round wins. A lot of crazy stuff. And I'll tell you this, it has been entertaining. I'll give you that. It, 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 it has. Bed boom. They're at 10 already, and uh, this is similarly of what we witnessed on Anubis and uh, Big. They're not going to be happy about it. They have the buy. We spoke about the util. Not that great this time. Quick run up. Krimbo last time was caught. This time as well. Sersen with a quick trade from Temple. Last time Sersen was a tad bit late, but nice nade. Gets softened up completely and is forced off the back. JDC tried his hand. Does damage the planter, but that's not going to be good enough to stop the plant from happening. Magnum just a little late on the lurk, but he's now reuniting with his teammates quick on his heels because he knows they might just be outnumbered. Time for a retake. They do have two kits, two flash, three flashes. And a smoke. The smoke is pivotal here. The boost comes in. They know where one player is now, though. Zorte position known as well. They know exactly what Siren is, but look at how low one of the players are. Flash comes on out, and Siren gets to save time. Running out through. The smoke runs out of bullets and sticking it. Oh, he gets the defuse just before he gets shanked in the face. And that's got to be a big sigh of relief for the side of Big. A nanosecond. Oh boy, that was a hectic retake indeed, but Big to get it done against the oh, Zorte is like he's so close. So close. But still, Big are still not out of the uh, the frying pan quite yet. They lost everyone that round. At the money, you know, it, they go for these buys, the, the, the A1s, but they also need to kind of... A couple of players have to go for, for FAMAS. It's the, the plural FAMAS is FAMAS, supposedly. So that's there. It's not FAMAS, it's not FAMASs. So... It's still not a great position for them to be in, and for Bed Boom, it's a good opportunity to just close this one out, right? Just put put their, uh, the, just just curb storm it out, break the economy, and close it out. They have a solid amount of money as well to work with. The coffers are flush, and for Big, yeah, there you have it. Four M4s, limited utility you can see for Crimbo, for Searson. Process is the one who's going to be taking the uh, the hit when it comes to carrying the, being the uh, the utility, the the support guy, so to speak, quote unquote. Red Boom, what do they do? Gotta be a faster hit towards B. No, just default play. Lane control as Nafni. We saw what he did with his Macton and Anubis. This time doesn't get any contact. However, Siren, he finds one. Make it Magna Jess. For the player on site, not on the hands of Nafni, but his teammates. They're still fancying the chances. Nafni wants to share, but doesn't get it. That's gonna be a citizen, but he's stuck between two Molotovs. Right dead center, and now a lot of nades Safe. drop to 23. Done is the round. There's nothing much left. Yeah, just just like a, just a straight up hit coming in from Bedroom, and yeah, big. Um, just looking very flat here today. Look at overpass, and you're like, oh, you know, oh, well, international gaming, they're looking solid, but they're just getting. They got smacked in Anubis, their map pick, and then on Ancient, especially the second half, has just been brutal from Betboo. Yeah. And if you if I want to, you know, if, if I want to look at silver linings for uh, amongst both the teams, I think Chiron just been finding mad impact on, on both the teams. Oh, seriously, lucky to be alive there. Uh, they've been finding crazy impact, crazy opening kills, and I think Managers has been uh, looking very, very solid indeed. Mm -hmm. Um. I know it's still like early days with him coming in instead of Danists, but it feels like he's finding more impact 
uh, in this in this team with Nafani. Eleven to six, though. And despite the fact that Big didn't lose all their weapons, it's it, it, these are the calls it's so hard to make. You look at the money, you're like, all right, guys, if we save this. We'll have a full buy for the next round, but that means Bedroom are going to be in map point, so we have to fight for overtime. Or do we go for the Force and work with the two rifles that we have in the hands of Sirison and JDC? So the call's been made by, by Tapson, and I think that's the right call as well. You don't want your, your opponent to get to map point when you're trailing by like five or six rounds. So here we go, five, seven, four, Tapson, Crimbo with the MP9, the saved A1Ss and the FEMAS for process. It's not a great buy. Krimbo, just like you were mentioning about Kyron as well as Magnages, uh, Krimbo on the big side of things has been finding those impact tags, but it's not been enough. There's nobody else who's been helping out for him. And now look at this. First frag being found, Sirson late on the trade, but taps in, he spots the util, immediately goes for a swing, doubles uh. down, that's going to be a big opening for him. And now he's expecting a little more. Throws a big nade, trying for an opportunity, but the spam siren. He has the angle, can find a free one for himself. And does eventually. And now that's going to be a 3 2 and pet boom. A round that should have been this. Quick work coming in from Tapson as well as mid from Sirson. Give them a chance. Yeah, Tapson just kind of beat the. Uh, he's trying to gather information and now, he's now there's at least one player there. Now how do pet boom solve this one? This could be the round that that allows Big back into the game. Can't count them out. There's been so many crazy 2v5s, 2v4s we've seen so far. Oh, that Molotov can be brutal. Oh, that is so rough. But Sirson somehow finds both. That's actually nuts from Sirson surviving on three points of health. Through the fire and flames. And Big, hero plays required. And hero plays were delivered by the veterans. Taps in. Getting to, but of course, Sirson to close things out. 11 to 7 now for Big. But for Bedbu, money is ample, so a buy will still be on the cards. Zare picks out the op as well, and let's see if they can make this interesting, get themselves to 12. But Big, a little bit of a proactive approach at mid and down out Jaguar. Gave them a chance. They do it again, not out of Jaguar. Molotov does block them from doing anything ahead. Mid is where they get closed off, but right now playing a tad bit slower. It's just been Magnages who's made his entry, and the other two players are out at A. They're slowly moving up, Kyron and Nafni. Oh, look at this. This is such a good call from Nafni. Oh, I, I think he's had calling the past two maps from Nafni. He's made some pretty solid stuff. Yeah. So much noise being made towards the lane. JDC is occupied, and look at how deep Kyron... They have full control of A. They have full control of A. Yes, this is just a deep Molotov's gonna make life a little bit more uncomfortable for the CTs. And Sirison trying to sneak in through the smoke. Chiron will find him, and Chiron's might have just done everything here. This is brilliantly done by Bedboom, but also a massive capitulation <laughs> coming in from Big Chiron. Stop it, they're dead. I think he's not gonna stop until they get the 12. He's already done what's needed, and uh, the last two players, they're out at B. They're yeah, going to be just looking forward to saving the weapon. Round is done. 12 is on board and... Uh, they have nothing. They have literally nothing to work with here. Process. He can probably drop a gun for... Uh, for JDC, uh, or I guess. Krimbo can probably eke out an SMG. Searson, I don't know, maybe a scout or a, or a deagle. But yeah, it's grim. It is very, very grim for Big. But... Brilliant call from Bedboom there. They just tried to sell this lane presence, this heaven presence, B, B main presence so very heavily, and then Chiron and Nafani, a bit of a brazen, slow walkout push towards A, and Chiron just just like a turret on that A bomb site, destroying everyone. Even Sirson trying to be cheeky through the smoke. And uh, I won't lie, you know, even if you're a, even if you're a big fan, this is looking very, very rough here. 12 on board, and the last time this happened, uh, it was a similar position. I think 11-5 was the scoreline that we saw in Anubis, the last map. Uh, and it was something like this. Big were able to get their 6th on board, but immediately Betpum get to 12, and immediately close the next consecutive round. It was very messy from Big, uh, even though they were on the T side. It's going to be a round that's super crucial again. They get 
all invested AK. Two of them, quick fight down at mid. One works, but not the second. Kairan, however, he makes it work. That's going to be good chance here for Betpum to close it out. Nice molly will force the player back towards side. Tapson has to win the duel here. And oh. he doesn't. Kairan again. This man's not stopping. 21 and 11. Yeah, that's a GG right there. Big. Outgamed, outplayed, outbrained. And that is going to be the bed boom winning it very, very convincingly. Extremely convincingly. Nafni, you can breathe a bit of a sigh for relief there. Magnificent. Uh, map coming out from bed boom on ancient especially the t-side they were just calling circles all around big and even for big the few rounds of one of the t-side came down with uh, you know some good timings coming out from them a couple of misplays coming out from the side of bed boom but uh just too many just too many mistakes being made overall like you know losing that 2v5 and a piston round comes to mind but even if they won it i feel like the calling overall was just so much better coming out from the side of bed boom so nafni despite losing their opening map which was their mapping of overpass able to very convincingly just turn the tides here on Anubis and on Ancient. And uh, I wouldn't say the big surprise, I think it was a bit of a 50-50, but I guess the fashion in which they won it on map 3 was a slight surprise, maybe? I think uh, it's been the case of uh, Anubis as well as how we saw Ancient, both of them very similar in performance, as you said, calling from Nafni. And uh, it's never been that Nafni has to do a lot. I think individually, we saw Kyron just running around, finding his flags here in Ancient as well, what he replicated on Anubis. Uh, Zota as well doing his just. And it was just a well-oiled machine coming through from the side of Betpoom. It never needed a nudge or maybe a, uh, maybe a pause coming through or... There was nothing as of such that they needed to break down or slow things down. They were comfortable if there was uh, maybe a round that they lost to something. They were immediately able to switch things around, maybe take it a tad bit faster on pace, find a couple of frags and make it work. And I think Big was just lost. It was just a couple of rounds that maybe individually uh, we saw taps in on that pistol. Mid never worked for them. There was yeah. quick trades on mid happening I, and they were losing lots of pace there. Yeah, well. the, 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 uh, the T-side protocols from Big on... Uh, Especially the T side of, of Ancient was just so lacking. Good see Chiron yeah. uh, getting free kills at mid time and time after time. Uh, no real flashbangs coming out. The one flash was just like way too high end. You can see Chiron was just ready every single time they came out there from mid. So a bit disappointing uh, or a big disappointment if you're a big fan. But uh, yeah, it, it did look very, very pedestrian coming out from yes uh, from the team. Especially considering, you know, I know we haven't seen them play for a while. Uh, ever since the showdown, it's been a month. Uh, you'd assume, you know, they've been practicing a little bit, boot camping a little bit ever since you know, Sirson and JDC. Sirson came back, uh, you know, once again to the team and you know, JDC joining in as well. And they did have a recent uh, game where I think they just played one best of three recently, either today or yesterday. So they have, they haven't really had too many officials. But you kind of, I kind of hoped that you know they've been putting a little bit of work and the individual should be looking good, which we did see on the first map, on the second map and third map that they went completely missing. So yeah, uh, there you have it. Just a uh, kind of a, un I guess sadly one-sided end there for the side of Big. But I think Bed Boom, uh, they were looking good. Chiron yeah. especially was looking super sharp. I think this is also for Bedboom to do with uh, how the upper bracket is running. We spoke about Aurora as well as Pose having a match later down the line. But there's going to be a rematch uh, eventually if it happens, if Bedboom succeeds in their next game up uh, with either NIP or Gods in the next series that we are going to be having, whoever comes victorious. It's going to be a match between Bedboom and Pose, meaning the finals of the EU close qualifiers that we did see yeah. where Bedboom lost. So it might be that they want to prove themselves that how did we even lose? That shouldn't have been the odds going in their favour. We were completely dominant. And this is how they played even in the EU closed uh, qualifiers in the grand finals. But it just seemed like they just gave a lot of chances for Pose to win back. But here, they made sure even if there was a single round picked from Big while they were at 12, they immediately were able to string. If they were not at 12, they were making sure that they get to the 12th round immediately, consecutively in the next round itself. And that also one move uh, where Tabson, after finding one on Nafni, thought maybe there is going to be a swing after that diffuse sound being made. Because of the ding, ding, they just stuck it through, and Betpoom were just just solid on their calls in doing what they wanted. That I felt like Big maybe never had that situation coming through. This is the second half pistol round that we are seeing. Krimbo found a big three, and it was completely nullified by Magnus just finding a four of his own. Yeah, uh, just uh, how the how it feels like this game is kind of played out, right? We've seen some uh, hero moments coming out from 
from the side of Crimbo, but apart from that, um, the, the rest of the individual is not really quite mm -hmm. stepping up to the plate for the side of Big, which is uh, just the way it is. Another day, uh, another disappointing outcome from Big. Is I did, yeah, I did mention at the beginning of the uh, of the day. You know, I want to see Big do well. I want to see the German scene kind of rally around Big and do yeah. what Eternal Fire has done for the Turkish side. But unfortunately, uh, Big just not looking ready right now. I, I know it's online. I know it's you know early days and whatnot, but. Uh, Quite a lot of flaws coming in uh, from them, especially on, on map number two and ancient. They were just not there at all. Uh, Sound of player Chiron. I think, e even though you know we had like Magna just really you know racking up the kills, having the pistol round from him, and on map number three, I think overall Chiron across all three maps is finding just so much impact on the entries. And I think uh, it's also uh, that. Chiron's able to find those small pockets where he's either getting unchecked off or dodging the utils and finding kills. So uh, Nafni is like, go ahead, you do you do your job, you do you, find the kills, give us the round. And that's been happening. He has been very impactful either in finding the opening tracks or quick trade-offs coming through. Even if he gets taken down, there's another layer that comes through uh, either from Magnus, as you said. Uh, there's just too many people from the side of Betpoo making sure that they never lose control of things. Or even if they do, they make sure the pressure is still on the side of big. So far, Bed Boom, standout player, we spoke about it, we saw one Zote coming through. Except for uh, these two players, only the first map is where we saw a good performance coming in from big, where it looks like they were completely strategized. And as I said, the last best of one they lost against uh, Bed Boom, they decided that this time we're going to be prepared for that. However, they did not think there'll be a series like this, where Bed Boom will be completely prepared against them. And also it felt like that first map break uh, that Bed Boom got, they decided to start afresh. Nafni said, I was not happy with what we did. Let's try to switch things up. And right from the start, from the pistol round itself, Nafni commanded everything that was happening. And he concentrated a lot of what the team had to do. Yeah, and, and even in some of the rounds that Bed Boom did lose in the first half, right? I, I feel like came down to mistakes. This is one round I want to point out, right? That Karen just not blinded at all. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, this didn't just happen the one time. It happened multiple yes. times. And Karen just uh, so many rounds where he won it single-handedly. The one round where him and Nafni walked into the A bombs that comes to mind. So just overall, uh, a great performance coming out from him. Him and Magna just combined together for 41 kills, over 180 R as well amongst his two players. And yeah, like Zorti with the AWP, he did his job. The usual ADR for an offer. A siren was pretty solid as well as the anchor. He was playing a lot of, uh, he was taking a lot of space for his team while not necessarily, you know, having a lot of highlight moments as Chiron or Magna Jess did. Like the first run comes to mind on their CT side where he pushed in towards A mains, allowing, mm -hmm. you know, the, the the B stack to remain in place where they won the first pistol on on Ancient, for example. So he did a lot as well. For Nafni though, just overall, I think it was solid calling. Uh, coming out from Bed Boom. My only criticism would be I feel like sometimes they overcomplicate things. Like the one round comes to mind where I do believe it was Crimbo in a 1v3 bomb drop to its yeah. ram and they they know they knew the bomb was there and they overcomplicated it rotating all the way to to donut to A and flank into a CT and look when it works out it looks genius but if it doesn't work doesn't. out uh, it looks like you're a bit of a bit of a dummy, right? So I feel like sometimes complicating rounds Maybe not what I would like from them, but overall, I think this is a pretty solid uh, counter strike from Betpo. Yeah, I think very well strategized, very well decisive, uh, played out as they wanted. Never seemed overwhelmed or overpowered. Even if they did lose a round, they were quick, as we said, to act on. And I think so far, even as you mentioned, Siren, right? If Kyren maybe was taken on a quick trade coming in from Siren, that immediately puts a break on the side of Big. And now, yes, they've put the breaks on Big and they'll be taking a loser bracket journey from here on. Yep. However, Bet Boom will continue ahead. Let's see who's going to be their opponent in the next series that we have, but right after this break.
victories with one x bet Following suit were the Indian Open and closed qualifiers, where amidst fierce competition, God's Rain, True Rippers, Grey Fox, and Marcos Gaming stood out as the top four contenders. In a riveting final showdown, God's Rain orchestrated a stunning comeback, sweeping True Rippers with a mesmerizing scoreline of 3-2 to secure their berth in the main event. In the main event, five invited teams, Ents, Aurora, OG, Big, and Ninjas in pyjamas, were slated to compete. Joining this prestigious lineup are the victors of the EU closed qualifiers, Fose and Betpum, and the triumphant squad from the Indian qualifiers, God's Reign. This diverse array of talent promises an exhilarating competition as they strive for supremacy on the gaming stage. The Sky Esports Masters 2024 is set to unfold from April 8th to April 14th with a staggering prize pool of 350,000 US dollars up for grabs and the winner gets a direct invite to Sky Esports Championship 2024. Who will emerge as the ultimate champion? Tune into Sky Esports on YouTube and Twitch to find out. I would love to play against Indian guys, Nib and Big. Yeah, that, that's the three teams I would like to play against. It would be fun to play against them. I knew you were screaming, because uh, when you win a BO5 with three insane comebacks, it feels, uh, it feels like some magic. It feels like not uh, reality, so... I think the biggest opponent is ourselves, and uh, if we play our game good, we're gonna win this tournament. We work hard, we give our best and um, we will succeed with it, I'm pretty sure. And just for everyone who's supporting us, our fan club, um, you're the best guys and yeah, go big. I think what's, uh, like, what is good for us is that uh, we have a new lineup, a lot uh, more like new energy, everyone is hyped, everyone really wants to play, wants to win and uh, I mean there is no, you can't anti us right? 
from uh, the other team's perspective, so they don't know what they're gonna face, they don't know how we're gonna play, and uh, I mean, that's, uh, that could be good for us. I'm usually not thinking about that at all, because like, uh, it not don't really matter how you played in the past, it's really matter how you, you will play in the future. Yeah, like things are looking great and it's just a matter of time before we get into the groove and start winning things, so yeah. Like these tournament matters a lot. Even if we get, get to play like four to six maps, it will be very helpful for us because we are we are playing against a tier one team and that's never happened in India before. So yeah, it's crucial for us to gain that experience and so we can you know use that in the next two to three years and uh, become like them. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sky Talks. Today we have Bhavi, the IGL of God's Reign, India's best team and now they'll be fighting in the Sky Sports Masters main event from 8th April. But we'll get insights from how the team is feeling, how he's feeling. How are you feeling Bhavi? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Good to hear that. Now you've qualified for the main event. I know it's not an easy job to do but we'll uh, take a little step back, a little formality to be done uh, to all the people around the world. Now that the world will be looking at you, I want you to introduce it to everybody who you are, where you're from and what you do. Okay, so my name is Bhavi Sejwani. I am from Mumbai and I play CS2 for Team Godstrain and I'm the IGL and captain for Team Godstrain CS2. Wonderful. Now coming to your invite in the closed qualifiers. You heard there's a 350,000 US dollars tournament happening at Sky Sports Masters. How did you feel? What was your and your team's reaction when you heard this? I think it was massive for all of us, like not just our team, but for India. I think we needed something big and I think Sky Sports is doing a really good job so far. Wonderful. From there, now we have all our teams will be fighting, right? Um, seven more teams that you have to fight with. How do you think your chances are with the European qualified team and European invited teams? What do you think? I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, our goal is to just do some damage. It's, we are not coming like, okay, we are gonna win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But we are coming into with this mindset that, okay, we need to do something. We need to show that Indian CS is not some CS that we used to play before. It's different now. So uh, the main goal is to do some damage. I couple of players have told me, they were like, if during COVID uh, there wasn't a dip, Indian CS could have already had an international stage. So, I think a, a couple of teams are looking out for you. Let's see how it goes. Now, coming into CS2, but CSGO, you played in Masters 23. It was CSGO back then. So, how was that shift for you? Was it a struggle? How did you fare? And how did you make up with this new game? I think the shift was also a massive because in CSGO, it used to be 16 rounds. Mm -hmm. And now in CS2, it's like 13 rounds, that's it. So you can't make uh, many mistakes and you don't have time to adapt. So everything has to be much more quicker and faster. And yeah, I think that's where that's where we struggle a little bit before. But uh, yeah, now we're getting used to it. But before you get used to uh, the tournament itself, I want you on 
the people watching get used to who you are so let's start from where did counter strike start from you when was the first time you played who introduced you or how did it start for you i think i started playing counter strike condition 0 before mm-hmm. this i used to play on lap- a laptop all the time so when i got my pc i purchased csgo and one of my friend introduced me to csgo cuz csgo doesn't require that much specification you know it, mm-hmm. it can run on basically any other pc so my pc wasn't strong enough so he told me and i was like yeah i played this game before already and that's how i started okay so when you got introduced now you're at a beginner stage right you're trying to understand the game play it uh, have had tilted situations where you're under, not understanding some pro players are coming against you so how was that initial journey for you yeah initially i wasn't playing to you know be a pro player i was just playing to you know have fun with my friends all the time like let's say i have an exam tomorrow i'm mm-hmm. i'm not studying i'm st- <laughs> I staying till up like 3 am and playing counter strike okay <laughs> what were your parents like did anybody try to stop you or like okay it's okay I mean, they didn't know oh <laughs> the classic <laughs> hide and play nice so when you were doing this where was that switch for you when you said no i i I think maybe esports is something that I want to do. Was it college? It started, or was some tournament you saw and your friends joined? How was it? Uh, the first time I saw that you know, like esports, something like that exists, was mm-hmm. I think the major was going on for CS:GO. Mm-hmm. I believe it was the one where Phase and Cloud9 played in the finals. Okay. And Cloud9 won. Yeah. So that's where I was like, uh, okay, that's where we can do that. Like I can do that, and there's so many, so much money in the, so much money in the place, so much, so so many crowds, so many friends. so yeah, i decided to you know i want to be like one of them respect from one expect 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 respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect Welcome back, everyone, to uh, what is going to be the final game of the opening stages here of the Sky Esports Masters 2024, powered by AMD. My name, once again, is Blay. Joining me once again is going to be Lucifer. And Lucifer is going to be a favorite team facing off against the ninjas, the ninjas in pajamas. I think this is going to be very interesting. We spoke about the storyline coming in all the way 10 years back. Uh, the rematch with rematch. completely different players. Exactly. That time we had Get Right, Forest, uh, Freiburg and all playing in the lineup, but now it's a completely revamped new Ninjas in Pajamas looking forward to the same strides that they'll be able to, mm-hmm. but on the other end a team which has been doing great locally in this circuit, right? They've been topping the charts, taking everybody down. Therefore, might be a lot of expectations from the local crowd but again ninjas in pajamas together with this new roster they've been playing in the young academy so i think it might be a little tough going there play yeah of course it will be uh yeah it will be it won't be easy at all for uh, for the side of gods rain it won't lie also you know with the with the news that i'm sure everyone knows by now that mm-hmm. unfortunately uh the raven could make it okay. to uh to where they're right now boot camping playing a tournament over there in in europe so they do have a uh, standard coming in in the form of you 
Uh, someone I, I I won't lie, I don't know much about him, right? He, he is Dutch. He's played a, a little bit here and there. As before we jump into that, I'm just quickly glance over what has transpired over the past uh, couple of days here for us and Aurora Gaming winning their opening matchups and we saw Bed Boom, uh, you know, pretty convincing final two maps coming out on top of Berlin International Gaming. So we have Fours versus Aurora which should be taking place tomorrow and then we should also have Bed Boom uh, facing off against, uh, or it could be loads of lo the lower bracket round, I'm not sure about tomorrow's schedule yet, but what we do have right now is we have NIP, the Ninjas in Pajamas, in this uh, in, in a place where uh, there's been a lot of criticism about his team uh, of in recent years, no longer what they were once upon a time, mm -hmm. but they are you know, rebuilding. They still haven't really finalized their fifth player yet, still playing with a stand in their, their academy player. They have Wrinkle picked up though, and yeah. the recent results look decent so far. Small sample size, it's all online, you know, it's looking decent, but they are in the rebuilding phase after having cut the majority of the players after the failure of the RMRs. And they're going to be going up against what uh, some people might say are the are the pride of India. That is, of course, going to be God's Reign. We've got R2B2, you got Finn, uh, Fired Up. Uh, and Pavi, who is the IGL, and Yume is going to be standing in. Someone I don't know, again, as we start Chimon, we don't know much about him, but what yeah. we do know is the name is Alan Groot. And uh, that's great. <laughs> I didn't notice, like, Groot is uh, yeah, a real surname, surname, but uh, the more, you know, the more you know. Yeah, we might end up uh, pulling out a lot more Groot references in the game later down the line, but for now, uh, I think God's Reign, a solid roster, Yes, a lot of people were looking forward to and hoping that Revan was also joining them and Jordan unfortunately didn't happen. So they had to get the stand in. I mean, Revan was still ready in case they didn't find the perfect match. So I think after a lot of discussion finding Hume, let's see how Gods didn't perform. But this roster, as you said, decently performing in the recent uh, fights that they had. Even Aurora, a team that we have here in our Sky Esports Masters, there against them, this roster lost. Performed decently. It was a good matchup coming through, but Aurora were one step ahead. And as you said, they've still not found their proper fifth. The full set is not here from Ninjas in Pyjama. So, their experimenting phase, let's see when it ends. Blue Phoenix on the other end, the stand-in that they have, has been playing with them. Whenever needed from the Young Academy, has been moving in, played with them again back there. So, let's see how he functions today. Especially, I think, Ringle, Wrinkle is going to be the one we all have our eyes on. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, so... Uh, if you look at his team, obviously the uh, the survivors from the purge, uh, as we might actually call it, would have been Alex and Rez. Uh, for Alex, you know, he he came into this lineup and obviously didn't really have an easy time, you know, mm -hmm. just coming on in, and you could see all the roster changes, not looking uh, very comfortable. So I'm I'm actually glad for Alex that he has the another opportunity to kind of show what he can do as an IGL, right? So obviously they're putting a lot in faith in him as the as the the captain so to speak of the team rez somehow surviving once again at nip um he's had a few moments here and there but still has been a bit of a disappointment if you ask me for quite a while right now but he got these two max or and wrinkle though like yeah. wrinkle is the one who's been looking very very cool i think he's the one signing for this nip lineup where everyone's been like all right we like this. This could be uh, someone for the future. And yes, it's looking pretty solid for them. And despite the fact that, in case you're being lulled into the fact that, oh, both these two teams are playing with a couple of stand-ins apiece, uh, let's be real. You, know, you, for the very first... I've never heard of this player in the past, by the way. And I was going to be playing in with, uh, with, a, just with a roster who I'm sure they've had a couple of practice games here and there, but obviously haven't had too many reps. On the other hand, for Blue Phoenix, has been standing in for them for uh, the past couple of weeks, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously, NIP are the they're very, very big favorites here coming to this match. But that being said, you know, we've seen some pretty topsy-turvy results. It seems a pretty exciting game, so despite the fact that for God's reign, it should be a pretty rough ask to pull off this win. At least if they can, if they can put up a, a pretty solid fight, I think people are going to be pretty uh, happy uh, with, with, with that result. Yeah, hands down. I mean, uh, looking at Ninjas in Pyjamas, even though it's the new revamped version coming through, they've had a lot more international experience fighting in recent tournaments with teams from different regions. Even when I spoke to Max, that's what he was saying. Uh, he was grateful. Uh, he was first in the younger, Young Ninjas Academy and from there coming into Ninjas in Pyjamas. Uh, it, it feels great to be in one of those Swedish lineups that everybody looks forward to and for him to be from Sweden and also to be in Ninjas in Pyjamas it is a great spot for him to be at. And now they would want to deliver in that, right? As you mentioned, they've not had a great site as a squad uh, and I think this is finally maybe the new sun that we are looking at, maybe the new brightness that they needed in the ninjas in pyjamas that's going to find them the victory that they need in the right direction but it's going to be a tough run for them as well because as we said they still 
figuring things out. This might be a chance which might give Godzin, but again, not much of experience on the international waters that they have. So this is going to be their first game here. As you said, maybe a couple rounds here and there, maybe even try to max it out to a map. That's going to be the greatest that we'll be expecting. But yeah, they're the guns coming out from India that everybody is hyped up for. And the match that everybody is looking out from the day of the start of the Sky Sports Masters main event. Uh, it's going to be a build-up over there and the 10 years uh, going back that we mentioned about. I want to ask you, how much do you think there can be even the slightest odds uh, for uh, God's Reign to get the first map? I mean, you can never say never, right? I, I do believe they, uh, I think it was at the, at the Sky Sports event in uh, just like a week ago on land where they took down Bad News Kangaroos, right? The, yes. the Aussie guys who uh, the currently, they don't have an org, but I guess they're like the second, third best team in Australia as well behind mm -hmm. the current FlyQuest roster. So it's not like they can't play Counter-Strike. They, they can play to a certain level. It's just the, the lack of experience, the lack yes. of exposure, which has just been the bane of Asian Counter-Strike for years and years in uh, in the pa in, in recent memory, but you know, the, the Mongols did it, we saw the Invasion showing signs as well, so hopefully mm -hmm. God's Reign can try and do that in the coming months or maybe the coming years uh, in CS2. Uh, taking a look at the vetoes here, Anubis the pick coming in uh, from God's Reign and NIP going with the Ancient pick, and if we do go to it, we might be seeing Nuke as a decider, which does look unlikely. It does, but uh, the track record for uh, God's Reign on Anubis has been really good. Yeah. They've been winning all their games. Therefore, it should be a good map coming in, whereas uh, Ninjas in pay Pajamas don't have a lot to work with. They've just played once on this roster, and therefore, that's something that we might look forward to, and that can be an unknown that can affect God's Reign here to start things off. But then we jump into Ancient. Now, Ancient on the local circuit here for God's Reign has been good. However, the maps have gone closer. They've won it out. But again, the percentage over there wouldn't say their performance completely outright because they were losing their game on the Grand Slam stage that we did see against Ancient that they fought with Aurora they lost I think one more team they did lose on Ancient therefore that's the reason we see that stat even though they've picked that Ancient that's the reason I say both these first two maps look comfortable for God's Reign whereas Ninjas and Pyjamas it's the team that we are looking forward to as the unknown not much played on Anubis but might be there ready and with Wrinkle we saw him in Inferno against Aurora and also the victories that they've had uh, is going to be something that we might be looking forward forward to what they did in Yon Shipping might be something that they might do to replicate or take it even better here. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, and I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if there is any positive the silver lining or, or a potential of a you know of, a, of an upset so to speak coming in from the from the Indian side it has to be an Anubis it's a map where yes. I'm looking at the results as well I'm not going to read too much into the results they've had against domestic opposition but they did take down Bad News Kangaroos 13 to 8 on LAN as well which is I guess the the highlight of this young roster right you know when it comes to international opposition haven't really had a chance to play a lot of uh, international teams and yeah Bad News Kangaroos not exactly the biggest of names you know mm -hmm. but but if you look at some of the players there and if you have been watching uh, just you know Asian APAC Counter-Strike so to speak you're looking at places like like Brace like you know Hazard like PZ these are known players in, in the yes. Oceanic region and they have had decent success in their local uh, area as well so that win was pretty big seem to understand how this map works out but for me you know the fact that it's not even a five-man roster it hurts I, I know that a lot of the Indian teams they do come in, you know, in the local languages most of the times, depending on which part of the country that comes from. Again, 28, 30 languages we have over mm -hmm. here. So uh, you, you're used to calming in game in, in your local language, despite the fact that you can't speak English, and now you have a stand in coming in. Uh, you have to switch it up to English to make your you know, stand in feel a little bit more comfortable and to be able to calm with them. And that means that you, you know, you, you have to, there's an added layer of processing what you want to say and we've seen this happen in many teams you know who have to switch into to a different language which you're not necessarily very comfortable on but we're going to be finding out if they're going to pull this one off ninjas in pajamas opting to start on the t side no surprises there here on their opponent's map pick and god's reign a heavy stack towards b to start things off all right you're gonna hear the sound run up down mid uh it is going to be a Temple hit actually running towards B and uh, if they held towards Dark it could have worked out but they're rerouting. They're actually taking CT and from there running all the way to A. This is this is kind of wonky. Blue Phoenix spots a player out towards water. And they're now finally going to be heading towards B as NIP. They haven't seen anyone yet. Max are pushing it from Temple. He's going to join his teammates and this is a very unorthodox pistol round coming out from the T's as Blue Phoenix dropping down from the bridge will finish it off in and fire up able to just get a couple of kills and NIP with 
a pistol round that I, I probably have never seen, and it works out in favor of the Swedes, or the Swedish organization, I might say. It's pretty international now. For a second, I felt like the first round itself had the side switched off. Uh, CTs becoming Ts, Ts becoming Cts over there, and uh, Ninjas and Pajamas, yeah, for a second, uh, did kind of bring us into a googly position where it felt like, is it going to be an A hit or a B hit, and finally decided. This time, it's coming to be an A stack from the side of God's Reign. It might be a right read, but they're pushing in a little too early, which Maxed is leading into a nice flash setup, but they do not find. Oh wait, actually they do. Quick trade. However, Wrinkle makes sure that doesn't continue and a little more on along with Ag Alex helping out, and that's going to be a quick axe to get to the second. Yeah, not wasting much time there. And for God's reign, it's going to be uh, the uh, the rifles coming out to play. Voom, the uh, the kind of the most unknown entity in this lineup. If you're just taking a look on his HLTV TV profile, you pointed out as well. I don't, I don't think he's played any officials recently yeah. at all. So I do wonder where they found him. You know, maybe they're just playing on face and they're like, "Hey, you're good. You have an HLTV TV profile. You played a few games. Let's go." So, Voom, hopefully, is going to be vibing around, and he is going to be playing on the deep bomb side. Which is interesting, right? You, you have a player as a stand-in coming in, and uh, he is going to be playing with the pack. That means the comms need to be way more cleaner, and that's when you know it is going to be tested for God's Rain. Switching up towards English and making sure that he feels comfortable. Not that he can't speak in English, but they need to be more... Uh, they need to like mentally switch up into it. Looks like a bit of a technical issue. Not to, not to worry. It's going to be a bit of a round restore uh, happening over there. Looks like a little bit of a technical issue on one of the players. So no damage done. No problem at all. So there we have it. Three maps. Anubis, Ancient. We've seen a couple of that today already earlier. And it was uh, Bedboom taking on Big pretty convincingly. And then, of course, Nuke as a decider if we do see it. Op coming out into play early on. Yeah, you can see one of the NIP players has uh, disconnected. Oh, there we go. All good in the hood. Blue Phoenix is back. As a restore will be in. Alex with the MAC-10 as well. So it's a bit of a bonus round here for, for NIP, but there are um, some pretty heavy hitting rifles already in play. So it, it looks like Alex is going to be the guy trying to lead the charge. Find out what the setup's going to be. We did see before the round restore took place that God's Rain, a heavy early lean towards B. It's going to be a crucial round here for God's Rain. They've lost the initial two rounds, and if they're able to pull this up, uh, can be an equalizer right at the start. But yeah, it's going to be a bonus, something that might give them a chance to get to the third as well for Ninjas in Pyjamas. The op scoped in, ready. Wrinkle didn't get the opportunity to pick off Finn over there. An immediate player moving up, looking forward to if there's a quick potential. But Finn has given them that space. In the meantime, he's also calling in Bhavi. Who's the one who's playing around mid? Water, a lot of sound being made from Alex over there. Will force the players off dark with one single Molotov. But look at the player who's still expecting Blue Phoenix, thinking there's going to be a flash play out at B long. Nothing of those sorts. God's Rain are waiting for ninjas in pyjamas to actually enter into side and then try to break them apart. Yeah, it's all a ruse though. You can see two players parked outside of A mains, and the smoke's going to be deployed by Finn. That's a pretty shallow one. So A main control with the T's, but this flashbang, this push for info, but it's been heard. There is Blue Phoenix tucked in underneath the bridge. I don't, I don't think it's heard him. This is a free kill for R2B2. Really surprised Blue Phoenix did convey the fact that there is a player there, R2D2, B2, sorry, not D2. Great work to recover that spray and find Alex, and this could be the first round here early on for a God's Reign. Rez left alone, one versus four. R2B2 is kind of low, but he can just tuck on in. 20 seconds on the clock, they can just play the bomb. Position known is not going to be easy for him and R2B2. That's kind of very ballsy from R2B2, yeah. considering how low he was to just go in for the peak, but catches Rez, and that's going to be God's Reign on board already, keeping three alive as well. And IP getting just shut down. Yeah, there was Rez at mid, and as you mentioned, right, there was a player also tucked in. Uh, he was busy setting up his teammates for success with Util, and Rez, I think, had pushed up double doors uh, ahead already and was closer to connected, and therefore couldn't spot the player who was moving up waters. 
and that became an opportunity for R2B2 to explore and find a round for his teammates as well. Now that's going to be one on board and Ninjas in Pyjamas, it was their bonus. So they're going to be having a full buy right now. Op was there in the previous, however, that gets lost. Therefore, the big green barrel is not going to come into play. That's slower, but all lining up again outside A. Yeah, and once again, it's going to be an A lane, but this time, mo a multiple players from NIP coming in. Finn, Molly in hand. Oh, he's going to be taken down here. The Molly's a little too deep. They're going to come charging on in. Smoke's going to dispatch a bit, and beautiful entries coming in. You blink and you miss it. Three kills instantly from NIP. The contact play. And it's always a risk of you know, playing that little jiggle with the Molotov, especially when you're playing that very sh uh, shallow, the way f uh, Finn was playing. You usually don't have much of margin for error. So the moment you see the, the first player coming in, the shadow, and you toss in the Molotov because of how shallow you're playing, the player can charge on in, and he's barely going to take any tick damage. And then you kind of got caught off guard in transition when trying to switch to your weapon and of course put aside NIP they even had a smoke to extinguish the Molotov as well and res <laughs> easy shots from him 3 to 1 NIP they they just shrug off round number 3 and they snatch it back and bear in mind that was a force where a couple of players had just the pistols so the uh, the contact A play works out wonderfully and God's reign just back to the pistols. So, a little bit of life there, round number three, but uh, back to reality we go. You could see immediately ninjas in pyjamas understanding that, okay, wait, uh, God's Rain actually kind of do tend to explore if you give them a little more space uh, when we are trying to execute a site. And this time, rest just stays back, just to make sure that nobody is there on that backstab. And now with these pistols, this is not going to be a stack, however, at one side they're spread at B, 3 at A, a cheeky Zeus that fired up holds and fired up does this every time. Whenever it's an eco, he does try to play with uh, a Zeus just, just to instill confidence himself but the timing here, R2B2, can he find another? No. There's a second layer of Maxter and he does punish the player and now that's going to be dark control taken over. Fired up, tough oh, position oh, to play. A, oh, he's a rough spot here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Alex will spot him out. That's right. I kind of would like them to maybe have clustered up a little bit together, considering the uh, the weaponry. Success. But yeah, they played a bit of a defaultish angles and just going to be going for some exits here. Uh, for NIP though, rifles about for every one of the players, so there's no real need to go for a hunt here. Just hold on to your rifles, exit safely. And whichever way the head towards, it's just one CT lying in wait and. The USP, nice flash to find Yam, good exits, rather good exit strategy. And NIP going to make it very clean and easy. Again, I mean, if you want to be, if you want to huff that, that's a little spray from rest. Yeah, if you want to huff that, uh, that Copium or Hopium, you know, it is still very T-sided, it is Anubis. And for God's sake, if you get to like four rounds, maybe. They could be feeling happy, but so far, apart from uh, the third round, Nip looking very, very clean indeed. And also Rez hitting some great shots. And that's the thing with Rez. When he's looking good, my God, does he look so bloody good. But hopefully this entire rebuild they're having with uh, with, with, with Max and Wrinkle, that could be the, the renaissance, so to speak, for Rez. And hopefully you can see what he is capable of, or what we know he can be capable of. Full eco though, so for God's Reign, the guns are going to be coming out. Voom with the AWP, going to be stepping into the shoes of Revan, who unfortunately couldn't make it for the event. Now what do they do? Three kits. A multitude of utility to work with. And the op for Voom, and where is he going to be floating this? Running out towards A, along with Finn. This time wants to make sure that if it's a rush out towards A, it's going to get blocked. But however, people are grouping out towards the long at B. Only two here, one at dark, one playing back of side. It's going to be a tough for them to stall. A double stack towards mid from God's Rain. Might just dwindle the defenses on side. And look at this, Rez immediately clearing the corner fast. R2B2 trying to play close up. Fired up already cleared from side. R2B2 through the smoke doesn't find anything. It's going to be a quick clear and also the round mostly. And if uh, God's Rain try to fight this out, they might just lose the weapons that they just got. Yeah, they absolutely need to save, especially the op in the hands of Voom. NIP. 
switching it up. Fast hit coming into its B, and yeah, RTB to trying to be sneaky in the smoke, but good awareness from Blue Phoenix to find the kill there. Just aware of the possibility, and these are these are quick rounds coming in from Nip. Alex even finding you, man, that's the AWP taken away. And now, considering the money is pretty solid for NIP, they could start going in for the Hunter. Alex, ball to go to them out. Wrinkle just finds Nip. One player remaining. All on Bobby. Trying to hold on. Wrinkle getting a little over eager. Op will be salvaged, but that's about it for God's Rain NIP. Making it look super clean, and the money is flourishing as well for the Ninjas. Exus is chilling there at the back, having a good old time. I don't think he really has to talk much right now. Mm -hmm. God's Rain trying to do the best in what they've got in here in Anubis. It's one of their best maps, and actually Nip making the decision of picking Anubis and it seems like maybe uh, there are fewer plays on Anubis they want to make it more put a couple of success on their card on Anubis as well a nice setup of a boost nice read on that Bavi is out Yume does still have the op it is an eco round and look at them they're still taking their time ninjas are not making any mistakes they've been methodical irrespective uh, that they have to fight a full buy or it's going to be an eco. They made sure that it's them always having to throw. Do not want to give away an R2B2 round that happened in the third one. Yeah, and they're not really... Uh, it's, uh, it's nothing too convoluted either. Yeah. Right? Just this grouping up together, pack team mentality. They knew there was an off save. They knew the rest of them were probably going to be in pistols. So just group up to its mid. Nice open find onto Harvey by, uh, by Wrinkle. And that should be... Should be it here for uh, God's Rain Master. Easy kind of fired up. And there you have it. And, and you can clearly see, like, you know, for, for, for the side of uh, NIP, they're, they're not really like, giving too much respect either. Uh, we saw this on the, in the pistol route as well, just, you know, just barreling up towards Temple, from, from towards CT spawn, beach, and wrapping towards B. Uh, just playing a little bit of confidence, right? No, not overthinking things. And yeah, it is kind of unfortunate for, for the side of God's Reign. You know, your, your op are not making it, uh, having to go for a stand-in for the very last second, or especially when a stand-in is the is your primary op, or it's never going to be yeah. uh, easy. And also for Voom, uh, someone I haven't, I won't lie, I don't know much about in all honesty. But yeah, for NIP, uh, seem to be in very comfortable position. Your cruise control, some might even call it, a couple of players even over 10k money we do have this the stair smoke coming up so could be a dark push perhaps from the cts it could be it flashbang won't blind anyone however wrinkle with a miss but they're not really going to push on ahead with the smoke but because of that a hole in towards mid res taking advantage of the field is a big deal and he's going to be found out bobby falls just to one defender towards a res is going to be patrolling towards mid Oh, this is so uncomfortable here for Finn. Just to one kill, and now he has a debate. Does he just stick around towards the A side? Does he fall back towards CT? I, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's not it. That's not it, far up. You can't do that. You can't do that. This is an Asian. Face it. Ninjas are still waiting. Yum. Nice find on Rez. That should give them the idea of where the AWP is at and might switch their gears to move in another direction. Yeah, they, they are taking quite a bit of time. And we still have RTD2 waiting towards B here. Oh, that's such a huge find. So patient here for the And now they know. They know where the AWP is. They know they've taken down the A anchor. The mate comes in a second too late. Wrinkle finds R2B2. And yeah, that should be the call for the save here from Boom. NIP being very, very patient. Very methodical. And uh, you can see some of the individual tendencies from God's Reign. Uh, not great. You hate to see that. So now it's going to be the ninjas getting their seven on board. Uh, a dominant T start for them here on Anubis. And uh, they're making sure that the map that they picked is going to work. But you tough for him to save the AWP. He's expecting the push coming in from the other end. But all the players are ganging up right behind him. By the time he turned around, that's going to be the AWP being lost. God's Reign. Will have a chance here if they would want to fancy a buy. 
They do have enough. Maybe lesser utils. Uh, maybe just one single kit because I did see Yum sitting at 7,000 uh, in cash. And it's like, like even the round, we, like we did see the the stair smoke coming in. So I I, I thought it would be pro probably you know a push coming in from Doc, no. maybe a simultaneous push coming from A mains, trying to make things a little uncomfortable for NIP. But they immediately once the shot was fired off by uh, by Wrinkle, they they pulled the abort button. And because mid was just relinquished, their res just able to walk on up. They knew there was aggression from the Doc. They knew it'd probably just be one player to the mid. Just giving so much space to work with. As Maxter just waiting patiently finds both you, sorry, finds uh, both the players pushing out to his A mains. And this is uh, just Bobby left and caught out in the open. A very comfortable win here from NIP, eight to one. And yeah, the, 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 look, the CD side's hard enough, but you can't just play on the side. See, you just can't play so very passively and give all the space for NIP to work with you. Like you need to be a little bit disruptive. Like a tiny bit disruptive, and not play so defaulty, right? Yeah. If you're gonna play super defaulty on the CD side, any any tier two, 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 two point five team from EU is just gonna run over you. Uh, it's never gonna be easy. So would want to see a little bit of a switch up so far, but haven't really seen much. It's been very, very standard, tepid CT side here from God's Rain. Again, it it is their map pick, so. Expecting a little bit more. They're inclining a little too much towards mid. Uh, they're getting that double stack in rather than uh, maybe put down one anchor. They're keeping one anchor towards A, but along with him, maybe an opera sometimes or switching things up. It seems like they're running their mid a little heavy and ninjas are just taking control of that. And in case there's no action coming in from either at B or A, they're just quickly taking control. A chance being missed here. Wrinkle. Not the ordinary that we see from him, but a nice small attack to slow the forces coming through. Otherwise, they would have taken dark control in a jiffy. But Puffy, oh, fancying his odds. But that's the only damage that he'll be able to do for now. Taking oh. Max down super low. Rink. Rinkle might have missed an opportunity at dark, but not at A. He just clears both. Yeah, this this is this is honestly a little a little rough to watch from uh, from God's Reign. They're really struggling on these aggro plays and just contact walkouts trades are there and and I love how wrinkle just like free flowing with the AWP right now mm -hmm. just like moving around feeling super comfortable and you allow someone like him to just run around and take fights and it's not going to be easy it's complete shutdown from NIP God's rain One second is looking rough Alex even if it's a trade, it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> the money's out of control, man. <laughs> Master and Blue Phoenix are gonna have 15k at the end of this round. Everyone over 10k. Make that Alex as well. So they can just go for this hunt. And Pavi just trying desperately to keep at least one gun in play. Res will decapitate him. Clothes lines him with the AK-47 and uh, NIP. Absolutely ruthless. For God's Reign, max loss bonus, but it's not ideal. Um, but when you're 9-1 down, like, what do, you, what do you go for? Like, do you, do you go for a bit of a light buy and try and save for the final round so you have a full-fledged buy? I, I don't know. Um, looking at this buy, though, that's not great. Uh, that, I, just looking at this buy, you know, things aren't feeling, things aren't good in the, in the uh, God's Reign camp. Bobby just gone for the full A1 investment. He's got zero money left. And everyone else has gone for a bit of a hot fight. They're so disjointed right now. And he's going to be taken down as well. The A1, the Soul Rifle, will fall. Flash is so good. R2B2 will be found out. And that should be yet another round here. 4 versus 3. Finn barely alive in AK-47 retrieve. And Alex has a bunch of rat angle. But he will find everyone. And this is just manhandling from NIP. God's Reign. One more opportunity here. And while they will have a buy, Bobby, just $2,400. I'm not sure why he just went for that solo buy. Yeah. It's uh, smelt a bit of desperation. Last round. Half not looking great here for God's Reign. And, and this is what we were talking about. Uh, ninjas, this is the new version that we are looking at them. 
and uh, Kachin never had a chance to have even a single duel with them, maybe a practice swim over there, and therefore it is tough for them to break this down, but looks like uh, Kobe being placed, Finn finds a Lex, maybe a double nade coming down, and they found that opening, nice for now, but Trinkle, as you said, he's been floating around, and look at him, along with his teammate, moving up, Maybe an opportunity, Maxter and Wrinkle tagging together. This is the show we were talking about, Wrinkle and Maxter, the players we were always looking forward to of what they can do. And it's going to be Wrinkle finding one on site. Fountain being cleared. There's going to be one at Acorn and another towards Heaven. It's not going to be easy. But in the meantime, Blue Phoenix, he finds one as he was moving towards mid and make it another. That's oh. going to be the AWP. <laughs> Alright. Collateral kill as well and yeah, R2B2. Very far away from all the action. And a dominant, extremely dominant T side coming in from NIP. And we did say if there was going to be a bit of an upset, that would be on the map pick. But yeah, there you have it. 11 to 1, just steamrolling. The side of God's Reign. I mean, there is a caveat. Right? We like we have to paint the full picture. That obviously for for God's Reign, you know, they they didn't have they don't have their fifth. Uh, I believe this is the first game they're playing with uh, with Yume as a stand-in. Mm -hmm. uh, fired up's the only one who's talking a little bit, but yeah, the uh, the body language not looking so great for God's Reign. Yeah, um, and honestly, I mean, not too surprised there. For NIP though, yeah, uh, they're taking it seriously, taking it proper, nothing too crazy, nothing too solid. Yeah, you, you'll love to see someone like uh, Wrinkle just feeling so comfortable with the AWP. Like, this is a player that we wanted to really watch as Rez. He's got to be tested. Finds one. He's alone. Flashbang, not quite going to blind the player. He is being hunted down. That's a bomb spotted as well, as Alex is there to help him out if needs be. It's a bit sticking around is the question. Very default play coming in from God's Rain here. Two players in extremities. Voom. Rez with three. Just putting the players down. That's going to be the bomb also being dropped. Maxter fighting his own duel out at B. Gets cleared after fired up, but he's the last player standing. Nobody else from God's Rain. 1v4 is what he needs to work with. Wrinkle with the duelies is going to annoy the hell out of him. And along with that, more players moving in from Temple as well as from Long. Fired Up needs to win this duel as fast as possible. That doesn't happen. Ninjas get to 12. That's going to be map point already here to start things off. God's Rain on the pick here, not finding what they wanted. The Anubis not working great for them. They've had 100% victory, yes, but this is a whole different squad that they're fighting with. The Ninjas in pyjamas. As we said, a new version of them. They've been looking solid. Uh, we wanted to see Wrinkle in action, Maxter in action, Alex and Rez feeling good with this roster, and also Blue Phoenix who's been playing with them. Do they have one more round? They had to force because this is going to be the last round. A couple of Tech Nines. Uh, Mac 10 in play. Rez again with his play at mid. It's also like uh, the thing with Anubis is like uh, there are very few teams in. Uh, in international counter strike you actually go for Anubis as a as a first map pick. Mm -hmm. you know, I think maybe a Cloud9 comes to play who are actually really good at that map. Apart from that, mo it, it's so risky because of how because you're you're usually ninety percent of the time gonna start on the C T side. You pick the map, your your opponent's gonna be picking the T side. Yeah. And if you don't get off to a good start, right? If you don't win the pistol and you're not able to start building economy, it can spiral up control. That's kinda what's happened here. I don't want to say that's the only reason. I think obviously they're being very Comprehensively outplayed here by NIP. A couple of shots coming in, and Alex will finish it off. That is going to be a very, very, very convincing, the most convincing win we've seen here thus far at the Sky Esports Masters 2024. Exist just, uh, exist just looking at his, uh, at his watch and being like, all right, guys, that might have been the fastest game we've ever had here so far today. A speed run from mm -hmm. the end, from the side of Ninjas in Pajamas and looking good, honestly, because you got to remember as well, for them, they don't really have a, a proper fifth as well either. Exactly. Right? Ringo got picked in. Uh, while Blue Phoenix has been playing for them uh, for the past few games, you know, as a standard, they, they have looked pretty good. So it's good to see that, you know, they haven't stumbled yet. They've made this super, super easy for themselves. And looking like, you know, just one map away from punching in their tickets to uh, playing against the uh, the other one of the group, which is going to be... Who was it? Boom. 
Bed boom. Yeah, I think that should be exciting. Yeah, it is going to be. I think uh, this form of ninjas in pajamas is something that we wanted to look forward to. A lot of people as well, their fans looking forward to. Uh, and even as I said, when I spoke to Max, too, he's like, I think it's time to get our uh, ninjas back in form. What everybody remembers, and maybe uh, imagine just 2014 to 2024, 10 years down the line, it happens. This with Sky Sports Masters is going to be great for the ninjas in pajamas. But yeah, on the other end, uh, looking at God's reign. We did think this is going to be a similar result out there because not much that they ha were able to do out of the Asi Asian circuit. So it is going to be a tough run for them to fight with a Swedish team like this, especially with Rinkel, who's, I think, one of the most debated topic, not just here, but everywhere around the world at this point, because I think that pick has made uh, ninjas in pajamas to where they want to be in the future. Yeah, in the future, for sure. Uh, and for the side of uh, God's reign, again, like it's, look, it's easy to, it's really easy to lose, you know, just, just crap on them saying, like, oh, yeah. they got destroyed. And yes, they did, they did get destroyed, but, all, but it's also like, telling you know when you, most of the competition due to ping or whatever has to be in in the subcontinent in, in, in south asia and you only get to play against your local opposition get and the, the ramp up it's so so different because playing like a team of nip that it was going to be hard ask anyway now can they bring it back on map number two we'll find out after this quick break everybody welcome to sky talks today we have a player with us that we are happy to talk about because he's going to be bringing in a lot more insights from the international region it's going to be maxter who's going to be playing for nip in our sky esports masters 2024 hey maxter how are you doing i'm um, uh, really good actually thanks for asking how are you i'm doing good as well thank you so much for asking but before we start things off right i want the traditions out uh, i want you to quickly introduce yourself who where and uh, who you play for uh, my name is max johnson uh, also known as maxter in this scene and i'm from sweden and i'm playing for uh, the legendary organization ninja sim Thomas. This is happy to see you and talk to you. Now, I want to ask you, right, we've seen a lot of tournaments going around, but when you heard there's a Sky Sports Masters and when you guys got the invite, it's going to be a 350,000 US dollars tournament. What was the reaction from your end and your team's end? Uh, I mean, when they got the invite, I wasn't a part of the team yet. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I didn't really get the, their reaction. The second that I got the got the call that I'm going to play, uh, I was obviously really happy. I mean, it's, uh, it's a big tournament and uh, we love to attend all of 
of the big tournaments. So awesome. we, we really appreciate the invite and we're happy to play. I think uh, we are more than happy to have you here because we wanted to see all these international teams uh, and that too, NIP. And we've seen a lot of people here in India also being fans of NIP and that you're going to be playing. I'll go to come to that question where you mentioned it. You came to the roster now. Uh, but before that, what do you think the chances are of uh, your team over the other teams who are also invited and qualified? How do you fa think that fares? I mean, we we are a really new team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we won't have as much t as much time as the other teams to practice and uh, prepare ourselves for the, for the tournament, uh, and that's how it is uh, building a new roster. But uh, I think what's uh, like what is good for us is that uh, we have a new lineup, a lot uh, more like new energy. Everyone is hyped. Everyone really wants to play, wants to win. And uh, I mean, there is no you can't anticipate us, right, from uh, the other team's perspective. So they don't know what they're gonna face. They don't know how we're gonna play. And uh, I mean, that uh, that could be good for us. But uh, also the negative thing is that we are a new team, so we hadn't has we hadn't had as much time and as much practice together so um, I think yeah, I think we will do good uh, we will uh, we will have a really good lineup with a lot of individual skill so um, uh, I think that we I think that we could uh, have good chances of winning everything looking actually. forward to it but now there's a transition like as you said right you moved from the academy lineup now you're going to play for the actual lineup but there's a transition that also happened from CS go to CS2 right how has this changed for you in the scene and uh, what do you think now teams are still struggling for. Uh, transition for me was pretty good, I think. I mean, uh, uh, coming from like a younger age, I think it's uh, a big chance. Uh, like it's a new game, so everyone is uh, big, like, everyone begins from square one, right? Correct. So uh, I think the one that worked hardest will uh, succeed. And uh, I have been working really hard since uh, CS2 got released. And uh, now I got the chance to play for the main team. And I'm really happy about that. And uh, I mean, it's hard to say what, um, what teams are struggling with yet. I mean, if I had a solution for it, I, I would fix it and uh, like yeah, be really good and uh, our team would be insane if we know what the, the new meta would be. But uh, I mean, it's it's a lot of uh, I mean, it's a lot of team play and uh, it's a lot of individual skill that's necessary right now, I think. So I think that with our new lineup, we're going to be really dangerous. I think it's going to be exciting to see you guys playing from the main event. But now let's get to know you a little more better. That's what we want to know from this discussion. Uh, when did you start playing CS? Where did it all start from for you? Uh, everything started when uh, I was really young. I have all. Mm -hmm. I have You're all still the young at 19. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I was when I was a kid then. Mm -hmm. I guess um, I have an older brother uh, who has been playing. He played 1.6 back then. I mean, I I wanted to watch my brother, and he was playing with all of his friends and so on. And I saw that they had a lot of fun. I was sitting next to him, watching him all the time. I could sit there for hours and just watch him play. And uh, at one point, I got a own computer. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it was CS:GO that I played. But uh, I started playing, and I had a lot of fun with friends, and I developed pretty fast, I guess. I uh, started playing with his friends and uh, then uh, I started playing some uh, Face It, uh, Switch Pro League and uh, then it all started, right? <laughs> Back everyone to Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. My name is Blair. Joining me, as always, is going to be Lucifer. And that was uh, basically a smackening laid down by uh, by NIP on God's Reign. You know, of course, there's the entire conversation to be had that God's Reign they have the standard situation there. Unfortunately, Revan couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, I won't lie; it, it felt very 
disappointing, very tepid mm -hmm. of a CT side. I never really saw them, uh, you know, try anything aggressive or anything probably co uh, coordinated coming on the CT side, where it felt like NIP were just getting away with murder every single time. Yeah, and we spoke about this, right, before uh, we came back in uh, to this segment of... Uh, trying to figure out maybe if there was a chance is that the only push that they were trying to do on the CT side was just A at all times and that was easily being read out uh, and one time that R2B2 that we right now see in front of screen that was the only round and after that every time uh, ninjas made sure they had somebody as a guard kept either down at mid or towards B long making sure that that flank doesn't happen that backstabbing situation never comes into play and I think that's where gods in once they kind of lost that positioning or thought that they could never go for a backstab they completely stopped doing it. Mid, we spoke about it. They had two players down at mid. We never saw an aggro play coming down at mid. Rarely was it contested. I think yeah. Bhavi once tried his approach through window, but That's did not it. find a kill also as well. Yeah, and like plays like that from Fahad, just walking through the smoke, like trying to catch a timing. Um, not something you usually get away with, and I think they were getting punished for that time and time again. I, I take a look at his A hit, for example, number of times that the A defenders, who were trying to be a little aggressive, were just getting picked apart by Wrinkle, by Maxter. Uh, just just a bit of a nightmare for the side of uh, God's Reign. But also, yeah, just to add on to what we, what we touched upon earlier, the fact that, you know, they were so... Um, like, like for example, when you're playing mid, just giving up the complete control towards mid, uh, not something which you can afford to do. Where NIP didn't have to expend any resources, just you know, coming into its mid. You can see um, Rez just waltzing in, destroying everyone. And listen, when Alex has a KD of 3.2, the 16 kills, you know that uh, it was a pretty easy time for NIP. Uh, heading into Ancient, though, it is a map for NIP, and let's be real, you know, it's going to be very. It's going to be almost an impossible ask for God's Reign to take us to Nuke, but uh, if you were to switch it up, if I were to ask you, like, you know, you're the coach right now, you've got to talk to uh, talk to the side of God's Reign, what do you what do you tell them here? I think um, we spoke about this in terms of what they could do better. I think talking, right? Uh, we saw a lot of communication just coming out from either one of the players after a single round. Uh, it felt like they were already long lost or yes, individually yeah. felt a little kind of kept they were trying to play safe, to be honest. Uh, at certain points, we were like, let them come to us, we'll try to fight it out. Ninjas were like, we're ready for it. And at positions they were taking so much control, they were forcing the side of gods. I think if they could do something better, it's going to be first making sure that they talk to each other, set up a play and try to bring it to fruition. If that happens, then maybe they get start pushing further even looking forward to more rounds. Otherwise, I think this is going to just cascade multiple times on Ancient as well. Yeah, this is just rough, right? Like 18 kills uh, combined for the side of God's Reign and for uh, NIP. I mean, <laughs> Alex and 16, uh, just, you know, just put it out there. Alex and 16 kills, God's Reign combined, just 8 kills. Sorry, 18 kills in total. So, uh, the individuals weren't able to get much. They weren't able to get fired up at all, no pun intended. I'm sorry about that. Uh, not my best work. But uh, yeah, well, heading to Ancient, what I would personally like to see mm -hmm. from uh, God's Reign, especially, I'm assuming they're going to be starting on the CT side over here, would be be a little bit more disruptive, right? Like, yeah. uh, if you can hawk back to the game we saw from Bed Boom, for example, you know, just be a little bit in your face. and be, Don't Correct. be afraid to take fights. Don't be afraid to, you know, just uh, kind of disrupt what NIP is going to be uh, doing to you. Also, kind of helps to try and get some kills as well, you know, trying to get a blood flowing. What worries me a little bit for God's Reign is because it was such a, a, a lopsided battle where the rounds weren't even close, so I didn't mm -hmm. feel like even the players had a chance to really kind of warm up into the game, so uh, they need a very quick reset heading into this map number two. Yeah, and as you mentioned, right, keep trying to hit it, and even if it fails, Try a different approach, but don't stop. I think that's what happened in Anubis after they found that one round with R2B2, and after that, immediately getting stopped, they decided, okay, I think we need to kind of take a stop. And it was only Finn along with either Yume or somebody else trying to make an approach out of A main, and it was failing at all times because that was the only aggression that ninjas could always see, and they were able to shut it down. And I hope this time they kind of keep making that aggression but in different positions at all times even if it fails they might work it but as we initially spoke about this point right this is not a team that has been fighting with these international circuit teams for a long time they've been have it they had or, a fight or with ever. Ocean or, or ever, ever actually, yeah. yeah they had one with Oceania they had one with an Indonesian team but that again comes to the Asia and APAC circuit uh, whereas coming into the Europe side of it or even the North American circuit side of it they've not had a lot of experience or ever as you mentioned so it's going to be tough with them they have to kind of take it into 
mind that it's going to be tough for them, but let's make the best out of it. And if they do it, maybe we end up seeing a little more action coming in from God's Reign as we start this pistol down on Ancient. Alright, here we go. Nip. Around the world we go. A lot of noise being made towards Jag, but the read is on. Boom. Spots out Yum rather. Spots out a player. It taps away, but Blue Phoenix opening it up. Fired up's gonna be taken down and uh, Yum getting gushed. I'm not sure if it's Boom or you, because uh, on HLTV it is you. you. I thought it's Boom. I'm gonna stick with HLTV. I'm, I'm guessing it's you, man. Oh, 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 flurry of kills! And Rez, is, uh, his reign of terror continues. NIP, wasting no time there. Just a uh, fast play out from B double doors, running out to its mid. And even though God's reign were aware of where the bomb plant was gonna be coming in from, not able to quite stop it. Also, you can uh, you can just uh, download the One Expert app and. Uh, can use the code one X Sky Esports to get a hundred thirty dollar bonus on your first deposit. Be responsible, boys and girls. In the meantime, full eco here from God's Rain. No time. I like to call this what I call every single time when I'm playing this pistol. Alright guys, just gonna rush up mid and maxter. Oh, you want the ace? Put me the first ace. Oh, and uh, blue phoenix. <laughs> oh you rat. Steals it away. But money in the bank. Four kills. That's uh that's $2,400. <laughs> you had to kind of be pretty happy with that Maxter. Bit of a smile. But, uh, but I've been enjoying this. Uh, the uh, I, I won't lie. When, when Maxter got picked up by NIP, I was, I was like, uh, yeah, you know, all right. Nothing too exciting for me. But looking at the results they're finding here, it's it's uh, not this game, but like you know, even against, against some uh, some other teams online, it's been looking very promising. It looks like there seems to be, you know, that, that not just new blood, but like, Certain sense of optimism and excitement mm -hmm. coming in from the team as Lobby. Take the fight, Nade, sail in. That's a nice opening pick. Mid control being arrested here by the CTs. They've opted to just relinquish A for the time being. Just gambling on the fact that it is going to be a fight towards mid. But because of the heavy presence from the CTs at mid, NIP going to be charging in towards B. Pavi will be found. R2B2. Alone towards the site, but his timing for Finn could be big, a bit of a labored spray, but he's gonna find him. And now Maxter and Alex left in a two versus four. That A bomb site, full control for Maxter, but how long can he keep the CTs at bay, especially considering the fact that he only has a Mac 10 to work with? Maybe he holds the corner just like he's doing now, and maybe a little trigger discipline. We did see it uh, in one of the series earlier yesterday, but I think R2B2 kind of has the read about it. Making sure that doesn't happen. In the meantime, the other players are already pushed up. They have donut control now. R2P2 doesn't. Wait. He tries to hard clear the corner, but before that, Maxter was quick. But now Maxter's position is known. But he's worried. You might be close for him. He doesn't yet swing that triple. But once he swings, he finds. But Finn is quick on that trade. And now Alex is down to bell health at 14. If he tries to go for a plant, there could be a quick swing and maybe even a takedown. But they let him get that plant. Meaning, even if Alex plays down, that's going to be extra cash coming in. He does go down, but God's Rain find the first. Good, but almost about to lose its way if Max had found a little more. Well, um, we did see this in Anubis as well, by the way. God's Rain, mm -hmm. on their first buy, they managed to win it, but after that, they weren't, <laughs> weren't able to get a second round on board. So hopefully, things are going to be different this time around here on Ancient. A bit expensive considering it was a 4 versus 2 coming in from uh, NIP. Just two players surviving. Uh, but for NIP, you got to remember like the amount of money being made earlier on, especially Maxter with the for the 4K on the on the Mac 10. He's going to pick up the AWP for Wrinkle. For AKs. Again, the heavy mid control being exerted here by the CTs. Nades raining in. So much utility. And the smoke's an obscure division. Boost being attempted here. Maxter, as the smoke starts to dissipate, there's a time limit on this res. Amongst the smoke, fired up in the meantime, finds Blue Phoenix as the boot was spotted out. And Res needs to be careful if Bobby's gonna find him. This heavy aggression towards mid. Wrinkle, is he aware? Yume, very close by, aggression towards ramp as well from the CTs. And 
And Alex and Yume together. Alex finds the first. They should be aware of the second kill as well. And Wrinkle finds R2B2. As Alex finds two out of nowhere and fired up. Now left alone in a 1v3. He can catch the bomb. The timing. I think he's been seen. I'm not sure he got spotted. I don't think he was. Because we still have a player, Wrinkle, with the AWP looking towards CT spot. The timing is everything. And Maxer is going to find fired up. That was just a great sequence of kills coming in from Alex again. Two huge kills where it looked like God's Reign that they had full control there. And IP to turn it around. I think they invested a little too much control towards uh, the lane and just got stuck over there after losing a fight at Jaguar. He's going to immediately force God's Reign to get to Pestle right now. Again, fired up with the Zeus, but on the other end, Ninjas. This time, free mid control without any contention of any util. This should give them the idea that there should be an eco round coming through. Donut is where fired up is going to achieve the spot. Been getting spam. Did lose 40 on his health. Fired up in the meantime gets cleared off at Donut. Yeah, he's not been having a good time with uh, with the Zeus of his train, mm -hmm. so. Been found out. It's not rain. Hit the side. All right, Wrinkle. That's good by you. Okay. Not a great Molotov, but it should be fine. Yeah. It should be okay. I'm not going to hold him. He's been playing amazing, getting some amazing kills, and now Max with to seal the deal. That's going to be a four for the Ninjas. God's Rain, that was an eco round. But as of now, Ninjas comfortable in getting their rounds, pushing ahead. Whereas God's Rain, not happy faces, no smiles across, uh, looking completely flustered at this point. I know they want to get around maybe a little more. They also need to understand a little change up in that approach. Mid aggression working out good. They've been finding the kills. But they cannot be repeated multiple times. They're trying to do it again, but this time they layer it different. They just put down utils rather than battle the damage on themselves. But R2B2, that's a quick find from Wrinkle. Yeah, but it's going to be a fast play coming in towards A here. Wrinkle, the sole player, the sole lurk, so to speak, towards B. And I think uh, NIP, they figured it out. They know the gods are going for this heavy presence towards this middle part of the map. You, good enough for one. A 3v3 here at Blue Phoenix, barely alive. Barely alive and two points of health. Piece of shrapnel. He's going to be taken out. Temple is going to be the point of egress for the CT. Coming in. Oh no, Finn walks in through the smoke. It's not ideal as Alex picks up fire up as well and he is aware where the final player is. Rez, tap in the head. 5-1 to one for NIP. There's a quick trade coming through while they did drop the orb, but yeah. After this, the retake approach just on top of one flash which they used for Temple was not completely successful and Finn... Just trying to push out of the smoke. Fired up did once on Anubis, failed, and now Finn tries to do, and that also doesn't work. And and, and they had they had time as well. I'm not yeah. sure why they had to go for the uh, just pushing through the smoke. They just wait a few seconds, relying so heavily on on catching the timings is not exactly the formula for consistent success. And ninjas are wary about it. But yeah, they're, ju they're just ready for it. Just like default, you, you just watch the smokes. Now. Barrage nades, bring them up towards the blue bomb site. NIP, should be aware, should be just these pistols. Finn, tucked in, should be cleared. <laughs> Rez. He's having a hell of a time here. Molotov flashes raining in and they are just getting methodically deleted from the cave jag position. And yeah, this one should be a wrap up here. Six to one. Seems inevitable. At this point, they don't have to be worried about investing a lot of forces together towards the site itself. Therefore, as you saw, Max did position himself, finds one, now it's up to fire up. But this round, there's nothing much to be found. He's just going to keep the armor that he has, take the Kevlar to the next round along with a 5 7 on hand. And just know this was an eco round going on hunt for this. Maybe an extra bit of cash, but they're flush with it. Nothing much to be worried about. But Kotsrin, good start again. Uh, as we saw, picking up one round. That was the same on Anubis, but after that, as you rightly said, that one we did see on Anubis, that one has been found here on Ancient as well. But from there on, what more?
What changes did they make? That double ramp push was kind of interesting, but they did not time it perfectly. They did not set up for it as well. Yeah, like uh, the, the timing of that was a little off because they had a player towards uh, towards heaven as well. Mm -hmm. And if the peak had happened simultaneously, it could potentially have uh, netted them the round. But yeah, a little bit off in the timing. I, I did like what we saw initially, the, the aggressive mid plays coming out, but yeah. the double up set up on Ancient, something I haven't seen in a while. Um, they've done this when uh, Raven was there, so not a fan. It's not really meta, and it's yeah. it's really, especially when it comes to retakes, it's it's so so troublesome. We used to see the double up early in the you know when Ancient had just got introduced back in CS:GO. We saw a few teams going for it, but it's not something you see that often right now. In fact, I would rather have either fired up or you. You know, have the little bit of extra bit of utility, right? Like, you know, one of them can just stick with the A1. You can have a, you know, an incendiary, a couple of extra flashes, a couple of extra nades or whatnot. But all right, double up setup. Let's see. Let's see what they where to go with this. Fire up's not completely playing the op at all times these days. He was the initial primary offer back in uh, Revan when he was playing, but once yep. he came to God's in along with Revan joining it, that did change. Right now, as you said, double up setup. Where does it go? One deep attempt. Full late control. That should have been heard. Alright, alright, Rez. Easy there, buddy. I mean, he's been getting those uh, Jaguar frags for free at all times, and he, he's ready for it. He's expecting that position at all times and winning that chill outright. Gods in need to change that up a little tad bit, otherwise Rez is going to always find one frag at Jaguar and then maybe even walk away. But look at this again, prepping up for a ramp push, but Alex is predicting it. Nice angle that he had at the doors, finds one, now looking forward to push, nice flash, early swing at the right time. He does while the player is blinded. That's the second flash coming in, that's going to be from Rez, and they're good for it. Maybe a third here, no says you. That op all the way from long does get pushed, but look at all the players. Yep. All that Alex was selling was a ruse. The plant is going to be coming down at A, and there's nobody there. The double op all move there. Yo, the Phoenix. Get night fired up, and yeah, that that uh, the ops getting absolutely nothing done. And if ancient was the oper operating table, then uh, NIP they're the surgeons dissecting God's Rain's defense here. I think the only successor of finding was his initial mid control coming in. Yes. Uh, but apart from and yeah, the, and the following round is where round number four where the double ramp push didn't quite pan out. Alex Alex getting a nice double kill. But apart from that, they've been extremely just super passive. And if you look at the the money as well, it's starting to build up. They're feeling a little bit more brazen, looking to take it off away from here. Yes. Should be able to survive. And indeed he will. But that's about it for the rest of his teammates. Yeah, Max off but it's not it's not much at all. And Alex has been getting kills from that position so many times. Like it's ridiculous. Just patience. And not really seeing much utility. I don't like it. You know, where the double door smokes. Like you, you have the util, right? Like you, you had a full buy round, gone could have gone for the smokes. Uh but just a lack of overall variety and utility from the CTs and I mean, it goes to show, you know, maybe it's not because of the map. Fast play coming in towards A, and there's no one there. One at Donut, but that's all fired up with an MP9 who's already smoked off. Another player to help him out, that's going to be Hobby. But before they get any glimpse, Alex again running out. But only good for one this time. They regain control of CT, but do they have chances of a retake? A re-smoke towards Donut, okay. but Wrinkle and Rez, they're just cleaning shop at this point. There's nothing left here. Maybe some cheeky exit frags, if they possibly do. But look at the amount of times that they're just smoking donut, knowing that there are players there. I mean, they, 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 they haven't really needed to use any of the utility as well, right, and Wrinkle? Well, Rez is there. <laughs> well, that's just going to be fired up, left alone. MP9 should be able to exit, but what else can he do? Terrorists win. And, uh, yeah. He does have cash. The, I, mean, I mean, the radius is kind of ridiculous on this map. I won't lie, the bomb radius, but still. Yeah, I mean, it's, he has cash. It's fine. But you're right. Like, it's, you know, it's a half buy coming in. Uh, another buy 
this time no double up setup. And this is when I want to see something similar to what we saw in round number three and round number four, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, some sort of aggression. Uh, go f go for an A mains control. Just be a little bit more brazen. Like you have yeah. nothing to lose. You're, you're the massive underdogs. You're down eight and one. You lost the first round thirteen and one. Just, just try something a little bit more aggressive in your face. This is a good combo there. Good utility from the B players, although never mind. Maxter still finds a couple. R2B2, a delayed kill on towards Alex. So it's a three versus three. NIP now is regrouping. You can see the A look routing back through its T spawns. It looks like it's going to be a B hit. And Finn, he's going to have to stand up and deliver. But he's backing off. I'm okay with this. They're going to be prodding towards mid. You have to play from Donut as well, looking to gather a little bit of information. But ah, Blue Phoenix is tucked in. Yuma actually spots him. Now, do they think it's going to be A is the question. I think they should read into it because they've cleared so much and uh, Yum has not heard anything with his op. He's still stationed at Donut and slowly retaking control from lane. And with the plan coming down, the call is going to be there. That it is going to be a B plan coming through. But look at what ninjas are doing. They're taking CT control. They've already known that mid control has been lost, meaning that there should be a backstab coming through. Both of them stationed at long, smoking off ramp, and that is going to be brilliant coming in from their end. They do try and smoke out long as well. Flop great. Will they find value? Max the right in ahead of it. it. Does get cleaned off, and now it's all up to wrinkle on a 1v3 situation here. The bomb through the smoke, getting diffused. But he's trying to spam, doesn't connect a single one. Now oh! with a knife, he gets one on R2B2. Oh no. <laughs> the round's done. <laughs> oh, he just legs it. He just runs in with a knife and gets a shank. Oh, <laughs> that, that sucks. <laughs> God, yeah. Ray, what a clutch of wrinkle, though. Holy hell. They just thought, when they thought maybe this is a defuse that we're going to have, he's not connecting the shot, he just runs in. Well, what do you say about that? Another half pie here, trying to spare us around with the utils. A couple upgraded pistols, but what do they have to say here? Maybe a stack in one of the sides, trying to play the odds out. But no, but but but, but NIP just being so just so methodical, right? They're yeah. not they're not necessarily just. Um, Running on into with the side, is slowing it down even in a round like this, for example. We can see we they have uh, Blue Phoenix just like waiting towards A. Alex just finds two running into the side as well. And uh, yeah, they just have to smoke it off. But Alex like, screw it, I'm just going for more. Did he spot him? Yes, he did. And just like that, round number 10 for the Ninjas. Fired up, MP9, can find one weapon as an upgrade here, that's going to be Blue Phoenix, but this is what ninjas have always done, ninjas in pyjamas will always either have somebody out at A, majority towards mid, but right as of now they already have two players who are exploring, looking forward to the loss surviving, but I'm not going to get the opportunity, fired up just a single kill so far in the 10 rounds that we have and this is going to be the end of the 11th as well as they get to 10. Terrorists win. 10 to 1, a similar spree or a similar run that the ninjas in pyjamas are having just like how we saw on Anubis and doesn't seem to be much of a change here. Uh, we did ask for a little aggression but that aggression became a little repetitive uh, which again became used to for ninjas to fight around it mm -hmm. and bring back the rounds yep especially that that 1v3 from uh from wrinkle i think that was yeah. the the proverbial final straw there all right the final round again mid aggression this time, ninjas don't even contest for that, except for the lane, where Rez again trying his luck. It's always been Finn to falter, and the spam has given away oh, his the position. Oh, the timing. Oh, that's just too easy for Rez. He's aware. Bobby able to get the trade, but I don't think Rez cares at this point. He's like, all right, man, I got, I got my kill. I gave you the info. You know, just one in K, one should be in B. And now it's Link back towards A. Double up. And both at A. One playing towards the box and another one at Donut. Fired up. Tags up. What's he got? Oh. Oh. 
Oh. Somehow makes it. Not to survive. <laughs> Eventually gets cleaned <laughs> off. He doesn't quite make it. Oh, R2B to able to reply back. And Farb's been having a, a mare of a time on this map. That's Voom. Yum, beg your pardon. It's actually Yum, ladies and gentlemen. A bit of a HUD uh, mistake there. Should be hopefully rectified for the next game. And NIP. Oh, they're tryharding so much. <laughs> they're tryharding so much. I love this, also, I hate it. I'm like, guys, like, you know. You're 10 1. Alex. You're 10 1. <laughs> you're 10 1, guys. I mean, Bobby, does he have anything? No. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> 10-1 and now to 11-1 and they're still trying to make sure that they break everything from God's Day. Not even give them the slightest chance. As I said, try harding. Yeah, like, <laughs> I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's like, alright guys, we're 10-1 up, we're on 3v2, okay. Uh, I push in towards mid, red, just rotate back towards B. But, jokes aside, like, you know, this is NIP looking... Uh, it, it, it's they seem very comfortable, and obviously they yes. should be comfortable. I think you know they're getting away. Uh, I mean, they're obviously punishing God's Rain for a lot of the plays, or rather the lack of the plays. Pretty, pretty much what we saw uh, from them on on Anubis as well, right? But I want to take nothing away. This is a clean-looking NIP, and if looking at some of the other teams in this tournament, I'm talking about teams like Aurora. I'm talking about teams like you know Bed Boom Nine. Sorry, not Nine. Ends. X Nine. Beg your pardon. Uh, I, I feel like um, this could p potentially be interesting, right? You know, if mm -hmm. they continue to play like this, uh, with the caveat that this is against uh, the Valkyrie to stand in, it is exciting. Play coming in towards A. Wrinkle making contact. He will fall, but Alex still standing. Trades are back and forth. A 3v3. Probably holding Temple for now, but the CT needs to be still stopped. But through the smoke, Max, the Phoenix also finds one, and now it's all down to you. They've not even gotten the plant. They were so worried about the push. Yum does stop at Temple. That's going to be Blue Phoenix down. However, doesn't have the bomb out in the open for the CTs to take complete control of it. And look at Rez with the dual ace. However, he fails the reload. And this is an opportunity here to swing. Maxter in a 1v1 situation has been tagged up. But does he win the duel? No. Yum, a big clutch coming in here for God's Reign. And maybe this might be the last ray of hope that they use. That's going to put the second. It's not going to be the same scoreline that we saw on Anubis. And Yum, the stand-in coming in clutch for them, big time. Yeah, but, but NIP, they're, they're, not, they're clearly not phased at all. Yeah. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for the force. And no, all right. It looked like Maxter was just going to go for, uh, just going to go for the buy, but it uh, looks like Alex is like, all right, guys, just, just eco this one up. We're going to have a full buy come the next. I'm going to just close this one out. So God's Reign, at least one better. Uh, Alright, a couple a of casualties, just the USPs, but uh, surely, surely this should be round number three. Yeah, there we go, bomb planted. No armor, just a Galil and a smoke. Surely. They've picked up two weapons here, Nocturne as well as a Galil, as you said. And they are trying to go for a retake here. You again right behind enemy lines. Previously it was a 1v3, Bobby and R2B to pick one each. They deny that short push and now that Mac 10 is just gonna be a Mac 10 that Maxter just takes away. But yeah, I think this has been a save. So Maxter, if he finds a kill on this SMG, he's gonna get 600 in cash. Try to be a ninja over there. Yeah, no Standing time. true to his name, but yeah, no kid. No kit, no time. And <laughs> thankfully, God's Rain don't fall for it. They will survive. The will is gone. But it will be the buy coming in here for Ninjas. God's Rain, a little bit of. Uh, seems to be a little bit, a slight bit of life in them. Then, all yeah. right, guys, you know, we've strung a couple of runs together here. Didn't lose too many players against the pistols. But now this is the, uh, the real test. Wrinkle with the AWP. M4s for everyone else. And I won't lie, I I'd have to be literally overdosing on Hopium if I expect Godrin to come back here. But at least we can put up a little bit of a, a semblance of a fight. Yes. Right? It, it would at least help their confidence heading into uh, their lower bracket matchup. This has to be a takeaway for them of some sorts. A learning for them. Yeah, they've never played I in a matchup like this against complete odds. None of it favoring them. In a team as such. Maxter, with control, playing it slow, knowing that this is going to be a buy round here for ninjas in pyjamas. They're also taking control, big time. The op station, 
making sure it's having its eyes on the doors and that's where the bomb is therefore they have to be wary maybe make put up a smoke and even have a read that if they've not taken control anywhere not put down util towards lane there could be somebody who's already pushed out that's the final smoke being used by res as well for for elbow so now nip they have to hold on to these positions Maxter, Rez, uh, they're going to peel away. They have such good positions, though. Now, the thing is, for God's Reign, they have a lot of utility to work with. Mm -hmm. But time is slowly getting whittled away. Maxter, still waiting. He doesn't have to worry about Heaven. He's got his teammates there. And I like the double push happening towards uh, A main, but beautiful flashes from Harvey. Finn's going to find a double. Great nade onto Wrinkle as well. And all of a sudden, this is brilliantly done from God's Reign. Very patient work. Now Rinko finds the first. Finn will fall, but the B bomb site has been claimed by the T's as Bobby finds Blue Phoenix, and that should be the call for the save. Unlucky for Bobby, but Alex and Rinko, they're gonna call this one a day. That's very well constructed from God's Reign. That actually might be the best round I've seen from them the entire game so far. They're very super, very patient. Great finds from Finn as well, and a flashbang, you know, taking down both uh, Maxter playing towards mid and Rez. Lovely stuff as they will find a fourth, keeping three alive as well. Not too, not too sure about the hunt here, boys. Uh, not too sure about yeah. the hunt. Yeah, money's not the best. I mean. 900 on R2P2 over there, just a 50 on fired up, and as you said, should go for the hunt and finally they to put a stop to it. God's didn't get there for then, as you said, the hopium, a little bit, does come back through for all of our audience as well. I'll be looking forward to this Indian squad making a little more damage on the side of ninjas, but ninjas finally call a timeout. They want to pump the brakes and make sure that God's rain are done on ancient. They don't give them a lot more to work with. But who knows, if they get a little more as well to work with, they will be more than happy. God's Reign, so far, as you said, very well constructed round. Let the side of ninjas use their utils. And once they knew that the clock is running out, maybe they've run out of all their utils. The flash, the entry, the read that they would have lane control to also keep an eye on the ramp and then move in. Very well done so far to find that. A small step. On his comeback trail, as unlikely as it seems. But that was convincing. Look. There's one saying, right? One step on the moon, a big leap for mankind. Is a little more hopium to push. Fair enough. You know, you go for it. Uh, <laughs> but it is true, you know, every comeback starts with the, the first step. Uh, faster play coming into its mid here from God's Reign. Not really facing any resistance from the CTs. Just a couple of smokes in play here for Alex and for Rez. MP9, couple of digs. In play, now it's with a little cheeky boost. Fired up. Molotov to clear it out. Is the two gonna come in as questions? The flash is gonna be easily dodged. Oh, alright! Alex! He tags both over there. Yeah, that's, that's a great transfer, but he will finally be found out by Finn. But Maxter with the D finds Finn. Immediately picks up the uh, oh, the A1. Rez almost finding Yume as well. It's a 3v2. Feels so uncomfortable. But now they know where both the players are. Maxer and Wrinkle. Gonna sweep up. He's just gonna be committing towards B. Alright. Smoke's gonna bloom. Molder for the back of the side as they're going to be legging it back towards oh, A, but oh, Wrinkle, he's got the read. This is so well done. Oh, the flick doesn't quite land. He's going to go for the re peek, and Yume's going to punish him for it. Oh, this is messy for both the teams, and Wrinkle missing a bit of a sitter there. He had just the perfect read. All he needed to do was land the shot, but now God's Reign given a chance, and Pavi full positioning. Doesn't Ooh. get the kill. Maxter now 1v1 versus Yume. Yume is just down to one, and he's holding Temple, playing around that. Maxter doesn't have a kit here, and if he plays it even further, this round is not in his hand. And I think he might... Okay, he's actually going for it, right with this. The time. Uh, position known right now, tried to fake it over there, and uh, it seems like Yume is not going for it. He knows he's just on a single sliver of health, and baits it out, wastes the time, and then swings out. That should be giving God's Reign a fifth. Looked a little odd over there uh, when they tried to re-approach B, knowing the player's possession. Lose one, 
and uh, i think they'll go they're going to be thankful that rinkle missed his first opportunity and the second when he peaked and yum immediately capitalized otherwise this round could have been done and ninjas could have found their 12th right there yeah but this is again just a uh a bit of a, a bonus round, right, for for NIP with around yes. the save rifle. So, so a lot of damage being dealt. Everyone dying as well for God's rain. So the money being kept pretty honest, but the uh, glimmers of a, of a bit of a comeback here, a little, a little bit of hope. And you know what they say, hope dies last. Lurk smoke is going to be broken up by Maxter. They notice no one behind it. Haven't seen anyone towards elbow, so early control towards mid. And this, is, this could be the right call coming in for God's Rain. That's an empty A bomb site, but there is a window. This, there is a timing on this. They need to make a little bit of haste, and haste will indeed be made. Blue Phoenix, please be careful. He gets pushed here. The spacing isn't great. However, Blue Phoenix finds one. Maxter finds two. It's a TK, but doesn't really matter. Oh, Alex catching fired up as well, and it's all gone wrong. Yume left alone in a one versus four, and he will be found by Wrinkle. The spacing was so off coming in from from God's Raid. And honestly, at, at that point, when you have the bomb site, you, you see the player, you have so much utility to work with. You just lob in a couple of Molotovs. Let them have Donut, it's fine. You know, just lob in utility, make them feel super uncomfortable. You have aim in control, you have the side, you can just, you know, just, just hold on to it. Instead, they push up towards Donut. The spacing was so off. Yeah. And just free kills, and despite the TK. NIP, they keep four alive. Yeah, the only death they suffered was a TK, so that is so unfortunate. And now, because of how many players they lost in the previous round, this could be it. This could be all she wrote for God's Reign, just to survive. But it is looking very, very unlikely. AK being recovered, and that's going to be R2B2 with a flash. You, but the position. Oh, Alex doesn't win that duel. That's going to be a nice find. They might just get the plan, but it's going to be a tough 2v3 to fight with. But R2B2 is making it work. Clears off cave, smokes it off for now, and brings it down to a 2v2 situation. No weapon yet to be recovered, but slowly it's going to be Wrinkle who's trying to push up. He has the AWP, and he wins that. You. Immediate trade coming in from R2B2. He brings it down to another 1v1 situation here. Needs to win the duel, but that is going to be the end. Maxter seals the deal, does have the kit, will get the defuse, and that is going to be 13 5. A little hope coming through. Nice try in that round as well to bring it from a 2v4 to a 1v1 situation towards the end. But yeah. yeah, it was not far long left. Yeah, R2B2 there, you know, he, he knew his position was compromised, so he was trying to be a little bit more aggressive in that 1v1 because mm -hmm. obviously in that case the CTs would have the uh, the upper edge for NIP though no, no real celebrations they get the job done very convincingly a bit of a uh, a cosmetic comeback as uh, people like to say coming in from God's Rain but at least it might instill perhaps a little bit more faith you know in themselves because uh, yeah. Anubis was obviously a complete blowout and we did see a couple of uh, pretty cool rounds coming in from from the side of God's Rain on this T-Sub, but make no mistake, that was NIP just running away with it, uh, looking very, very comfortable, and should be very warmed up heading into their matchup, I think a day after tomorrow, in which they should be going up, uh, I do believe, Bedroom. against Bedroom. Yeah, that should be an exciting game. It, it is going to be. I think uh, on one end, uh, for God's Rain, it's going to be about they fought with ninjas in pajamas, uh, a, a circuit that they would want to explore a lot more. Now they have an idea about what they would want to do. And especially after finding uh, those rounds until 5, right? Especially after also showing a better T half than we expected. Setups coming through, nice trades, nice fight, how they took control of things. Some a little wary, yes. Uh, but I think does give them the idea what more they would have to do. Maybe to get closer of a map victory. But on the other end, as you said, ninjas, they might be warmed up for what's coming up next. And especially after seeing what Bedroom did against Pick. But on the start of things, I think what happened, the CD completely fell flat. They did find one in between, but that repetitive aggression down at mid was already read from ninjas. They were ready for it. They were playing that bit slower against it, counter into it to it, counter, counter into it to it to it. And um, from there on, it was just uh, ninjas taking the T completely drift against God's Rain without giving them much to work with. Uh, however, ninjas lost a little bit of that control when they gave a couple of those rounds, especially of the way God's Rain executed on the T half of it. Yep. And I think that does 
kind of give us the idea that there might be a little more life left, but it's not going to be easy because from here the journey is moved to the losers bracket. They're going to be having a tougher time over there, and I think waiting for them is already big. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and also, again, you know, the oh, this round man, oh, this round hurt so much. Uh, but yeah, it, just the fact that when it comes to uh, for God's Rain, obviously, you know, you're playing with that fifth, you're playing with someone you haven't really played much with either in four you. So you know, all in all, a uh, commendable effort coming in at least in the second half here. I feel like uh, the T side here on Ancient was the only time we really saw them kind of, kind of seemingly come alive, where some of their ideas were bearing a little bit of fruit, they were being very methodical and whatnot. Obviously this clutch by being won by you really helped uh, matters out as well. Uh, but yeah, I think Anubis was a bit of a non-starter. I don't necessarily think it's only because of the... Uh, I don't think necessarily only because of the uh, you know, the, the, the stand-in situation, but mm -hmm. overall it, it felt like the, the calling and whatnot was very, very timid, so to speak, at least in Anubis. It played so safe, so very from behind, giving up, giving a lot of respect, a lot of space for the side of uh, NIP to work with and on, on that first map, and we saw that in the second uh, map as well, but then once they started waking up a little bit, they were looking a little bit more confident. Maxter continuing his uh, his good form here so far. He's been looking very good, you know, just farming a little bit of kills, uh, stat padding a little bit of his HLTB page, and also watching Wrinkle Alex just kind of warm up and continue this uh, recent streak of form that the Ninjas have been finding themselves in. Yeah, I think this is going to be, as we said, a structure for ninjas in pyjamas as well that they would want to get back into. The name that everybody is known for and it might be in the right direction. They're still looking forward to finding the perfect five and uh, with Blue Phoenix, as we said, they've been playing with him uh, quite too often. He's been there all the times when needed from the academy lineup, immediately switches to the main one. And that's been the similar journey that Maxer also had when needed. He was also being put into the main lineup, had a little bit of, uh, uh, I would say, his early experience over there and from there, He's just now confident to play in this uh, main roster of ninjas in pyjamas. Uh, and it's been working. Now, Alex and Res as well had a good time, got their hands warmed up. Uh, that's what we were looking forward to from the side of ninjas. Playing together, stacking up together, finding values, exchanging things. And Res, I think at the start, was just phenomenal. He just was taking Jaguar like it was his uh, uh, ownership on that T side of things. And yep. after that... Yeah, God's Rain did not do much on the CT of it, but yeah, T, good for them. Uh, you, uh, as we said, he might have been a stand in, but he performed here really well, starting from the pistol round of the T half itself. Yeah, uh, overall, I think, like, you know, Bobby R to B to Nume, uh, they had a lot of moments here. Finn, a little bit more quiet, uh, fired up, just a, just a rough day in the office for him. I think just combined six kills over across two maps, but, you know, hopefully they can shake it off uh, heading into you know, their, their second game, the lower brackets, which should be uh, against Big, which is, again, not an easy opponent either. Uh, but yeah, a lot, lot of you, you can really see there were a lot of mistakes being made here from them, and also even mentally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually reminds me of uh, having a chat with some of the Mongols players in uh, at the at the major, where I was having a chat with them, and they're like, uh, I think it was their their manager and the coach, where he mentioned how when they go up against a team like the Vitality, or they go up against someone like Phase. It gets into their heads. They're like, "Oh, you know, oh crap! We're we're in the server against Zai Wu. We're in the server against yep. against Rops and Carrigan, and they just give a little bit too much respect, and they and they play a little too reactive, a little too tepid, instead of just playing their game and just you know, uh, playing the way they they play. A little bit more uh, confidence was lacking from Mongols, and we see how they you know sometimes struggle against the the big name team, so to speak, and at the very end. So I feel like that could be a symptom which was present here for God's Rain as well, alongside this fact that you know. Know, they, they had a standard situation but uh, quickly wrapping things up we have finished the the upper bracket uh, first round of affairs so fours and Aurora going to be playing tomorrow uh, if I'm not very much mistaken and of course we have Bedboom and NIP as well and actually no uh, just, just got corrected by the producer it's going to be lower bracket matchups tomorrow so it's going to be elimination already on the cards here Ends going up against OG, going to be the first game, and then we're going to be having uh, Big versus God Range. So just have 24 hours to reset everything and battle it out. And then, of course, the day after that on Thursday, we're going to have Forest versus Aurora Gaming. That should be a, a fun affair. And then, of course, Bet Boom versus NIP. Which matchup jumps out to you uh, in particular? I think the interesting one uh, is going to be Ents versus OG. Ents, as we said, yeah. are going to be the fav were the favorites. And one of the favorites, yeah. They got the upset, and I think from there they would want to make a rerun. And if that works out, 
uh, maybe everybody will be back like the favorites are good looking good maybe even we see them at the grand finals but their journey is going to be strictly to the lower bracket right now until they get to the lower bracket finals oh yeah absolutely and i think og you can never really count them out as long as that guy heavy got yeah. is in the server but uh ladies and gentlemen that's it from us here for day two of the sky esports masters powered by amd my name is blair and his was lucifer and we're going to bid you a good night but do uh do tune in tomorrow for we have some uh, pretty enticing games for the for the, for the time being good night gg double played respect from one expect 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 respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect